thì ủ thằng này bích con thêm một con phao bọt thay con mơ sinh thằng con phao bọt đi là đảm bảo đánh gì nó không đó. 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 đó không được phải bích thằng ban nó đánh cái kêu không giờ phao bọt thì cũng không đánh như riêng thì phao bọt cũng không không ngon bằng mơ sinh đâu không tao biết là đánh riêng là khó không ngon tao biết mà nhưng mà ý là bích để ta sợ nó bích cái tên kia nó lại đánh có ký dễ dàng cái đó phải chấp nhận rồi bây giờ phải trao đổi mày bây giờ không bích mơ sinh thì thôi đấy là việc của ta Mày đánh cái thằng của mày đi Bà đi tôi Có đâu chưa? Đi không? Đang, đang vô, vô <cười> When the bell of absolution rings Virtue will be given new meaning on these icy plains It's to atone for the crimes of the past. Or perhaps it's to be exchanged for the promised freedom. But when you hold the key of judgment. Ok, hello mọi người nha. Hello mọi người. Xin chào các bạn, chào mừng mọi người đến với uh, ngày thi đấu thứ hai của IBC 2022 khu vực Đông Nam Á. Alright, so that is our uh, promotional video uh, for today of the new character, the Hermit. Oh. And, uh, quite exciting. A lot of people actually been asking, uh, asking about what my thoughts on this new character. I'm gonna be honest. I don't. Ha, các thanh niên đi thắp hương hết chưa? Các thanh niên đi thắp hương hết chưa? Cái gì cái gì? Rồi rồi rồi. Rồi rồi rồi. Nhưng có khấn không? Mày mày thắp hương không? À, có khấn à? Được, cũng khá. Chứ còn thắp hương không không được đâu. Không, không ai biết mày, mày thắp cái gì. Mình khác chơi game bằng thực lực thì mình chơi game bằng tâm linh. Cái này cái thắp hương. Also a little bit of uh, ice on fire, it sounds of ice on fire uh, feeling, so I really like it. I wish I could get one of these skins. <laughs> I haven't got my luck at all in this one. I haven't got lucky at all. Man, pick the bow, I know. Either like the priestess or even yeah. uh, like anything. I'm up to anything. But anyway, let's go for the art here, fan feeling. This one is an art brought to you guys by Betsa P Q U Q W Q. And it is super cute. You see the mercenary Ducky skin, the white like spear skin, the butter little girl, and the steering for the team G H. Let's go. Such a beautiful fan art. You can see here all the G H teams with their own characters. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, an excellent the drawn artwork. Uh, I would unfortunately not know how to. Uh actually pronounce that name uh this next one looks like U umai or umay um is maybe how you pronounce that i'm not entirely sure but yeah another excellently drawn artwork here uh, again you know every time we had a look at these artworks on the uh the streams i tell everybody i don't know how to draw so this is uh you know way better than anything i could ever do so that's very impressive and, and really nice to see um but uh yeah so what do you think about this one yeah it's for the team mad penguins actually i recognize the uniform because I, i saw the uniform has like a little penguin on the on the front on the chest area and it looks really cute because it does look like a mad penguin so it's very memorable too and they look super cute you see all the members there it is very nice very nice art from umai absolutely so yeah an excellent uh excellent little promotion excellent little artwork always 
uh, it's always nice to be able to to show these things off uh, before we get into our tournament matches and stuff. But without further ado, looking into our first match today again, Mad Penguins versus BL. Talked about this a little bit earlier on paper. This is going to be a very very even matchup. The two winners here, two winners bracket teams going at it. Uh, the loser of today will be forced to go and play against GH in the losers bracket. So. Uh, really not a matchup that either team wants to have to face. So this is a really big match ahead for both these teams. Um, and yeah, looking at how this is going to play out, of course, you know, we talked a little bit about how uh, with Mad Penguin Survivors, a lot of it comes down to uh, strategy and, you know, consistency uh, with um, with communication uh, and, you know, excellent teamwork and support. We saw that be very effective in the earlier rounds of this tournament uh, playing against you uh, as clerk on Moonlit River Park. A lot of excellent roller coaster support. Um, a lot of great communication with where the roller coaster is. You know, of course, timing 20 seconds before you can take the coaster again. We'll see if that actually comes into play. So, Moonlit River Park definitely a map. Uh, Đấy là có bạn bạn ấy uh, phát át lại cái hình uh, hình hình, hình, hình uh, uh, gì nhỉ? Ảnh bia của Pay mắt bên gần có post lên. Bạn nào muốn check lại cái ảnh đấy ở vơ người thật thì bạn có thể lên uh, fanpage của mắt bên gần nhá. Whereas number five, Hunter for BL has been consistently strong. So, we have kind of a bit of a Hunter versus Survivor sided matchup ahead of us. Yes, before we start, also I want to give some shout out to the people that came in the chat saying hi, hello Jogi, Kingno, LMP Stan, PP Chai Stan, Chuzu Bean, Nico Loves Mike Morton from Kid Game, Bev, Papa Norton, Boo Delicious, Bev, Cactus, uh, Sadao Q, Mamie, all of you guys, and some of these faces are very familiar because we've seen them very often, so I want to thank you guys for coming to the stream. And yeah, really for, looking forward for this match today because we have seen already how scary can be Morus Bon Bon with Keeper and Blink on the first round, he got an all kill. So that is actually very scary Hunter to release. So what are your thoughts on, on the BL side, Eli? What do you think is the most scary part about BL, the survivor or the Hunter faction? Yeah, well, definitely the, you know, we talked about, of course, being the Hunter faction is going to be very strong for, uh, for BL. It's, again, a Hunter-sided Kind of a slightly more hunter-sided team against a more survivor-sided team. You know, we've seen this throughout most regions, although for the most part, it's you see mostly survivors. You know, survivor teams being the strongest. You know, although there is one team over in China, as we know, Do Wu is, is favorable towards the hunter side. So, uh, you know, there are these. It, it changes up quite a lot, and it's very interesting. Typically, we see good survivor teams are able to take down good hunting teams because of how survivor-sided the game is. Any team that plays well as survivor can beat very good hunting. However, we did see, you know, Dou, a very strong hunter-sided team, take down a very strong survivor-sided team, uh, you know, Weibo in IVL finals. So, you know, it's really just, uh, it's not another question about either way, you know, either team could potentially win there. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I think definitely going to this matchup, again, Mad Penguin survivors being as strong as they are, um, do have, I think, the slightest edge, but in reality, uh, it's a very, very even matchup on paper. So, you know, a lot of it's going to come down to, um, you know, how well, and it's something that's very interesting as well. We saw number five play Breaking Wheel. Breaking Wheel is a character that's going to struggle quite a bit with the flywheel being in the current meta. So Mad Penguins opts to go around on Ruler River Park, which is what they seem to really uh, favor here uh, in this tournament thus far. That's going to be very difficult for number five because typically you just play Breaking Wheel, round one Moonlight, that's great. But you don't really have that as an option anymore because flywheel is such a hard counter to that particular strategy. So then you kind of force a round one Moonlight Dream Witch which is still not bad. Dreamwitch is not too bad on Moonlit, but it's not one of the better maps for. Uh, it's not one of the best maps for Dreamwitch. So, um, I mm -hmm. think coin flip is going to be a huge factor in this matchup. Yeah, the thing with BL No5, also known as Lee, is that he's a type of hunter that either you throw him to any map, throw him to Chinatown, throw him to ever sleeping town. Either way, he will. He has so many hunters under his sleep, and he has managed to master them all. You know, Dreamwitch, Bonbon. Bon, sculpture even wax artists and as you have seen there has been a lot of wax artists recently even in IBL we have seen Xiao Chen we have we have seen Dong Xuan and Sean and uh, Wolf's Alex also brought wax artists so the fact that BLNO5 can manage to master all these a huge pool of hunters under this same amount of time that we all have to prepare and adjust to the new meta it is truly mind-blowing because he even mm -hmm. has shown to be played in course he play also in Nayad. like he really right. is like throw him into any map and he will be able to adapt to the map and get a consistent all kill so this is the scary thing about BLNO5 uh, Eli. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you know, again, we talked about how uh, that hundred-sided factor is going to be a huge, is going to be very key for BL. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, then again, it's it's just that. You know, we've seen. Khổ thân nữa rồi các bạn ạ. Tôi phải lên khóc một tí. Đéo hiểu sao? Cái team tôi đánh 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 cái giải này cứ đi mẹ mày vào gặp team nào chúng nó ban được ban map chúng nó cũng ban công viên hình trăng. Khổ thân nữa rồi. Đánh mẹ mấy trận từ cái trận đánh với SKG xong là mẹ từ đó tất cả các cặp trận tiếp theo bọn tôi auto bị ban công viên. Thì mẹ mày các bạn thấy bọn tôi khổ thân không? Cứ vào là bị ban vào là bị ban. Đéo được chơi. Cay. You would never see that before Flywheel. You would never see Godje being allowed to play Breaking Wheel round three. It would be this first round hunter, and it would get banned immediately after the first round. But now these teams, they don't care. They don't care about playing against Breaking Wheel because you just play Flywheel. A single trait on the Persona web counters an, a, a hunter that used to be S tier, and that's really impressive to see. Hôm nay vào BL uh, ban mát cũng ban luôn công viên này. Ra một phải pick sử vũ khí. Question is. Can number five potentially bring out a clerk in the early rounds as well? That's going to be very important, uh, as well yes. as um, as well as the side for uh, for Mad Penguin. Are we going to see that in, in return? Are we going to see that clerk in return? Because clerk right now is in terms of how hard it is to play clerk. It's very similar to to Dreamwitch instead of in, in terms of the difficulty level, right? So when you have to when you have to adapt instantly mid tournament, we haven't seen clerk. I mean, clerk really just kind of came out of nowhere, right? As soon as Flywheel came into the meta, teams play clerk. Because Clerk is actually some surprisingly not too bad against Flywheel. A lot of teams will bring broken windows against Clerk rather than Flywheel. Năm sau thì bên kia bên kia Big Map các bạn nghĩ nó sẽ cho bọn mình đánh công viên à? Really taking in that meta spot, so it's going to be really uh, it's going to be really interesting. I think that um, if these teams can adapt and learn, you know, have learned Clerk throughout this tournament, which again it's a very hard character to learn, that's going to be the key. The teams that can play Clerk as well as things like Dreamwitch, those are going to be really important in these matchups. Um, you know, of course, also survivor survivability is very important. We've seen ZP um, so far being the most consistent survivors in this tournament, but Mad Penguins has a lot of potential as well. So I'm very excited to see how they can play against number five today. Yeah, one thing I want to share with everyone that we saw this like against a four man GC, how will the hunter exploit the weakest link of the survivors, either postman or seer? And find the keystone of the team and go there and focus on that and and tunnel that keystone there. Which in most of the cases, you know, keystone survivors are the ones are, are play a huge role. And if they disappear or they early early die in the game, then the, it will affect the team as a whole, such as postman or seer. Because I think those are the survivors that in towards the end game can definitely change the match and uh, we've seen yesterday a lot of the times you can even aim for a free escape and get the dungeon right um uh, speaking of seer actually it's kind of interesting uh seer has been a very we're going to get into our uh, 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 here. seer has been a very strong character in a lot of the global regions and we just don't see it as much here in south east yeah, bracket qua here mad penguins versus BL of course. Uh, Bracket của cái uh, giải đấu sau ngày thi đấu đầu tiên. Của nó vào ban pick chưa à? Hưng. Alo. Lầu thê. So yeah, I mean again, um, you know, uh, going in, uh, going in here on paper, very very even matchup. Uh, we can also talk about a little bit of Ryu and ZP. Of course, ZP has been. Um, the strongest team in this tournament we've seen thus far. It's going to be very difficult for one of these other teams to take them down. But, you know, we saw GH come very close yesterday. Um, we've also seen um, some other teams just playing very well. It, it, you know, again, it, some of these teams we haven't really seen, like a, a matchup like, you know, for example, MT versus ZP. That would be a very strong matchup to see. Uh, of course, BL versus ZP. All of these teams, there's a lot of these teams in Southeast Asia that have all been around the top for a while. Um, and then ZP, of course, just kind of come out of nowhere, right? A lot of these. Uh, a lot of the players on ZP, of course, um, were not, you know, old enough to play in a lot of these official tournaments, and now they have come out and been very, very impressive, and kind of just taken over the Southeast Asia region. But, you know, still a lot of competition out there. Of course, the first one, MP versus BL, it's gonna be a very close one. Um, you know, we talked a little bit again about how important it is for map pick because, you know, you look at uh, movement for parts. Hôm nay sẽ chỉ có ba cặp đấu thôi. Hôm qua đánh hẳn bốn cặp. Thời gian nó hơi dài ngoài thành ba cặp hy vọng nó sẽ nhanh hơn. Um, 
a lot of the Dream Witch and Bonbon bon maps are very similar. We talked about Moro having that round one Bonbon. Bon. A lot of the Bonbon bon and the Dream Witch maps in terms of what's good, what's not, are very similar. Of course, something like Arms Factory is very strong for Dream Witch, also works well for Bonbon. Bon. Um, so you also have to keep that, you know, take that into consideration. We are going to have, of course, uh, today's matchup. SG and Noir will be the first team to play in the loser's bracket. That will be the last match uh, of today. And uh, again, on paper, also a very close matchup. I think Noir definitely having a slight edge there. But that one, of course, could also go either way. So a lot of exciting matchups ahead, of course. MP for VPL, our first one. Yes, after seeing yesterday matches, to be honest, we seen like uh, some ma some teams have gotten stronger and some teams are just a little bit like t taking their time to adjust to this competitive experience because as we all seen them growing and going through defeats and victories at the same time, it makes us feel also that this is a game that even though we all know how to play it, we know how it works. How does the one team decide to outplay the other towards their advantage and even either Hunter or Survivor side, both of them will have the same amount of pressure coming into this game because when you come in with this persona build you try to adjust and try to be a little bit unpredictable at times because like we said some some survivors that team ups they will bring on purposely they will just bring all the way tie turner and, and seeker or they will forget to bring more time like we've seen uh, recently there's explorer gameplay in the last match of ibl in Dota 5 versus wave god explorer brought no borrow time and that was extremely risky, but it totally worked for them. As well as a mercenary with will to survive, which actually they took advantage of the map, like you said, because in Leo's memory, there was no chair at the Christmas tree. So they planned based on that, then they brought, they put a mercenary and will to survive, and he was able to escape and struggle free. So this is the little right. details that the team think about it, the map, the persona, how to match those up and then counter a very strong hunter. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, s sort of uh, unique strategies like that. We probably won't see those, at least in our match. Of course, our match is, is the winner's bracket. So I think a lot of these teams will just be playing max consistency. They're, they're going to play what they're comfortable with. Um, when you look into something like an IBL finals, you got to play risky if you want to win. So um, and then maybe in the loser's bracket, that could also be something we see is some unique strategies like that. Actually, Explore with no bar time is interesting. Uh, Explore is one of the uh, very few characters that just never really gets chased because you stay hidden the whole game, right? So why do you need borrowed time if you're not going to get found the whole game? Which, um, you know, it, it can work in some instances. Sometimes it can backfire. But I think going into this matchup, of course, we are just going to see standard uh, sort of strategies again. Both these teams, they can afford to lose. Of course, the loser of this will move down to the loser's bracket, but they'll still be in the top eight finals so uh, or the top eight uh, playoffs. So, um, you know, I think right here we're just going to see the max consistency from both these teams just playing, you know, definitely what they're comfortable with. And, uh, yeah, we we're just waiting for, uh, we will be getting into the picks and bans in a moment here, but, yeah, I don't know what, um, you know, obviously, if we get into a situation where, um, if MP actually gets the opportunity to pick Moonlight for Park, which is a map we talked uh, about that they, you know, enjoy to play on, um, mm -hmm. do you expect we're going to see Moro actually play Bonbon? Because, bon? you know, you look in that round one situation, Bonbon, bon, you know, on Moonlit, it's not actually as strong, although we do see 100 in particular really enjoy that, that's PPX and PR. Uh, which is uh, <laughs> yeah. kind of unique because, again, Moonlit, very big, right? It's very big. It's hard to control mm. ciphers for a bonbon. Bon. It's not exactly ideal. But in some situations, some of these hunters, for example, PPX and maybe Moro as well, would prefer that map. So I don't know. What do you expect, Soy, if we do see a round of Moonlit Park? What, what hunters from both wow. sides do we see utilized? Wow, you asked me that. Actually, I don't expect a Moonlit River back uh, yet because, I mean, that would be too exciting. That would be a treat for me because I enjoy so much when the survivors take the roller coaster and take the hunter around the map and then the hunter feels like all alone left in one of the stations and then he cannot move. It really immediately teleport. So that would be definitely right. like so funny to watch. But it would be risky, to be honest. But if, if they get lucky, uh, the, whoever the team gets lucky enough to pick that one, they definitely know that there is a risk and a reward. Because at the same time, if you pick that for your survivors, then you have to admit that your hunter will also have to deal with the same situation of the other team doing the same thing. And this is the cool thing about it. Like, we will see a mirror match and a mirror strategy probably coming in as well. Like yesterday when we saw a hunter picking a wax artist, we saw the other hunter also pick up Wax Artist and it show it that even though it's the same map and even though it's still the same hunter, the way they play it, it was completely different. Like one right. Wax Artist decided to no aim for blocking the ciphers and do not aim for harassing the ciphers as much, while the other Wax Artist 
just kept moving between Cher and Cypher to camp both at the same time and throwing wax to them just to block it. That was extremely proactive. So we can see that also learn that when they pick the same hunter and the, at the same map, we will definitely be able to differentiate which hunter uh, has this, a different strategy to play, maybe a little bit more training, more experience, and overall the game sense can be totally different. And how do you handle pressure too? Because you come into a match having the pressure to grab at least a tie, and sometimes that can get you. And some hunters are like, oh, I, I feel very confident, I'm very easy to get it. But some hunters are be like, oh, I want to take it ver this very seriously, there's a lot of stakes. So it, it depends on the right. player. But definitely, like you said, Mully River Park is a map that we most hunters probably don't want to have to deal with, especially if it's a hunter that cannot have have afford to bring teleport. I have to bring blink and then use the trump card and then use teleport. I think that would be a little bit hard stake. But mm -hmm. we saw you, cleric, playing in Mully yep. River Park, and he did an amazing job at clutching that tie at the end. So many things to expect, really. Yeah, definitely. Many things to expect for sure. Um, yeah, still just waiting on our uh, our picks and bans to have that uh, hopefully in a second here. But um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely again. We, you know, we talked about this earlier. Um, will these teams potentially, um, you know, will these teams potentially bring out clerk? All right, we talked about that a little bit. So um, I don't know if we'll see that from from number five. Maybe that's definitely a possibility. I think we'll still probably see around one dream witch from that um yeah, because so uh, of course yeah of course yeah, dream witch so is the yeah go ahead no i think so too mainly because um no5 as known to bring dream witch as into bo1's first round usually that's his strength and then from that on based on the on the result of that match either a four kill or a three kill at minimum because he's actually a consistent four kill hunter then he will usually just try to build from that. I need, do I need to get a three kill or I just go for a tie? But usually he's just very right. consistent with his hunter. On the other hand, Moru, he mains bomb bomb and he also mains a sculpture. And it depends on the map, he might or not bring out breaking wheel. So we, I'm not really sure whether it's a good idea bring out breaking wheel in the current meta. We just saw what happened yesterday to GH uh, got J breaking wheel in Moonlit River Park. Basically, Zero Two outplay him. Có lỗi kỹ thuật từ ban tổ chức các bạn ạ Hình như là máy móc gì đó của họ bị trục chặt Trục chặt gì đấy nên là Chưa bắt đầu ban pick cơ Kiểu này là sẽ bị delay khá là lâu Bởi vì nếu mà trục chặt về thành viên các bên Thì đấy là lỗi của người chơi không nói Nhưng mà đây là trục chặt sẽ là về thiết bị ấy. Thiết bị của ban tổ chức ấy. Chắc là họ cần thời gian being bodyguard and design is lee so that was just like something that we can probably will see a breaking wheel if it comes toward like bo3 like we saw yesterday but i don't believe that we'll see a breaking wheel just at the beginning of the match like bo1 because it is a little bit unpredictable the outcome with the flywheel coming in and all the other and survivors that you cannot yet ban so it's a little bit right now facebook em không có thông báo suy mà bạn thử tắt tắt cái chuông đi mà bật lại chuông nhá nhiều người cũng bị như thế rồi còn nếu mà tắt chuông bật lại và vẫn không thông báo là bạn set pay vào yêu thích ấy nên là nó sẽ tự nhảy lên cái new feed của bạn Đó. thế còn mình cũng không biết làm cách nào nữa à, cái đấy không ăn thua That used to get the only way you'd breaking wheel was so strong. The only way you'd really win against the wheel is if you had things like good forward support, good batter support, good entomologist support, good um, priest of support, good seer owls, whatever it may be. And you saw that match yesterday, they had none of that. I mean, you went in with a prospector, a mercenary, and it was just like uh, and patience. So you had all these characters. I mean, you know, patience good against wheel, but you have all these characters that are just kind of like okay against breaking wheel. And it still was, you know, on Breaking Wheel is arguably the best member we we'll ever park. So you're going into that matchup, of course, they would normally that would be an extreme disadvantage. Oh, mấy ông này không nghe voi à? Tôi nói rõ ràng, vãi trưởng của tôi là cái gì? À, giờ, ok. Beneficial for the survivors, but Flywheel is just incredible. There were so many different plays throughout the map where Flywheel completely changed the match. And if there's no Flywheel there, then Godjay definitely has opportunities to win. And now that we have flywheel, it's just uh, it's it's 
you can't you can't play breaking low effectively at least not in the first two rounds and if you have to go for a win and your other win hunters are banned then sure i mean you, you gotta you gotta take that risk but it's just it's it's so difficult right and you know as you mentioned of course we're gonna see number five probably played pretty much first you know we saw that throughout this tournament and of course dream Witch right now obviously still the best hunter in the game so if you have a dream Witch player that can immediately go out and play dream Witch, that's very strong now the question is do these six hunters continue to rank patroller or do you switch into flywheel builds we are going to now see uh, it looks like the rosters for today we have mp morrow of course on the hunter side uh for mp listed as that sculptor also we've seen round one bond one be quite effective for this hunter um you know it, it, we've seen actually sacred heart hospital get utilized quite a lot for morrow mm -hmm. And he's actually been able to bring out Bon Bon on that map and be quite effective. And, you know, we talked about Sacred. Not a very good survivor map, or it's not a very good map for Hunters. Very strong for survivors, but Bon Bon with Keepers is quite effective there. Here we're going to see number five on the Hunter side uh, for BL here, listed as Wax Artist. But as we mentioned, if Dream Witch available, Breaking Wheel potentially available if, if you know, obviously if needed in certain situations um, and can go with the Sculptor as well. Yes, now on the MP side, Ziru, the prospector, one of the main stunners of the team, and followed by BL Mini Blue, why not Big Blue, but yes, Mini Blue, the one of the best acrobat kite teams that we have seen yesterday, he literally guided the wax artist for three cyphers at the beginning of the match, so he did really well in ever slipping down. So these two survivors, uh, both of them you see is kind of like a, a mirror side, like both of them can kite and one can hold and can support. But we'll see exactly how will they work together and have this amazing synergy. So the next side, we I'll leave you to do the MPLC and BL to Big Blue. Yeah, we do have MPLC, uh, of course, listed as Batter, and you know Batter is actually a character that I really love to see. I actually really enjoy Batter. Uh, there's a lot of nice strategies that you can actually use with that character, um, and we haven't really seen it as much. But with the addition of Flywheel, Harassers have been at least almost quite strong. Batter with Flywheel is actually very good. We've seen sub forward start to bring flywheel as well. We have Potato on the side of BL here, listed as Magician. Um, and uh, Magician's one of those characters that um, I didn't particularly like because of that one person, NAU, previously mentioned, uh, that loves Magician, is always trying to get me to play Magician. But I might actually have to start doing it now because Magician has really become quite a strong character. Not only is Magician very viable now with three ones, Magician is very strong against Clerk. And that's going to be a huge game changer. Characters that are effective against Clark with the way Clark has really adapted into the current meta, that's going to be very strong going into the playoffs match for uh, IBT. Now, MP Anomaly, also known as Anchan, is coming in with his Magician main. And BL Rem, a very big name here. A lot of, he has a lot of fans. Uh, Rem, an uh, old player, he went to Koa before as well, together with the team Brilliant. So we know a lot about his play style. He's a very good kiter, support and rescue. The thing is that with these teams now, it'll be like that everyone can support, everyone can rescue, everyone can kite, everyone can decode. So the thing is like, how will they build a strategy around the hunter and try to mind game him and put pressure on it? So that is going to be the game today. And the next one will be MP Ben and BL Panda. Both of them are also very good players on the side of Ben. He's an Enchantress main, also a stunner. And BL Panda is also an acrobat. So BL, as you see, they have many acrobats and very a lot of support characters. And that it is a good thing that versatility about and the flexibility about BL that their survivors are extremely flexible and comfortable to choose any survivor. And basically, they could just work around with it because towards the BO3, they will get less choices because the hunter will ban their mains and based on their game play style. Oh, and the Bantic, uh, the map. Starts. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and BL banned Moonlight River Park. You know, we, again, we talked about this mm -hmm. earlier. MP would really love to be able to play on Moonlight River Park. That's the map we've seen them be most effective on, and BL just completely eliminating that option. So, uh, definitely a logical map ban here. I would have definitely gone the same way uh, when going against a team like MP. We're going to see Arms Factory picked first. This is really interesting. I actually did not expect this uh, because Arms Factory plays right into. Number five's Dream Witch, right? Arms Factory, one of the best Dream Witch maps in the game. So that's very difficult. Of course, you do give Moro a lot of options to work with, such as Bon Bon on, uh, uh, you know, Bon Bon Arms Factory. 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 Plays really well into BL's favor, but I mean they definitely uh, would have. I guess Mad Penguin definitely has something up their sleeve. We're not, you know, we're not necessarily expecting 
And it could be that uh, Moore is also potentially bringing out a different hunter. Um, and uh, I don't know if we'll have to see. It could just be that, you know, again, we talk about as well. Some of these teams will pick maps based off how strong it is for their hunter rather than how strong it is for the survivors going against the other team's hunter. So in this instance, they might have just picked a very good map for Bon Bon for, uh, for Moru and just kind of saying, um, you know, let's just uh, go in like this. I feel like if they were to do that, though, Red Church would just be better. Because Red Church is also very good for Bon Bon. It's not as strong for Dreamwitch. So, I don't know. Anyways, we're getting into our picks and bans here. More on the Hunter side versus the BL survivors. Let's see what we have ahead of us. Yeah, yesterday, um, uh, MP Moru Mac Penguin's Moru got Bon Bon on the BO1. And he got a 4K with Dream and Skipper. So, he he was very confident. But the map was different, though. It was Sacred Heart. Nhưng mà hiển thị sai rồi. Sao lại hiện con tiên tri được kia? Tôi có ba tiên tri đâu. Hiển thị sai rồi. Yeah, we actually see a seer ban first, which means Moro's probably not actually playing Bon Bon then. Um, so that's very curious. Uh, you wouldn't really ban seer first if you're trying to play Bon Bon. So Moro's definitely playing something else. I would expect. Oi, các bạn nhìn các bạn nhìn cái bảng kìa. Tự nhiên trong team của Biao xuất hiện hai ông noi. Đau đầu ấy chưa cơ? Bảo sao lỗi kỹ thuật? Bảo sao lỗi kỹ thuật? Also, uh, shout out to NCD for this as well, but Wax Artist as well as potential option for Moro. Patient ban second, I think 100% indicates Bon Bon. Um, there's no reason that a Wax Artist, I mean, Wax Artist can ban Patient, but there's way better bans such as Mercenary uh, would have been a lot more effective here. So, hey, Acrobat first ban for a Bon Bon is curious. Would have expected probably something like Ford immediately out of the way, mm -hmm. um, but it looks like we're going to see Postman as well. Well, this is a focus band because uh, we d we saw yesterday that strength of BL Mini Blue in as Acrobat yesterday. He he took it out twice and every time he got at least. Oh, so all the things he did, man, the two, the guy, 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 but at the same time, it gives them some openings here for BL because now they get a chance to bring out their Seer, one of the most banned characters. Yo. And they missing us with the photo boy. Oh, no, okay. I was about to say, that's oh. not making any sense. On the BL1, yeah. Clark, it is actually, wow, that yeah. could be something, something, something different. <laughs> we have not used to seeing Clark, but I believe like Moro is just teasing us a little bit. <laughs> Uh, no, yes. it looks like we're actually seeing Clark. Oh. No, this actually makes sense. Uh, we've actually seen Clark be used a lot in round one um, throughout Ooh. this tournament and some other tournaments as well. But yeah, as we talked, I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Clark is what's going to make the difference for some of these teams is that Clark is which teams can actually play Clark effectively, right? We talked about this, so of course, Clark is going to be a very key factor. Round one, Clark is meta. It's strong. I mean, it's something that you can play. You don't want to go Dream Witch if you're not if you're not don't have a Dream Witch go to. You can go Clark. Clark has. The potential right now to be an S tier hunter and have has win potential. Uh, going against this team comp is quite interesting. Now the acrobat ban also makes sense as well. Uh, acrobat a very strong kiter against clerk, patient magician. Strong kiting is actually how you can beat clerk first. Because again, the way you, the way one of the ways you deal with clerk is how quickly can you finish cipher machines before the, the survivors get eliminated. Right, you have to finish ciphers in the first chase before clerk builds up that presence before clerk's able to. Um, pressure down the cypher machines with that first presence ability you cannot block off cypher machines as a clerk until you have your first presence you have to have first presence to start blocking off cypher machines so that's why you know first kites are so so crucial against clerk so eliminating kiting characters magician patient and acrobat is very crucial and that actually makes a little bit more sense here and actually again as we talked about earlier you know something we mentioned magician is one of the best kiters against clerk as of right now so looking at this current team comp for the survivors, of course, they have a very good Cypher Rush uh, with the uh, with the postman from Mini Woo here. Uh, Embalmer is going to be, I think Embalmer was mainly in there to uh, work around the Bon Bon, right? So you have a character that can be very strong against Bon Bon. Postman can be good against both, obviously. Nice Cypher Rush. Seer is very strong against Clerk Force with an extra Owl. And the forward is going to be the key. The way you beat Clerk, the way you allow for a strong early kite 
is how well can you support that first kiter. Ford is going to be the big supporter in this matchup. Yeah, although I strongly believe that the keystone survivors of this lineup or, or the weakest links will be the Postman and the Seer because these two survivors, even though they have a, a huge tight team possibility, at the same time, they don't have ma many tools to deal with. Like, for example, the Forward has a, a Rocky Ball and the Balmer has a Coffin, so they definitely can elongate their tight the, the others. But we'll see here the Arms Factory, Ila and Tokyo are going to enter the bo one Clerk. We are going to see the Clerk immediately rotating towards, looks like that is, oh, actually going to turn around and leave two survivors Spawn Factory, but it's actually going to change targets immediately here, heading towards the postman at the uh, the front gate ruins area are going to go ahead and put that uh, recording onto the forward to try to slow down the decoding progress. Going to vault the window. Uh, I think he just used that to get a vault recording. So if the survivor goes for vault to the window, he can use that block off that window. I think that was kind of the idea there for Moro. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and uh, he's just going to go ahead and chase the... Uh, the postman trying to mind game here, not getting mind game. Going to go ahead and vault this window as well. Uh, he really did. He get the recording for the pallet drop. I don't think he did, but I think he might have picked up a pallet break recording there as well. Clerk is going to be really. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Clerk is very difficult to commentate because there's a lot going on. It's a leg stream, which, um, but I believe from what we've seen so far, he was able to get a pallet break recording and a window vault recording. He's going to go ahead and get a recording for the uh, the forward. Of course, he cannot block the cypher machine until he has first presence, but he can reverse. The, uh, the decoding progress there. And there's the pallet break recording as we talked about, Soy. And nice. you get the first hit right on the mini blue. Ooh. And there it is. Yeah, that's a nice gift for the postman. For the postman and then coming in. Actually, her build is trump card and detention. And her trait is excitement. So we might be able to see whether she used excitement with the dog. But now taking another recording here of the window. Now she's coming in very strong following. There was someone there trying to distract her, but she doesn't take the bait. And a postman is getting right into the hat area. It's a good area for kiting here, but he's feeling the pressure because he has to use this pallet, but Clerk, oh, she's feel she has to break this pallet because she doesn't have the innovation anymore. She must have deleted it, but, or maybe it's in cooldown, but now going into this other area, looking for the support here. Look at the support here from Panda coming in, also forcing Clerk for breaking the pallet. Let's go. Yeah, and you know, what's really going to be uh, a challenge here is that when you have a Seer Going against the clerk, you really need blink because you need blink to be able to get an extra hit here. He does have the vault recording, so he's going to use that right there. Um, and he's going to be able to get the hit here, but the owl should immediately come into effect. And he actually just they immediately give it. Can Mini Blue make it to the window? Does he have another vault recording? I think he does. Yeah, he does have two. He's going to get the vault. Nah, we'll hit cool. No, he able to get the vault off and the postman dog. Uh, it looks like that one did miss there, but that is he. It's gonna buy a little bit of extra time. We do see the postman go down, I... but a lot of extra time. Wow. So what happens when you get when you go for a recording? On a survivor, you get nice so wow. when you record yourself, for example, breaking up wow, you use that power break recording. You only get one when you record that yourself as the hunter. So he did record the postman vaulting a window, and he can reverse that, drop that out the window, um, and prevent the, the, the postman from vaulting when he has two of them to work with. So that was very okay. important there. We always have both of them come into play. Yeah, the thing here that I saw is that Moru didn't place the recording on time on the on the window and then allow the postman to vault. That that is the thing that made the kite slightly longer, like you said. And now forward is coming in with a half blood rescue, trying to get ooh, trying to get the, also the rescue done. The dog bite on the clerk, and he will be going for the window. Oh, recording the postman that actually was trying to block him, but it didn't connect. And now postman feels able to go to this other area where there's no no anyone decoding, so he can kite freely in this area. Is three ciphers remaining. Eli. Yeah, and uh, actually down down to two. He's gonna go ahead and use that onto the uh, the recording onto the the seer there. Does block this? Oh, he messes the vault the the block again. So Moro's having a difficult time with this clerk. Uh, unfortunately, two missed window blocks there. Um, and because of that, I mean, you know, just kind of a free kite for the postman at this point. Uh, we see Mini Blue stand alive a little bit longer here. Should go down right away. Um, you know, at this tree right here. But the last cypher machine already 35% of the way done. If two survivors are on it, then they should have no problem actually priming this last cypher. Uh, of course, the reaction time is very important. And it looks like I don't think they were actually able to, they were not able to get off of it fast enough, so it's going to get blocked off. And the mm. postman dies on the last cypher machine, so that's going to be really key. He can now mm -hmm. uh, freely just, you know, record these survivors decoding the cypher machine. He can block the cypher if he's able to get the yeah. recording before. Uh, before they're able to pull off of it, and you can just reverse the progress over and over if they continue Ooh. to decode it while being recorded. So we're going to see the uh, embalmer come in for the rescue here, get that rescue onto the postman. But last cypher. Watch out for the forward! Watch out for the forward! 
The forward comes in also to try to as uh, oh stand there but didn't use the blink on time. Moro is not using the, the excitement, sorry, no, no using the excitement yet. He's still following the postman. He seemed to have forgotten this excitement, but he's still following here. And the machine is going to be away oh, 81% and another stun coming in for the forward. Going to this pallet yeah. area. A little bit afraid to to go through it because there's a survivor there. It will be a down for potato. But postman is free again. Yeah, so he is free again. It's it's not that he forgot the excitement. You, there's just no reason to excite him there because the stun is a very short one, uh, and wasting your trade would just be really bad. He also has trump cards, so he wants to try to save that for and, and gets a double down into the forward. Cypher Machine cannot be popped yet. As long as Moro continues to record that uh, the server of the Cypher Machine, he can constantly just block it off here. 90% of the way done, 10 seconds. It's going to be 10 seconds every time that Cypher Machine gets blocked off. Uh, we are going to see... And Bomber get up. He's actually going to go down intentionally. Ooh. I think he, he needs probably... to chair. He needs to chair. He needs to chair. No, no he, he or... cannot. He cannot chair because he has the coffin. But he can continue to record the cipher, so he's unable to actually decode it. Um, I think that he honestly good. he might have. Oh yeah, that's why. So he sacrificed himself with the coffin nearby. That way he can coffin himself. He gets a 15 second tide turner plus the bubble, which actually allows him to make the rescue for free here. Um, so that's kind of why he allowed that. He is going to take the hit onto the. Um, the embalmer it was a terror shock so if they were to pop there which they're not going to do we're going to see for but by the way and they Ooh. do now pop the last cypher machine and again you see moro slight inexperience with clerk using those uh unfortunately failing those window blocks that's going to be the huge game changer he's going to look at the pallet goes for this one gets it down on the forward and moro actually brought trump card so we're, he's not out of this game just yet yes this is where the match of clerk starts once the survivors pop the last cypher that's when the clerk detention starts because now she can block both gates but now one gate is about to be open because he only blocked one and now they're, they're the series or the other gate while the postman is still transitioning yeah but he knows the survivors near that gate he saw the trail running away from the gate there so he knows that someone's actually nearby and he's gonna be able to pick up tinnitus as well so yeah he can go camping. over here yeah well he, of course he's gonna still camping. You, you can't give him a free rescue but he's gonna walk around here and he knows the survivors is behind shack and the reason why, again, is when he spiked that exit gate, when he looked at that exit gate, he saw a survivor running off towards the ruins area because he has tinnitus. He knows someone has to be right around here. And he still has trump card. So if he gets close Ooh. enough to the survivor, he can just switch to blink. He can literally just switch to yes. blink down mini here, and he can still get a tie. But the dungeon <gasps> is in that middle area here. This is going to be a successful foot race at this point. And I think they're going to have enough time. There's no way for Moro to catch up here. And that is going to be a three survivor escape for BL already. <gasps> Incredible start goes to the blink. But yeah, there's no way he can hit that. Uh, as soon as the, you press that escape button, you're able to jump through the dungeon and you cannot take that hit so that wow. is a three like survivor said, escape for bl just like you said he changed to blink at the very last minute but it didn't really connect because it was a little bit like the postman was already dashing to the dungeon and that was so right. close because the double bite and he still was uh, judging whether he could still do the long range hit but amazingly the postman dungeon escape was so bl to be honest that is something that bl has managed to do so well the dungeon escape but we have to be kudos to moro though to bring clear on a bo1 is something that we definitely not expect right um well you also have to look at how the meta is kind of adapting you know we talked about this a little bit earlier clerk and run one is actually quite common now um you know we saw that being utilized uh actually throughout a lot of this tournament we saw um, with SKGU, uh, was able to play Clerk in round one. A lot of situations did it against MP, did it against GH, got a four survivor elimination on Sacred with it uh, against GH. So Clerk in round one, you know, this is why we talked about Clerk earlier, right? Clerk in round one, it's it's actually um, become meta. So with the with Breaking Wheel being kind of eliminated from the meta because of Flywheel, uh, and a lot, not every player being able to play Dreamwitch, some of these players go to Clerk, and round one Clerk is perfectly viable now. So and we've seen that. You know, obviously, again, we talked about from SKGU. We've seen that here. Um, and, you know, sometimes we've seen some of these players go to something like Wax Artist or Bon Bon if they're less comfortable with Clerk. But here, Clerk is, of course, very strong. Moro trying to bring that out there. But you saw, I mean, Moro, a very strong hunter, but just has not mastered Clerk. There were so many just missed window block, window block recordings were, that, that just were, that just missed. I mean, he wasn't able to, to hit them. The postman was able to get the vault off. The timing just incorrect and... That allowed for the postman's kite to be way longer than it necessarily it normally would have been able to. So that was really a big game changer there. Of course, the excitement really not being a factor as well. If he had blink at some point, maybe he was able to tie. I we don't we, you know, obviously we don't know. Um, and again, that's the downside to not banning Seer. You saw the Seer Owl extending that kite even a little bit. It it, it just it, there's little bits here and there that are big difference makers. Um, but I think the biggest thing is is more just unfortunately missing those um, those window block recordings were a huge game changer. Totally agree with you because when as a clerk 
when you play mobile especially when you press the button to place a recording onto the object sometimes you have to your hand has to be flexible enough just to put it on top of the object that you want to put it like in this case was the window vault so he needs to press a recording for the window vault and then move it to the window area and then press it there and then sometimes when your hand is just like you are just nervous or something happens then you just don't, don't manage to do that because we have seen before some players have managed to put three recordings in less than one second and that's what we've seen before but for this today's player it was a little bit difficult i see for i believe for him to put it um in this moment so that's why he kind of missed two, two of them and got so much time for the postman to kite and give take him around the map and that definitely we're gonna see the stats right here that 193 second kite from mealy blue postman yeah, excellent job. Again, you know, you were talking about the way you beat Clerk is first kite. First kite here was very strong. Um, so that's just, yeah, it's it's just really, uh, it was difficult for Moro. Again, um, the first, the start wasn't bad. He was able to get a pretty early hit. And then you don't have Blink. You don't have Blink. It really makes your chase as a Clerk a lot more challenging, especially with a Seer Owl available. So typically when you have characters that can take multiple, like an extra hit, or if you have a Seer. So for example, if you have characters like Psychologist, they can take three hits, or you have characters like Seer that can take three hits or force a third hit with an Owl. That's when you typically want to bring Blink. But the problem is, Moro allowed Seer and Forward. I mean, that's just so weak. Like, I, I don't understand. I mean, I, I get, you know, as you mentioned, Acrobat being banned, you could target banning Mini Blue, and you're getting rid of yeah. a very strong Kiter. But the problem is, it's just like, you're giving two of the best characters in the game against the, it, it just, it doesn't really work. And um, it ended up actually not even being that huge of a factor. Uh, uh, the Postman just had an excellent Kite overall. But, Giving Seer Owl as a Clerk, I mean, we've seen some of these Clerks not ban Seer. I still think Seer is a perfectly strong ban for a Clerk because you force one less hit to work with, um, and it's perfectly reasonable. I think Forward ban is very good with Clerk, and we just haven't seen that here. From We did not see that here from Moru, um, and um, yeah, that was just a, that was a really big difference maker. You know, we did see, um, we did actually see Forward ban from you earlier in this tournament. But we don't see it from Moro, and little forward stunts here and there bought enough distance to win the game, and that's why Ford is so strong against Clerk. But you really, in a map where you're not banning Priestess like Arms Factory, as a Clerk player, you have to ban Ford for Moro. Just didn't go for it, and it was uh, it kind of cost him here. Yeah, the fact that he was stunned twice by the forward, and like you said, where even though they're small stuns. That kind of definitely bought some time for the survivor to just move along and then transition all the way to the factory because he had excitement on hand. That's something that we have to remember that he had excitement yep. there and he decided to not use it twice. So that is a mm -hmm. very interesting mindset right there. Like you said, he probably was waiting for a bigger, longer stun and also just waiting for also use it for trump card and save yep. it for a blink or anything else. So I think that that is interesting reasoning. But I believe that if you, if you use excitement there, he could have uh, just maybe fastened the down of the of the of the survivor of the postman in this case, and also help him to share him faster. Because you see, when the bomber was down, the tapping machine was not ready yet. It was still just ninety percent. So there was still some time left to chair the embalmer and then go for the postman. But at the same time, they bought so much time with all the stuns that he cannot catch up with the postman anymore. And Mini Blue was literally he, he lost Mini Blue after the second chair. Yeah. Um yeah, he did. Uh but I mean either I mean the thing is even if you use excitement on the short forward stun. Mm -hmm. He's already in factory and you have embalmer body blocking. So it's like you excitement, then you vault the window into factory and they're already past the god the strong pallet. And then it, it what ha so how that plays out is if you excitement the forward stun and you follow the embalmer and you follow the postman into factory, you vault the window into factory, the embalmer stands in the pallet and you can't walk through it because it body blocks the hunter from going through. So embalmer stands in the pallet and the postman runs away to sandbags and they're gone. Because you can't walk through that pallet as long as the survivor stands in and body blocks the pallet. As long as the pallet's not broken or not thrown down, which it was not, the embalmer can stand it and block it off completely. So then the clerk has no trick because he just uses seven, so he can't switch to blink. So then he has to just down the embalmer, and you down the embalmer and you chair him, but the embalmer just coffins and he escapes. And it puts him in an even weaker position because you don't have trump card, you don't have any trait to work with. So, I mean, obviously using excitement to maybe close the distance a little bit, I mean, obviously would be nice, but then in, in reality, if if the uh, the BL survivors play it properly, which in that case, Embalmer body blocks pallet, takes the hit, and coffins away, then you're still in a losing position. So it's really tough. I mean, I, I think uh, not using excitement is technically correct. So you can, uh, you know, as you mentioned, so you save your trade for endgame. 
But even then, it's just like you're still in a losing position. Four survivors up at the exit gate. And he came close. You know, you saw Clark can control the exit gate. He blocked off the the postman from doing the shack gate. And he was able, almost able to get that uh, that last kill. But excellent communication set up that dungeon escape there, and it was very close down to the wire. But yeah, BL still able to come out on top. Just uh, excellent gameplay. And, you know, so far BL looking very strong. We talked about very you know hunter sided uh, you know hunter sided team, but the survivors here are the ones that are actually playing well. Yes, B, and uh, that's gonna be the term for B L A No Fight, uh, also known as Leaks. So a lot of people uh, has a lot. He has a lot of fans actually in the chat. Um, B L uh, No Fight has uh, got a name for himself since the start of this IBC, especially because of his breaking wheel gameplay, Greenwich, Bonbon, even Watts Arches. So very excited to see. It's a B O one, and we just saw Cleric Eli. So do you think there's a possibility that we will see a cleric coming in from N5 or you or you still stick into Dreamwitch? Yeah, I'm still thinking of Dreamwitch. I mean, it, it depends. You only need a draw here, so you could also play a more uh, Psy Conservative Hunter, but mm -hmm. based off of these bands, these are Dreamwitch bands. Seer band, Barmaid band, 100% Dreamwitch. Um, we're going to see Patient as well. Patient is uh, strong against Clerk, strong against Greenwich, also not bad against Sculptor if that ends up being a potential possibility. Also very good against Bloody Queen and Nyad actually. Patient is being very versatile. So the last character is Entomologist. I don't know how much I like this. Entomologist, uh, Entomologist is fine against Blink Greenwich. Against Patrol, it's a little bit more challenging. Um, so Entomologist is a curious decision, but it's also not bad in general. Uh, we actually see Entomologist is not very common for playing against Greenwich in China, but it's actually very common in Japan. A lot of these Japanese teams will go Entomologist round one, even into a Dream Witch, and they've been quite effective with it. So, you know, maybe NT going towards a Japan style strategy. This would definitely be more of a Japan style team comp compared to something like China. So, I don't know. This is going to be interesting. Obviously, we, we didn't see Ford get locked in either, which is very interesting. I would have expected Ford uh, to be yeah. the second, or sorry, the third lock in after the mercenary and the um the psychologist but i guess uh mp just completely giving up on that forward strategy yeah it's also a play style different different team different playing style different strategy so we see that mp is going more for a support kite rather than support harass so i think that could be the strategy coming in bringing in entomologists to the game because like you said it is a map for good for survivors overall so they feel very confident that with all those windows that they're in our factory entomologists could help with the honey they're playing in and also in the palace so i think that's one of the reasons they want to get general support they don't want to play too aggressively because they just feel that this match they need to get at least a tie so one way of uh, aiming for a tie is also bring characters that can be a little bit more steady and also can kite for a really long time and entomologist is, is one of those characters as well uh, other one the, other than that patient needless to say one of the best survivors that can counter almost any hunter with the hooks Especially when you hook out of the window, you can you can fly away and become Spider-Man. So I really like using patient as well. And um, patient, uh, sorry, psychologists and patient together though, that is another story because these two characters have amazing synergy. And I haven't really seen them using the trick of pulling each other. But let's go right into Arms Factory. Eli and Hotel, your caster for today. We are going to see the factory spawn here from the Dream Witch immediately rotating towards the key spawn. This is actually the front gate locker area here. It's going to find the location of the patient first. Looks like that is going to be the first charge, uh, first chase here, immediately leaking that. Uh, he's going to vault into the spawn follower, but he does get a speed boost to work with here. He's going to re-vault again. So actually a nice job uh, from the uh, from the patient not to get that, not to get hit here. The goal here for the patient, patient should never really give a free hit. He should never get leech trapped. He can always just hook away. Patient is good against Dreamwitch because you force patrollers. Uh, we are going to see the patient try to transition away here, but ooh, maybe getting a free hit. He needs to get his second hook back online here. Does he have flywheel? No, he does not have flywheel. This is Tide Turner. It looks like patient and the mercenary being tied. So patient giving a free hit to the spawn follower is really, really weak for MP early. This is not at all ideal. Um, and patients can go down right away, immediately taking a leech hit. No patrollers necessary. Oh, huge misstep from the MP patient here. And just like that, already an incredible position for number five. Yeah, even though you saw all those pallets already down, prepare for his kite, the the fact that the Dream Witch was about to tower shock me made him turn all the way to the right and just go straight. And then there was another leash waiting uh, on, the, on the other end. And they just kind of like a long distance sandwich, but they did it. And this is amazingly done for BLN05, even without the use of the patroller. So now we see yeah. he will release the patroller for the first time and going to try to stop this rescue from happening. 
We are going to see the beast come in here. Try to support the rescue as well. Maybe gave, uh, maybe gives Patient a chance to rebound. Patient does not hook in time. Uh, he actually hooks. I think he he hooks after getting hit with Tide Tuner. Uh, very interesting decision. You never really want to use your items after getting hit with Tide Tuner because then you just uh, there's no point. You're going down anyway, so why why waste it? So Patient actually wastes the hook. There. We're going to see Mercenary try to go for this uh, mining of the pallet. Gives a free hit. That is really important. We talk about playing against Dreamwitch, not giving free hits is huge game changers. And uh, a free hit here on the Mercenary. Uh, I'm calling it right now. This is a Force Survivor Elimination. This is a beautiful position for the Dreamwitch. Unfortunately, MP just very all over the place with this matchup here. And uh, this is looking very good for uh, for the Dreamwitch. We're going to see Psychologist come in for the rescue. No Tide Turner available. We, did, we see single flywheel here. So, I mean... I know psychologist can give in, can come in for this rescue, still be at full health, which is perfectly fine. But patient has to rebound. He's got to use the hook. He's gonna get a second hand on the psychologist. Patient, oh, he doesn't have a hook. He used it. Yeah. So I mean, this is just really tough. I don't actually understand the idea behind this rescue. Patient's not gonna be able to rebound very long. Doesn't have tide turner. He's gonna. Oh, it does ball here. Does make this ball here. But they're gonna be able to switch to blink here. Is gonna get the blink and the down onto the patient. The big upside to this is that was the spawn follower. He was able to waste the spawn follower's blink, which means that the next chase for the stream, which is actually going to be a lot more challenging because you don't have Blink available for that main follower. Yeah, very interesting here. Psychologist uh, went for that body block, which allowed the patient to kite a little bit longer. But at the same time, he cannot hasn't have any items to kite with. That's why he went out down too fast. And now all the second touch is going, going to be on the psychologist. They're going to the hut area. There is a still Blink on hand for this Dream Witch. So it's going to be, oh, she's deciding to just close this area in the hut and also telling the mercenary to stay away. Dream Witch going to put another leech down and going to try to sandwich this psychologist. We are going to see a beautiful flywheel from the psychologist avoiding that hit uh, and is able to stay alive a little bit longer. Psychologist needs to make sure they at least die uh, to the leech. That's kind of really the only chance. I mean, the, the cyber progress is so bad. And no, just a blink and a down. Uh, using the uh, mercenaries leech actually to blink and get that kill there. Um, and, you know, this is just perfect play from the Dream Witch here. Two, um, two survivors only top tier, still three to go. They haven't even started on the last one. I mean, this is just, this is absolute domination. Uh, this will 100% be a four survivor elimination. It's really impossible to come back from this situation. Uh, one survivor on chair. Uh, of course, mercenary already injured and just no cypher progress at all for MP. They just went for too many rescues, and obviously the first kite, not strong, having to kite through too many Cypher machines as well to do it. Just not ideal. We're going to see Entomologist, of course, come in for the save here. At least uh, still try, but this game is pretty much over. Oh, she went around, and now my... Oh, get baiting the hit there, oh. but we'll get a Terror Shock on the chair. Yep. Yeah, still gets a Terror Shock there. Beautiful, I mean, uh, uh, beautiful uh, job from the, the Dream Witch here. Of course, they miss Flywheel as well. And, uh, yeah, that's it. This is going to be uh, a four-survivor elimination. So that's going to be an 8-1 to one lead in favor of BL, which is just uh, – that's, that's just really strong. They're going to have an excellent position here moving forward. MP is going to need to do a lot to come back in this one. This is uh, definitely an uphill battle for them. Yeah, definitely not looking up so far. And now Mercenary is going to be Leech once again. And that will be put the second Leech in the map with the Mercenary. While Entomology hasn't used the self-heal yet. So maybe can, she can get a chance to heal. But now is the Mercenary going to take this kite? It's going to be a bit difficult. Going to block this window? No, just going around it. Okay, with a Blink in hand with the other Leech. Then we'll see how long can the Mercenary kite. Only one elbow pad left. Baiting the hit there, another Leech coming in from behind. We'll see whether he can get a sandwich situation here for the Mercenary, but still, kiting around there very well. Going back to the window, will bait that blink, and that will be the hit, Leech hit for the Mercenary. Yeah, no, it was like just a regular hit there, yeah, but Mercenary is going to go down to the Leech here. Um, and yeah, again, it's just a matter of time here. Mercenary uh, is going to go ahead and fall down. All you have to do is blink onto this entomologist using this leech. There's the blink, and there is the glass down onto the survivors. There's the surrender and a four survivor elimination here uh, for number five, and just like that, an eight to one lead for BL. Um, again, we talked about BL having very strong uh, hunter side. The survivors also coming out and being very strong as well. So this is this is looking really good for BL moving forward. Um, with the way they're playing right now, uh, MP is just really on the back foot. I mean, this was MP's map selection. They chose Arms Factory, which is very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, round one, Clerk, and then picking Arms. I mean, you know, Clerk's fine on Arms, I guess, but then you play right into Dreamwitch. 
I feel like you had there's so many other advantages you could go for. You could pick maps that are less strong for Dreamwich and go with something like Clerk still for more. So picking arms, it doesn't really make sense at all. So this is it, it's just uh yeah, very curious decision um for MP to pick that map and, and just like that, this is gonna be uh an eight to one you know lead here in favor of BL. Yeah, so I'm gonna say stats real quick. Um, MP Ben getting a A two second eighty two second Kai together with Anton, 24, and 51. Everyone has like a less, uh, only Ant Van has the longest kite in time with 82 seconds, the mercenary. But like you said, the patient is who's supposed to be the main kiter, only has 50 seconds. So that is something to think about. Like sometimes we think that patient can counter Dreamwish, but we see here, this is such a strong Dreamwish here, NO5, coming in very strong, putting all the pressure, even on the, main titers of the team that are able to be down so early in the game that definitely set the match for the result that we saw today so that is something to take into consideration that bln05 dream which is a very steady all kill hunter yeah um yeah just a, a very strong start overall and you know of course the big difference maker as well the start wasn't bad i mean they you know mp positioned themselves well patient first chase is fine you know, patient can usually if patient plays things properly, you can force double patroller. But the problem was patient just really positioned themselves, you know, not very strong. I mean, you know, the patient gave a free hit to the follower, um, and then that just is that's the big difference maker. The moment the first kiter gives a free hit to the main spawn without a leech hit, without a patroller, that's when the dream just wins because they just immediately get a free hit, they immediately can patroller, they can get the down without a leech hit, and that's the game changer. You have to make sure. You give if you're gonna give a free hit from a leech trap, it has to be a leech hit. And if you're gonna, um, you know, if you're if you're gonna, as a patient, you really shouldn't be giving away at all because patient is a character that gets out of leech traps. So you get trapped between two leeches, you just hook away, which the patient did, but he didn't hook himself into a strong area to kite with, and that was that was a big problem. So, um, yeah, just uh, really uh, unfortunate missteps from MP, and then on top of that. Um, it was just, uh, you know, going for the Psychologist Rescue as well. Psychologist getting double hit, giving an extra free hit onto the board as well. Psychologist not having Tide Turner Patient getting blinked right after. Uh, it, it just falls apart. The, when you get it quick down, not only does it fall apart for the survivors against the Dream Witch, also the Patient kited through middle, which means that he kites through the Mercenary Cypher. So the Cypher progress got slowed down, and he gets chaired on the middle Cypher. And from there, it just, again, it's just a, a, it's a total game changer. I feel like the survivors should have actually just gone in with a more anti-Dreamwitch team comp. Um, they kind of really didn't do that. I mean, mercenary psychologists are good for going against Dreamwitch, but then you go patient and entomologist, which, I mean, they're fine for playing against Dreamwitch. Again, that's a that's sort of a Japanese uh, meta strategy. But you could have gone something more uh, Dreamwitch counter. You could have gone Gravekeeper. You could have gone, should have, I, I believe MP should have gone forward. I think the best team comp for them there is to try to get a, uh, is try to get Merc forward, psychologist, and Bomber. And Bomber is actually very, Strong against Dreamwitch because how that plays out, um, a lot of people don't really. Uh, um, the, the reason why we see a lot of the Dreamwitches over in IVL actually ban in Bomber is because how that situation plays out is that in Bomber goes down, you pop in away, the leech will follow. The Dreamwitch will catch up very easily, so it, it would seem like in Bomber's not good, but in Bomber is good because then you die to your leech. You force using the coffin, the leech is going to follow you, but then you die to your leech. So you force a leech down, and then you also don't have to have someone go in for a rescue, which means you don't get a free injury as the Dreamwitch. So Dreamwitch, if you cough in against a Dreamwitch, the Dreamwitch does not get a free injury, and you also die to Leech as in Bomber, which is very, very good for survivors. But they didn't go for that strategy. They played Entomologist Patient, which doesn't make as much sense, but uh, it unfortunately did not work out for them either. Mm, yeah, definitely. I, I believe that at the same time, when the mercenary was there and he was stopped by the patroller, then um, it was the first time that Elise actually used the patroller because before that he didn't need, need to use the patroller with a patient kite. So that was one thing. And then another thing was that when he swiftly changed to blink, it was just all GG for that side because he already knew that he's safe enough. When the hunter decides to use the trump card, it's because either they're safe enough to, to be able to say that they don't need the trait before they had like patroller like they don't think they need it and they just go all the way with blink so that is one of the things that dream which did like swiftly changed to blink and decided to just speed up the process and uh, that is one thing that bl like uh, bl no5 likes to do quite a lot is like bring trump card like we have seen him using trump card in different ways usually always brings blink and then we'll change to patroller and sometimes will be the other way patroller and then change to blink 
And if, if he plays Breaking Wheel, he will first bring Blink and then change to Keeper. So that is one of the things that I was like, uh, I think like he used more common nowadays rather than bring excitement first because we saw Moro brought excitement first and since he didn't use it as well that I believe that he probably could have chose some other tree or maybe like you said, just save it for changing to abnormal or something different. But yeah, like you said, this dream which was very steady from the beginning of the match and then Bajan didn't really get to use his hooks as much, or maybe that is one of the things that counters uh, counters the survivors at this point. Yeah, so with the, obviously, uh, German Spring Trump card starting for Trollers, switching to Link late game, uh, as well with Wheel Blink switching the, the Keepers. I mean, that's pretty standard. That's how most uh, of those type of hunters w would play. Um, and then obviously you can start with Blink. The reason why you start Blink sometimes instead of Patroller is if you're going against things like, if you're worried about Flywheel or if you're worried about uh, characters like Barmaid, but you ban Barmaid. So if you ban Barmaid, you can kind of just safely play Patrol and you don't really have to worry about it as much. Of course, you still have to worry about Flywheel, but that was not really a big factor in that match. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, starting uh, Patroller to Patroller to Blink Switch is pretty standard for, for a lot of Dream Witches. But yeah, I mean, you know, typically that's how you that's how it goes with Dream Witches. You know, you get in a situation where they go for a rescue, your trade swaps online, and you just switch to Blink, and you get it down that way. That's why Dream Witch is so consistent, is you can double Patroller for the first kill, then you can switch to Blink late game and have that sort of, um, um, you know, excellent chase, because you can Blink with every single leech. So that's kind of the, the big game changer. Of course, not even needing to use Blink, uh, Patroller for the first down was very important, a very quick kill, dying middle. Anytime you die middle against a Dream Witch, that's very weak, because the Dream Witch, it's so much easier. We are going to see uh, a substitution here as well, but it's so much easier for... The uh, the dream witch to pressure cipher machines from middle because then you can just send that follower that's that's connected to the um, the survivor chair to the middle cipher uh, the middle chair and pressure the ciphers around that we're going to see looks like Chinatown is banned for MP and now BL is picking ever sleeping so um, mm. this opens up some opportunities wow. uh, actually very for, for number five very well because sculptor very good on this map wheel good on this map mm. dream witch good on this map ever sleeping count very good for those three types of hunters. Yeah, actually, yesterday he chose Wax Artist as well, so that is interesting to see why he will bring that out again. Like, um, of course, like it's not one of the first uh, picks that we see in Bo One, but now in Bo Two, it might be possible a Wax Artist. Uh, we've seen it before, and usually in this map, it works mainly because there's a lot of windows that the hunter can block, and also there's a lot of ciphers that are close to chairs. That, so the hunter can control both cipher and chair at the same time. So that's how we see a way of playing wax artist. So since Liz is coming into this match with not much pressure because they have the upper hand, then I believe they could feel uh, freely enough to use either wax artist or a hunter that doesn't require that much strength. Like we will definitely know that his dream witch will be banned for sure. But there's a huge possibility for bomb bomb. He's known for playing bomb bomb as well. Sculpture and wax artists. So which one of these three hunters do you think will be the best to enter this BO2 again MP? Uh, yeah, it depends. We'll see who plays Survivor and Hunters. Uh, a faction pick will be very important as well. If BL Survivors go first, BL Survivors win, then he'll probably just play a tie hunter, maybe something like Wax Artist. If BL Survivors only tie, then it becomes a little bit more interesting. You know, does number five try to go for more of aggressive strategy? Uh, we saw a Breaking Wheel from him round two yesterday. But Breaking Wheel, again, it's not that good anymore. So I don't really know. Uh, um, we'll, we'll have to see uh, what, you know, what uh, they have to go. It looks like we're going to see Moral Hunting first. I think BL actually having the option to play Survivor first benefits them more because then, of course, number five will be, know what type of hunter they need to play. So I'm actually surprised MP selects to play hunter first. Of course, MP does have faction selection here. It looks like Geisha Bannon uh, into a, a, a Siren Ford Ben as well. So... Uh, Geisha Ban is interesting. Um, I don't know what uh, Moru's attempting to play with a, with a Seer Forward Ban. Probably not a Bon Bon. Maybe trying to play Clerk again, because again, Seer Forward makes the most sense for, uh, for a Clerk player. Yes, um, I think it's a good choice to ban Geisha, because Geisha is very strong in this map. It has an amazing butterfly usage, and Moro is known for play Geisha as well. So we can see that BL has definitely done their homework on their side to study to counter Mad Penguins, because Mad Penguins is a very strong team, Southeast Asia, representing Vietnam in this, in this, in this competition, together with Sugar, two Vietnamese teams. So I believe like uh, BL respecting the fact that these teams have come so far, and... 
studying the other uh, the other side is very important. So geisha band here, a respect band for Boris Geisha. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so did BL just not play priest? I I don't understand. I mean, they literally just gave priestess on every sitting town, and they didn't take it, and they haven't banned it. Um, I'm actually really confused. Uh, it, it could be that BL just doesn't like to play priestess, but um, that really doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Seer 4 ban, no priestess walk. So this is very curious. We're going to see Acrobat and Enchantress being banned as the second two survivors here. And it looks like Postman, so no priestess on the best, one of the best priestess maps in the game. Uh, very curious decision for BL. But again, another one of the instances of Southeast Asia just uh, really surprising me, so... Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely don't agree with that at all. But we'll, again, we'll have to see exactly. Um, <laughs> we'll have to see exactly how that comes out here. Breaking wheel from Moro. This is really interesting. We talked about breaking yeah. wheel not being a very strong character uh, in the current meta, but uh, I think Moro is kind of acknowledging it's a difficult situation for MP. They're down eight to one. They really need to try to come back here. So uh, I think breaking wheel is kind of just uh, one of those do or die characters where you know flywheels can be very difficult to deal with, but in a situation where you're down seven points, you really need to come back aggressive. Yeah, Morus breaking wheel in Ever Sleeping Town, one of the best maps for breaking wheel to come out. So I'm really not surprised to see him since there is no Muli River back here. So the second best map is definitely Ever Sleeping Town. Moro taking this advantage to use one of his favorite hunters. He has got a lot of training, a lot of experience playing breaking wheel. Again, like you said, this is a new meta, guys. There's Flywheel in the house, and it is BL, the team that is leading. So MP here needs to bring all those points back and try to wrap up this match and get those points back and, and give less pressure to his survivors because the survivors just face an all kill from BL Greenwich. So this is the moment that Moro will have to step up his game and bring the best he can to the table because it is a breaking wheel in every sleeping town. And it's going to be very exciting because with Flywheel, like you said, we saw yesterday, Eli, how difficult it can be for a breaking wheel to deal against the survivors. But the difference here, though, is the lineup. There is no stunners and there's no real harassers. So that could be a good thing uh, also, Eli, for bringing a breaking wheel against this particular lineup. Yeah, I mean, but you also think about yesterday's match. There wasn't really a harasser there yet. I mean, you had Prospector, but Prospector's not really a harasser. He's sort of just like a late game. Uh, time waster, which, I mean, I guess that's sort of the definition of harassing, but he's not... The Harassers against a breaking wheel are characters um, that can uh, help extend kites early game. The way you beat breaking wheel before flywheel is you have harassers... Let me rephrase that. You have harassers that can extend kites. You can extend the first kite. So, batter four going to harass early are very strong. Prospects are sort of like a late game, waste a little bit of time, maybe long enough for someone to struggle free. That's not really like it's not really the same sort of. It's hard to explain, but it's not the same sort of situation. Um, but um, it, it's sort of like a soft. It's sort of like a, a soft harasser rather than a hard aggressive harasser. So, anyways, we're gonna see. Um, you know, we're gonna see again. Yeah, as you mentioned, I guess no like stun character at all. But you do have entomologist. Entomologist is a good supporter um, and can harass against a. Uh, breaking wheel early. So Entomologist is definitely not bad to have there. Patient break. See, the problem is this team comp is so hard for wheel. I mean, Entomologist, Patient are so good against wheel. Uh, Patient's kiting on ever sleeping against wheel is so strong. Entomologist support and kiting against wheel. Very strong. Postman Cypher Rush. Uh, it's hard for the breaking wheel to deal with and a, and a consistent rescue like Mercenary. I mean, yeah, it's a good wheel map, but with Flywheel and with an incredibly strong comp, this is really tough for Moro. We're going to see him go to two-story heading immediately towards Graveyard. Does find the location. Uh, of the Postman. Postman bolts right away. He actually almost gives a free hit there. He's able to get the dog. This is actually going to force Moro back into wheel form in a moment here. Uh, as soon as he misses this trap, he'll go back into wheel form. Yep, there you go. And uh, we are going to see no confined space. So I believe that he probably has a left-right build. Uh, maybe a detention insolence, but I would imagine the situation probably left-right when you're being down this many points. Two instant spikes here from Moro. This is really strong. Does have flywheel to avoid. Uh, this hit here, and there it is, Troy. Just a uh, perfect example of Flywheel being very strong against Breaking Wheel. Yeah, beautiful Flywheel coming in from Rem, coming in around this pal. He knows there's going to be blocks, so now going Ooh. around it, but we'll take the first down here in Graveyard. Actually, this is actually a very good area for Rem to be down because there's no ciphers here. There's someone coming in from behind, maybe trying to aim for an early rescue, but we'll see what is going to be the strategy. Hiding and tiptoeing around this behind this chair is going to be... Either the mercenary, yeah, or the or the patient, yeah, because he has the wonder order as well. 
So he definitely doesn't want to get uh, spike early. And he used the flywheel also to avoid the long distance spike. And we'll see how can he use this hook in time or Moro will deny this early rescue. Now coming in, aiming that over Moro's head, getting a normal hit and just going for the rescue before half. Yeah, he, he's not going to use the hook. So what he's doing there is he's trying to bait Moro into swinging early, which he does a few times there and actually gets it body blocked, unfortunately. But what he's trying to do is he's trying to bait. He's just using that for the, the breaking wheel to hit him um, and then um, and then go back. We are going to see him. He's going to get that spike onto the postman here. Postman's flywheel still on cooldown. We're going to see him get out of wheel from. Does he connect this? Oh, he does not have full presence just yet. But he does have the blink that is going to get the down. Uh, and yeah, no, no, uh, no forward, no batter to, to support this. So... Um, with that flywheel being on cooldown, we actually see Breaking Wheel being quite effective. We're going to see him on chair for the second time. Actually patient, not bring Tide Turner. Uh, of course, we saw that flywheel instead. It was quite interesting. Uh, only a single Tide Turner with that Mercenary. Uh, we're going to see patient get back up here, but Moro's actually put himself in a very strong position. You know, again, we talked about Breaking Wheel not being very strong here, but if there's any chance for MP to come back, it's right here with this excellent wheel gameplay. And Potato trying to aim for the rescue. He has the sight on him, so he can definitely not hide. So he's on complete uh, going to be advantage here for Potato because he can decide whether rescue or not. He's going to wait for Moru to come out of wheelchair or just take that spike. Yes, getting the spike indeed, getting the rescue done. There is tight turning and effect. The bees come to help, but don't do much. And Potato wow. will take a body block and also will take a hit. So now Double it's up hit. to Rem. A double hit, yes. How long will he yep. tie here in this window area? Testing Morris, driving his skills once again, luring him here. There is no dog that could bite. So wait, waiting for the for the hunter to get out of wheel form. Yeah, and no trade as well. Goes for the uh, goes for the snap. So that's just gonna secure the down. Uh, sorry, what I mean, no flywheel. I was about to say. So he's gonna get the snap and he's gonna get the down. They're actually able to to flick quite a few ciphers here. We have one that's about to pop here, ninety percent of the way down. The other two at fifty. So. Uh, if Mercenary wasn't double hit, this position is 100% drawn. But with Mercenary being down and Patient being half health, that actually gives Moro enough opportunities to actually go. Yeah, see, you can just go for the Patient. You can get this to, uh, on here. He has to flywheel the snap. So what we're going to see is Patient's going to hook right here. He's going to hook over the wall. He's going to flywheel the snap, or he's going to take... Uh, well, I don't think he's going to take... He should flywheel the snap. Does he flywheel? Does flywheel the snap? Beautiful flywheel. From the patient here, uh, and he's oh, but he still goes down anyway, so it ends up not even mattering at all here. Um, and uh, that would have been very crucial if he's able to kite that out. And again, you see it right there why breaking will struggles against flywheel, but it ends up not mattering. Patient's gonna go down anyway, not enough cipher progress because mercenary is on the ground, and uh, I think Morris might have found himself a potential winning position. Oh, and Domology is on the move right here. Come a bit early for the rescue because he knows that cannot get stuff. And now Mercenary also going the same direction. Maybe he just plans to go finish the machine, but no, avoiding the trap beautifully. But although go two spikes, this is very dangerous. And now Mercenary will be come for the rescue from behind. Yeah, we're going to see Entomologist is going to go down there. Going to drop a peeper here uh, back into wheel form with the bees pushing him away there. Um, and it looks like he does not actually see the patient. He's going to go for the mercenary instead here. Uh, mercenary still has two level pads, so he should be able to live this uh, if he gets out of wheel form, which he will do right here. Will he use the elbow pad? Yeah, he's going to use one elbow pad there to uh, stay out of the snap range. Is he going to use the second one? He's going to use both elbow pads, just really not wanting to go down here. Moro uh, is going to go ahead and is going to go ahead and leave, which is perfectly fine. Again, you don't want to commit too long to that mercenary, but. The ideal situation is you get both of his elbow pads out. He has two spikes here. He's going to be able to stay up and decode. But, yeah, I mean, this situation is pretty much just winning. Uh, everyone injured. Entomologist on the ground. And two cyphers still to go, even with both of them being at half health. Moro has definitely found a winning position here. Mercenary will go down to a snap with no elbow pads. Uh, I'm actually surprised he didn't just snap right there. But he's going to snap down the mercenary. I'd imagine he'll probably just yeah, peeper, leave here, and just try to try find that patient. He's just going to slug each one of these survivors make them waste their self heals if they haven't already done so, um, and just play the slow burner here and go for that long four man. Yeah, he loin he going for that machine again to the patient, getting the spike on him. He's already have health. He only has one hook though, so he needs he needs to make this hook last, and he needs to time it very well. Will he be able to do it? Oh, going for the flywheel, but flywheeling against the hunter and will be take the hit entomologist has just used the self heal so she's going to decode a machine all the way in the back trying to 
be as far as possible from Moru, but Moru already is going to start to look for her and we'll see whether she can make it either to heal mercenary or patient because if she gets found, it will most likely be a GG from this point. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we're going to see Moro kind of just uh, look around here trying to find the entomologist using that upstairs two story. That's one of the ways you can be strong against Will because, uh, you know, of course you have that. It looks like he's actually going to get out and go for the chair here on the mercenary. So this is kind of what you have to do as a wheel player. Um, oh, we got to watch for the time. What you have to do as a wheel player is, is you have to apply pressure in one way or the other. So you slug survivors when you want to go pressure cipher machines, preventing them from being primed. But you share survivors when you want, uh, when the, everyone's not decoding. So when nobody's decoding, and you need to uh, apply pressure, forcing force someone to go for a rescue to get them off of ciphers, which is in this case what he's trying to do. He needs to apply some sort of pressure. Patient is going to use a self here, so he's going to go back to patient. I think. No, actually, yeah, he doesn't have time. He goes back to patient. Entomologist could potentially prime this last cipher. Entomologist still has flywheel available. Is able to use that flywheel to avoid that full presence, and he actually can kite this out. Uh, because of, uh, actually, Moro could have just snapped there to at least get the injury on him, but it looks like he's not going to go that. Just going to continue on to the entomologist. And again, you see Flywheel just really changing games here against Breaking Wheel. Yeah, also going for that, these are now finally going for that snap and putting a peeper on entomology doesn't want to waste time sharing her because he knows he she already used the self-heal. And now going to ba go back to the graveyard area because he believes there's potato there. Finding the blood trail and the mercenary will be, if he gets shared, it will be his last chair, Eli. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's going to go ahead and vault that window into Graveyard. Goes for that trap onto the mercenary, uh, unable to get that there. And it looks like he's just going to go back. I think he assumes the survivors are probably healing, uh, which no, he is obviously papers. the correct decision. Oh, he does have papers as well. Um, and he's going to go back and uh, and look. Uh, go for that. Uh, the entomologist does not have uh, the Bible available just yet. Uh, it looks like, and he's trying to get that trap here using the last of the beast. Does get the hit. He's going to knock down the beast, but does get the trap onto the entomologist as well. Um, so he's able to uh, to get that down there. And they're just going to kind of keep trying to split the cypher machine. This is really just kind of a back and forth game here uh, using that wheel form to get back uh, to the mercenary, just trying to pressure him off the cypher. I mean, it's really just a back and forth game. This is kind of how wheel, the, these wheel matchups go, is you kind of have to constantly go back pressuring these cypher machines. We are going to see mercenary utilizing that graveyard to stay out of range uh, of that breaking wheel form, but he does have that full presence and he can just get the snap onto the mercenary. Misses the snap there, out of range. We saw the pallet boost there, knee jerk reflex for the mercenary, which is a uh, definitely a more common build we've seen in mercenary staying alive. That is really key here. It wastes a lot of extra time for the survivors to heal up and potentially decode. Yeah, now going to take this guy as far as possible that he can because the survivors all are healing up, which is very important. Entomologist is on the last cipher, which is 80%. Will Moru be able to make it back? I think Mercenary will fly first. And then when that when that happens, the mach last machine will be able to be popped. So we'll wait to see what is the plan here with BL, Entomologist, and Patient, the last two survivors in the map. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's going to go ahead and get that spike onto the patient cipher machine, of course, not being primed, using that hook to get into graveyard here. And somehow, I mean, BL survivors somehow managed to turn this into a drawn situation. We're going to get the rescue off here. They got to pop the cipher machine before they allow for the snap here, and they're going to pop it right away. Uh, this is a little bit risky. Of course, patient will go down to one basic hit. Oh, patient running back into the hunter, and it's going to go down. Big misstep, unfortunately, for this patient. Um, he's going to be able to peeper patient. I don't believe, uh, believe does not have self heal anymore. He's going to try to make it to the other exegate here, and they're not going to have enough time to open. And while it may have looked like a drawn position because nobody has fly, uh, self heal because they, a lot of the stars have already extended it, this is where things get really difficult. We are going to see him continue. Uh, looks like chasing after the mercenary, back doubling back into the breaking wheel. Entomologist is able to get the exegate open in time, but Moru on track to get three survivors potentially eliminated. Yeah, now uh, Potato is buying some time here. He knows Patient has... An, ooh, my God. The Snap also missed once again. The Trap also. Potato is aiming. He, he cannot go to Dungeon right now because Patient is still healing up in Graveyard. So he's just I think he's going to make a mad dash towards the gate. And he has no items to work with. With three spikes in, it's going to be very difficult to go to the gate. And he knows that. We'll see what is going to be more of a strategy here. Getting a Trap Beautiful here on trap. Potato! Yeah, beautiful trap there. It's going to get the down onto the mercenary. Uh, of course, entomologist will be able to make the one escape here, but you can just share this mercenary uh, and then go get that uh, patient. And, you know, it's still not bad. BL was able to get one survivor out the gate in a situation where 
They really just had a losing position. So uh, he's actually going to drop Mercenary. I think he's going to go ahead and pressure Patient. Uh, I'm not sure why I used the extended strike right there, but he is going to go ahead and pressure Patient. He wants to make sure that nobody goes for the heal on the Patient, and he's going to go over here and see that, uh, obviously. Uh, the Entomologist is still at the other gate. He's going to come back. He's going to go ahead and share Mercenary. There's a small chance Mercenary gets Struggle Free here, but it is pretty unlikely. Um, and he does actually get the Struggle Free, uh, but I don't know if it's actually going to matter here. Uh, mercenary has no items to work with. Um, and he can just go for one spike onto the Mercenary, go for a basic hit, and that will secure the down again onto the Mercenary. Wow, the Mercenary with will to survive, that is actually so difficult to have. But look at look at this now, there's Entomologist here. Is she aiming for a body block aid in the kite? Maybe try to help him go to the gate because it's open already. So now it's going to be two survivors lingering around this gate area. We'll see how does more wow we snap out and we'll snap the mercenaries. This is very dangerous. There's a peeper on there, a trap missed by the entomologist. Mini Blue is co coming back. He doesn't want this match to be over yet. He's still going for it and Taking the trap on purpose just to eliminate it and now dashing to the gate. Ooh, Balakstan coming in for entomologist and will be dashing out of the gate. That no, he didn't really flywheel. Cool. He didn't flywheel and BL survivors. Why? Why? They throw the they throw the one escape. Uh entomologist didn't flywheel there. They could have just flywheeled and made out the exit gate. That is a huge, huge turn of events. Um yeah, you have to get one survivor out. You cannot get four eliminated here if you're BL. I mean, of course, you have the lead, but you just lost. You just blew your entire lead with that one play. I don't understand uh, the, the game plan there. I, I don't get it. I mean, there's no real way for the survivors to uh, to get out there. So um, I, that makes no sense. I, I don't understand. BL survivors, they could have gotten one out uh, with the way number five has been playing. Maybe could have eliminated all four survivors, and BL could have just won in two rounds, and just like that. We're 100 percent gonna see a third round. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, there's no way. The breaking mill has insolence, which means that you have the 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 aftershock trait. So that's the trait right before, uh, before you get the insolence, which means survivors can only heal to 60 percent when they don't have self heal. So you see that, you know, when you go into insolence, hunter can only heal to 60 percent. So there's no way for entomologists to pick up the mercenary. So I don't know why entomologists leaves the gate there. Just stay in the gate, take the one escape. I, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, that's just a huge. Uh, a huge, huge misstep for BL. I believe the entomologist got a little bit confident because you saw her taking the trap. I think she was trying to aim the mercenary of his escape, maybe eating the straps for him and opening the way to the gate. But was a mishap there that she didn't manage to use the flywheel after dashing from the pallet because that could have given her a huge speed boost and able for Moro to get a hit on her. But that was not what happened and Moro got a very nice all kill against Matt Penguin against BL. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just uh, it's just an interesting situation. Um, and um, and okay, it looks like Mercenary did actually still have self heal, but yeah, either way, uh, you know, every time you get down as a Mercenary, you get more and more time added to your how long it takes to heal. So with the way the Merc because Mercenary is down so many times that match. Um, it, it just keeps stacking and stacking, so it takes them so long to heal up. So I think the idea was that uh, you, um, the idea is that um, entomologist stays alive long enough for mercenary to self heal and get up. But just, um, I don't I mean, I understand that, but because of how long it takes to heal, it just doesn't really make sense. I mean, there's a good chance mercenary even bleeds out before he gets up. I mean, that's just like, it, it's just like as soon as as soon as um, entomologist took that that snap and took that quarter damage, they should have gone. They should have gone to the gate. Don't push for the tie. You have to get one out there. You cannot take that risk. As soon as he gets that one chip, what happens is Breaking Will gets another chip, and then he's one shot. And as soon as he gets one shot, if you miss that flywheel, which is what he did, he missed the flywheel, it's over. You get four You get four killed. So it's really just, uh, you can't take that. I mean, I understand because, you know, um, uh, a mercenary did, did still have self-heal. You, you have to, you, you can try to delay it so mercenary could potentially get up. But as soon as you take the first little chip, that's when you gotta leave. You cannot do that. Unfortunately, entomologist big miss up there cost the one escape here. Um, and now, not only does number five had already had a little bit of pressure with a, a one survivor escape, now a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on the hunter side here. Um, and just like that, uh, Mad Penguins in a situation where they can easily come back into this one. Yeah, definitely. Pressure is going back to BLNO5 at least. So since we already saw that he brought Wing Witch 
and he can uh, he can potentially bring another breaking wheel because this is a map that is very good for his breaking wheel but we'll see what hunter will choose but bo3 which will be the map do you think which is going to be the map that they will pick here since they need to get those points back um well we we still have to see how this is gonna i mean obviously th this round's not over we gotta focus on this round first because it depends on how this plays out. Uh, if if WP is able to get a uh, sorry, if MP is able to get a survivor out here, then they're still um, if they're able to, they still win the round. So then you go into the last round, then MP has to win um, just the round in general. Um, but if you're if, if this hunter gets a four person elimination, then it becomes a lot more challenging because then MP has to win the last round eight to one, which is very very difficult to do. So I think that in reality. Um, uh, in reality, it really just comes down to can the Mad Penguin survivors at least win the round? They have to win the round. That's kind of the main goal here. Uh, and uh, in reality, we, we can't really start thinking about the third round map selection until you see the results of this one. So, I mean, you can think of, you, you can look at things like, you know, if M, you know, if uh, if MP ties this round, all four survivors get eliminated. Then you go into the last round. BL gets to pick. Uh, uh, no, MP gets to pick map because they had first map selection. So MP would probably pick. They'd probably go to that Moonlit River Park that we talked about. That's the the, the map mm -hmm. it's had the most success on. Um, they may just go there for any situation, but here, yeah, I, I don't know. You really have to focus on MP survivors. Yeah, how do they win this? Yes. How do they secure the win for this round? Yeah, I think I was saying like I think since we just saw a Morris breaking wheel, since Liz is known to also have played breaking wheel before and also getting very good results. I believe it's a huge possibility that we'll see BL's NO5 breaking wheel coming into play as well. And you will you'll see the difference in play styles because he's definitely uh, going to use uh, also different play styles. I think the, both hunters are very good with breaking wheel, but once again, we haven't really seen breaking wheel going much against flywheel. And we saw today, how does flywheel really contest breaking wheel, but more uh, getting that advantage even on top of the breaking wheel, using that you said the persona of insolence and making the survivors crumble apart when the sapper machine was popped. And that was so difficult to do because even when the sapper machine was popped, there were still three survivors remaining, but he managed to get from three to a tie. And then at the very end, he made that become an all kill. So that is the strength of breaking wheel, especially when survivors want to change the outcome. Instead of getting one, they want to get one more out and that is where Breaking Wheel takes advantage of that. And that is exactly what Moro did in this last match. He knew that he it was going to be a tie most likely, but he decided not to just give up and went back for the mercenary. And then Entomology decided to also come for body block, but at the end it didn't work out. And then Moro ended up having an all kill. So this is just the potential that uh, Breaking Wheel can have towards the end of the game. Yeah, it's not that he knew he was going to be a tie. I think it's more that he, he actually knows in that situation that he has a three-kill position on board because, again, we talked about this earlier in the match. When no one has self-heal or most survivors of the match don't have self-heal, then if you're able to down someone uh, pretty fast towards the end, you can just slug them. You can just leave them slug. They can't get up. So it's almost like you chaired them anyway. Um, so it, it's so so going in that situation, as soon as they pop the Cypher with three up, normally you have the mindset of, oh, it's going to be a tie. But as a breaking wheel player with patient not having self heal, you know that you have 3k on board. As long as you're able to down patient reasonably quick, you can catch up to mercenary. Patient doesn't have self heal, you can share mercenary, um, and then patient cannot get up. So then you put yourself in a situation where you, you still get a three survivor elimination. But yeah, the BL uh, the BL survivors just uh, they got a little too aggressive. And when you're leading by that much, you don't have to be aggressive like that. You know, we we t I, this is something that I always love to mention. When you have a very large lead, you have to play conservatively. You should not play ultra aggressive. You got to play ultra conservative. You got to hold your lead as as best as possible. So there's no reason for BL to push for that there. There's no reason with the way number five's been playing, how strong they've been playing. There's no reason for BL to push that 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 tie. And with the lead that they have, you know, still getting one star out the gate there, they still hold a nice lead. There's no reason to to push for that. Now you just lose it. You lose it by so much, and now it's a uh, it's a two point. I think it's a two point deficit now, so it's very easy for uh, for MP to come back. Uh, it's um, it, it's tough. It, it's really tough um, uh, for for BL. I mean, considering that's such a large lead, now it's really just falling apart for them. But as we have number five on the hunter side here, as you mentioned, maybe breaking wheel will come out again. You bring break in this meta. You don't play breaking wheel because you uh, early rounds because you want to win because you can't because of flywheel. But in this meta, you bring breaking wheel out. 
when you need to play aggressive in the later rounds, and this is one of those situations for sure. Yeah, in this meta, it's not common, definitely. There's a huge possibility that he will bring an uh, NO5 should win break hero because he definitely played before and he's a, he's a consistent 4k hunter. So, guys, we might see a 4k mirror match. Uh, it's very common for Blitz to bring those type of aggressive, he's very aggressive style as well. He likes, he doesn't like to bring uh, insolence in the beginning, he, he prefers trump card and detention build in general. So, I think it's going to be a different persona from the beginning, but the play style is going to be a little bit similar, maybe not as aggressive because he has a different play style. He goes more for the blink build and then will swiftly change to either um, Keeper and Teleport. So it really depends also on the lineup that MP will bring now. Like maybe they will decide to come for Stunners, maybe they will bring out uh, maybe Enchantress. Do you think either Enchantress or Magician? Because this is the survivors they main, right? They main Enchantress, Magician, Acrobat. So I think from those, I think which one will be the best combo, in your opinion, to counter a breaking wheel? Um, uh, it, it's not really about combo, it's more about... So the, the way I look at these sort of situations is that it's not really about any tournament setting. It's not about what characters you're good at playing. Although in Southeast Asia, that's kind of been a common theme, which is something that I'm still... Uh, struggling to understand but you know we'll see how it plays out but um it, it's more about um uh, it's more about what care it's it's so it's not really about what characters are like you know it's like okay yeah, we, we're gonna play this character so we're gonna play it. it's about what characters are um you know fit into the to the current meta so right now looking at the situation um if uh if number five does actually want to play um if number five does actually want to play breaking wheel we should see a forward seer ban um, maybe Priestess, but Forward Seer would make the most sense. Um, but again, you know, Southeast Asia, again, continues to surprise me, so I don't know. Uh, but we'll <laughs> see here. Um, if they are playing Breaking, we'll probably see some combination of Forward Seer or Priestess. The survivors will take one of the characters that wasn't... Okay, so it is Forward Seer, and we're going to see Priest... We should see Priestess Merc get locked in, or Priestess Acrobat, That would or Priestess Patient. One of those combinations would make the most sense. Uh, we're going to see Dream Witch Man, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, we still have Sculptor on the table as well. That's definitely a possibility. Wax Artist on the table, but in this situation, we have to get a four kill. Wax Artist doesn't make the most sense. Entomologist here as well. And again, no Priestess on Ever Sleeping Town. So I, you know, I'm still struggling to understand the logic in that, <laughs> but we'll see how it plays out for these teams. Yeah, here, guys, we're seeing Eli versus the Southeast Asia meta that he's casting today. So, yeah, definitely a little bit different from what you have been seeing in AU. But definitely something worth seeing because we did see here uh, BL is respecting the priestess and throwing there a priestess ban together with a patient ban. And just to refresh for anyone that's coming into the live stream, we are watching MPBL BO2 still is going to be ever sleeping town, one of the best maps for breaking wheel. And since we just saw a, a four kill breaking wheel with Moru, we most likely will see another. Oh no, it's going to be a sculpture. Wow, definitely didn't expect that because, wow, that is definitely something new. Um, a very strong hunter for this map, we've seen him use before, but against this combo though, there is Entomologist, Mercenary, Enchantress, and Female Dancer. This is actually not too bad uh, survivor pick here against Akilatia, but like you said, ooh, there's gonna be a stunner Eli, mm, something we haven't seen yet, so... A very strong harasser coming in from the Mad Penguins survivor side. Uh, yeah, it's more 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 support rather than harass. But yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. Enchant uh, Enchantress here is is fine. Enchantress is actually very good uh, against breaking wheel and sculpture, so it's a nice little. Uh, it, it works in both ways. Again, you know, characters that are good in the current meta that can counter the most hunters. That's important. Not necessarily what characters. Uh, oh, you know, I play magician, so I'm gonna play this. It's more about what characters can be. Um, uh, it, it's about what characters that could be good in general. So we're gonna see, um, yeah, Enchantress here, uh, of course, being strong against free, uh, being strong against Sculptor and Breaking Wheel. So that's very nice to have on the table. Dancer is good against Wheel, so I think maybe that kind of forced him off of the Wheel. Of course, we see stunning characters have no effect against the Wheel form, but the slow boxes from Dancer actually do have effect against the Wheel form. So I think that could be a little bit of a factor there. And then Entomologist is good in general. So. You know, MP able to get a pretty decent team comp here, um, but uh, yeah, let's see what they're able to do against a sculptor. Sculptor 
right now more of a tie hunter rather than a win hunter. Does have win potential, but it's gonna be difficult to get a four person elimination with this sort of hunter. Oh yeah, I want to clarify with you. Like I heard, like a uh, priestess is actually not a very good survivor going against breaking wheel because the yeah, wheel that's... form can go fast through the portal. So that's why they decided not to pick it up. So let's yeah, get back that's... into every sleeping town. Yeah, back. Uh, yeah, into our match here. We're gonna see the um, the fake gate spawn heading towards the middle. Um, we'll go back to that uh, priestess idea after this match. But we are gonna see him go towards middle, head towards graveyard, um, and um, uh, and he's no, actually gonna go towards middle instead. Two survivors rotating into the uh, the sculptor here, so could be a pretty nice find. Obviously, not gonna commit to mercenary here. Does see anomaly? Uh, I believe that's the female dancer. Yeah, is the dancer is able to get the spell box down, avoiding. All of these boxes, look at that. We're going to see a left-right build. This is actually kind of a, this is like a 4K or no, this is like a 4 kill or no kill build. So you have no detention, but you have a lot of strong early game. You build up to your, uh, you build up to your full presence quicker with that insolence. But we're going to see him dodge that. He's going to use, be able to use the spin here. No, nope, he's actually going to go for the vault. Does get the first ship here, Soy. Um, but of course, still has the soul box to work with. We did not see the sculptor break it yet. He's just going to keep looping this area. Oh, we're using the dance here to dance away those status, placing another music box. That is a very good gameplay here from Fuel Dancer. Going again, entering her music box area, dodging those status but taking a normal hit in exchange. That is actually the gameplay here coming from Anchan and also kiting away, going try to aim for this area where there is still mm, uh, two survivors here decoding, one next to her, another one in the second story because the fees are coming into play to help her for this kite, Eli. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, entomology support, very crucial going against something like a sculptor. Uh, I think this, this dancer is doing a really good job. We are going to see the blink that is going to get the down here. Um, but first kite, not bad. So this is enough for a draw. This is definitely enough for a draw. I think the big uh, game changer here is that the sculptor does have insolence. So he's going to be able to build up to that full presence a lot quicker. Uh, we also have the entomologist fees in effect here that can help support that rescue. Um, sculptor looking around, I think waiting... Uh, okay, I think he was waiting for that cypher machine to start moving so we can go ahead and spike it here, force them uh, off of the um, off of the cypher to slow down the uh, the cypher rush mercenary coming for the rescue. Do we have the entomologist beast to support? Here it is. Here come the beast. This is just what we were talking about. They're going to use this to push him away. This is going to allow him to get the re Oh no, the beast pushing him towards the chair. Gets the hit registered on the chair here because of those entomologist beasts pushing him towards the chair. Here come the beast forcing the sculptor back, buying more distance for the female dancer. We did take a chip in the process, and the bees again harassing here. Uh, he is forced to hit them. He's going to be forced to uh, uh, just kind of walk around, and the dancer makes it back to the slow box, which is very good there. We're going to see that uh, spin there to make a little bit more distance as well. So, um, yeah, MP positioning themselves pretty well here. Yeah, still four seconds remaining, oh. though. Very soon will be three, and it will be the down here for female dancer. Actually, it was a very nice rebound, Kai, because there's so many music boxes, and... NO5 hasn't been able to break them yet, so it will my some Oh, there's no chair here. Oh, that was so close, but goes exactly to the cipher to the cipher who's going to do a deduction there. But going back to the music box inside the the chair, that is actually not too bad because when they come to rescue him, uh, she will have feel the need to break those music box first. So yeah, a very good placement of music box from the female dancer. Yep. Uh, yeah, and you you know you saw MP again. The strategy is there. We talked about MP. It's a team that has, you know, they have the strategy to uh, to beat these very strong hunters like number five. And, you know, we're seeing that. We saw the entomologist bees support that first kite. We see the bees come support for the rescue. Actually, bees are very good um, when uh, pushing the hunter away from chair. Um, and you saw actually something very interesting. They pushed the hunter towards the chair. So when he swung, he actually hit the chair. Uh, that wasn't really intentional, but it, it works out. It's something that's really cool that you can do with entomologists. Um, that, that a lot of entomologists don't go for. They really just try to push the hunter away, and sometimes they get knocked into hitting the chair, um, and it, it actually works in that instance. So, a uh, nice little play there, and then the bees, of course, supporting the kite even longer. Um, but, yeah, the sculptor statue is really on point. Uh, the dancer was able to make it back to the music boxes, which was very uh, a very key factor, but it doesn't really matter because you hit your statues, then it's hard to kite. So, um, yeah, sculptor right now on track to... There's a chance of a win here with the the, the um, insolence reaching that full presence and still having trump card, but with no detention. If the survivors of MP make it to the end game with no detention, it's going to be very hard for the sculptor uh, to sort of clean up that end game situation. Yeah, exactly. I think the the, the fact that he gets a second chair is already huge because it gives a good advantage for Mad Penguins to come for a second rescue.
Mercenaries too. So the Mercenary was hit, then the other one to rescue could be either the Enchantress, and we know the Enchantress is a type of character that can all be right after the rescue. So once she gets the rescue, she will get one small stun, and that could help out with the Rebound Kai or Female Dancer, although she really has no more items to use. So that Rebound Kai will be extremely difficult coming in from Mad Penguins, but they will have to make this one count. There's Enchantress there, and there's still Entomology, so we'll see how will they play this second rescue off. Absolutely, we're gonna see the music box get broken here. Second chair for the dancer. Uh, they don't really have enough cipher progress to go for a win, so I think they're probably just gonna play for a tie here. Again, you know, MP. They need one survivor out the gate, uh, just to make sure that they um, uh, they win this round, right? Because there was a four survivor elimination. So I think that's definitely uh, what they're looking at here. And it looks like no rescue on to the female dancer at all. Uh, Enchantress uh, is going, but is yeah, not not not, not nearly enough time there. Um, we're going to see the change targets on to the, uh, the entomologist here, using that chisel on to the entomologist, trying to dodge this full presence here, is able to avoid those statues, um, and we're going to see him head towards Graveyard, so um, putting themselves in a strong hiding area, getting away from Cyphers, but Soy Milk's basement is here. Oh, he doesn't go for the vault. He's actually just going to take the basic hit so he doesn't take any chips, so, you know, I mean, that's an interesting decision, but it is reasonable, um, and we're going to see the entomologist trade. a tie there and uh they are going to be winning round number two here seven to two for this score yes amazing comeback here from mp being able to get a tie against a consistent 4k hunter is a huge thing eli because uh, brilliant here no5 from brilliant team has shown to be a very consistent four kill hunter so mp is mm -hmm. definitely improving their their strategy as well and like Fudge likes to say diamonds are made under pressure and that's what we see in the growth of mad penguins coming back coming back regaining their tempo and also bringing back some of the good gameplays because we saw there the female dancer uh, boxes placement was really really on point and he managed to dance like three times away from those statues even though yep. he got a normal hit still was a very nice female dancer kite yeah absolutely um so uh, looking at our match stats here, we do have it shown uh, off to the oh. side here, but uh, 
Yeah, overall, we do have 300% uh, decoding from the... Uh, oh, we might actually get it on stream. Let's see if we're able to get it on stream. We are able to oh, get yes. it on stream. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, overall, 300% decoding, of course, from the Enchantress. Uh, overall containment time. First kite from the Dancer. 102 seconds, usually enough for a win. However, uh, of course, there was a little bit of support here and there. Entomologist slowing down Cypher Rush by using those bees. Um, and, of course, uh, the Dancer did kite through Mercenary early on. So, Mercenary lost a little bit of Cypher progress as well. Maybe a slight over-rotation from MP as well in the early game. Not really sure. That could have been a little bit of a difference maker there, but yeah, overall, we're able to get two survivors out the exit gate and MP. Winning round number two, of course, we do still have BL up on points. So if we go into this third round and the last round is a draw, BL will end up winning. However, if we go into the third round and MP actually wins the round, then MP will win. So for how it plays out for BL is BL needs to tie the last round or they need to win it. And if MP uh, ties or loses the round, obviously they will be out of this best of three here. So they will have to actually win round number three. Yeah, that is actually very, very hard stakes because MP will have to get three survivors out of that gate, while Bia will still have a little bit less pressure coming in for an 05 list. And we here see the match results so far MP with 8 points and BL with 10 points. So, guys, there's going to be a BO3 for you guys like are like rooting for Mad Penguins. Please spend some Penguin stickers. And if you guys rooting for BL Team Brilliant spam some with yellow hearts in the chat so we'll see for your support and show your support for your teams map penguins bl two amazing teams of southeast asia region bringing in the gameplay for today showing us also a new way of using the characters the meta there they're using also it's not something that um Eli, you're used to see like we're talking about the priestess early right what are your thoughts on the priestess uh, ban and not yeah the priestess early on yeah, so we, we've been told the reasoning was that Priestess is not strong against Breaking Wheel, which I am going to hard have to, I'm going to have to really hard go against that because Priestess, uh, we've seen Priestess be a very strong character uh, against Breaking Wheel in the Japan regions, in the uh, China region, even NAU region, which uh, can be a bit of a surprise. But um, we actually, Priestess, the reason, so some people uh we'll bring up the idea of priestess not being against wheel because oh breaking wheel can go through the portal and immediately take it down that's not really how priestess works against wheel how it works is that you set up portals when the wheel gets out of wheel form so that way you force them back into wheel form anytime you can force the breaking wheel back into wheel form that's when you waste time the way breaking wheels win is they get you know they get maybe like two quick spikes and they get it down on the first getting out of wheel form situation or they get one they spy they hit you and then they snap you for the they go back in the wheel and snap you again Priestess is really good against wheel because you you uh, you kite it you essentially you kite around a certain area until they get out of wheel form. Then your priestess sets up a portal as they're getting out of wheel form, and the survivor that's kiting then takes that portal and then you kite away and you can get out of being trapped and you force them back into wheel form to catch up to you. So priestess, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna really emphasize this here. Priestess is one of the best characters for going against a wheel, especially on Ever Sitting Town, if used properly. If you don't believe me, go watch Japan, go watch China. I promise you. They use Priestess to beat Breaking Wheel because Priestess support is very, very crucial. Um, so I, you know what? Southeast Asia has a lot of interesting strategies that we've seen come in. And some of them I really, uh, some of them I agree with, some of them I enjoy, some of them I really love to see because it's very unique. And then some of them also um, can be a little bit um, confusing to me and I'm still trying to understand some of it. But uh, of course the Priestess against Breaking Wheel, I promise you, is a very strong, uh, is a very strong uh, strategy on certain maps. Of course, Ever Sitting Town, mm. Chinatown, even Moonlit can be very good if utilized properly. There's a specific way you have to go about using it or else it becomes useless because as you mentioned, you know, Priestess uh, can, can be weak if the portals are immediately taken down by a wheel form. But if utilized properly in a specific way, then Priestess is very strong against wheel form. And that's why the China and Japan regions have been so good with using Priestess against the wheel form because they have a specific type of strategy. Again, waiting for them to get a wheel form, then you place the portal, then you take it, force them back into wheel form, and it wastes a lot of time for the survivors to decode. Yeah, Stephanie, I have to agree with you that Priestess is actually very good in certain maps. But for example, we have seen before, like Priestess is actually not that strong in Arms Factory maps or maps that sometimes they will, she will get found in an awkward situation. Uh, even though in Lakeside Village, for example, uh, because we also need to start thinking in like what will be the next map for our BO3. So, talking about Lakeside first, I believe that it really depends on the spawn too, because there's some really good places she can she can portal. But imagine she just gets found in a place that there's not many area for portaling, then that will be very difficult for a priestess. Because we have seen recently in IBL uh, Wolves, priestess got found really early in game. 
and got down so early that the survivors cannot really do much. And at the end, they just got uh, all killed. So that was definitely very difficult. So it really depends on the map. Like I totally agree with you. So talking about the maps, what do you think will be the map for our BO3? Yeah, so MP, I believe, will have map selection here. And as we talked about, Moonlit River Park, it's the map they really enjoy. So I think that's going to make the most sense for them. Uh, Moonlit's great for MP here because, of course, they're very proficient with that roller coaster game, uh, roller coaster support. Um, and also, Moonlit's kind of a difficult... Uh, it really depends. Like It's it's a bit challenging for, for number five because you can ban Dreamwitch. You can technically ban Wheel. And then you force them to play, like, maybe Sculptor on Moonlit. Sculptor on Moonlit's not very good uh, because it's very open. It's very easy to dodge statues. Actually, Moonlit's one of the weaker maps for Sculptor. So yes. I think that... Um, but then you allow Wax Artist, and Wax Artist is actually good on Moonlit. So I guess it really depends on the situation. Yeah. Um, because, again, if the, uh, the MP Survivor is able to get a win, right, then the mm-hmm. BL... Um, uh, the BL, uh, uh, sorry, if the uh, the MP Hunter is able to get a win, then the BL Hunter would have, number five, would have to get a win in return, right? So then you're kind of forced to play a win hunter like Sculptor, and you can't really play a time hunter like Wax Artist. So it's it's really kind of interesting. It's, again, which team has faction, which team will play uh, Survivor and Hunter first. It's really important. Yes. Um, but I think that Moonlit would make the most sense for MP because it's not really, it's not quite as strong um, for number five's round three hunters, and it's also um, very good for the MP Survivors. Yes, actually, I want to address the chat a little bit there. They said, like, uh, yeah, we are back, guys. We are back. Hello, we are back. We're just gone for a, a tiny bit. But we did so a ban on the Geisha. Uh, so I think if yep. they, because both hunters can play Geisha, Eli. Yep. Moru has a very good Geisha. Um, NO5 has a very good Geisha as well. And since they banned it before, we might think that the uh, hunters have been studied already. So they know there's a potential Geisha. So one of the best maps for Geisha. Could be Moonly River Park, could be Lakeside. I definitely don't recommend a Leo's Memory because Leo's Memory has been told to be the worst, the, not the worst map, but the least pick map in at least in Southeast Asia so far. I saw the stats that Poch posted on his IG. So yeah, I definitely think that we're not gonna see Leo's Memory. It's really not expecting that. But if we think about a Geisha either from Moru or from No5, you think? You think? Um, Lakeside Village will be better or Moonly River Park? Which one would be or any other map that you think is best for Geisha? Uh, for Geisha, Moonlit's the best map for Geisha. So that's again why you would pick Moonlit because um, if you pick Moonlit, then you force them to ban Moru's Geisha um, and then it allows you to have more options for the last round. Um, so Geisha is very, very good at Moonlit. It's the best map for, for Geisha. So um, definitely Moonlit and um, so that's that's definitely what make the most sense is is you force a, a geisha ban, um, and then you for then they'll probably ban, I don't know, maybe maybe breaking wheel because if you know what happened in the Everest game you don't want to give them moonlit wheel that would be even worse uh, especially in round three because they get extra bans so I think we'd probably see moonlit and uh, oh MP actually picks church, ooh I don't know this is really interesting uh, uh the problem with going church here is that church is really bad for wheel so they don't uh, BL doesn't have to ban wheel anymore. So I'm not really sure the idea. Actually, if, if anything, Church benefits BL. Uh, this is really interesting because this, this this actually benefits BL more than anything. Because if you go Church here, then that you you give a really good map for uh, for Sculptor for for number five. So I imagine they'll probably ban Sculptor and Dreamwitch, and then I guess maybe they they don't want them to, to have an opportunity to play Wheel. I think that's maybe the the idea is you ban Sculptor and Dreamwitch from number five, and then he can't play around three Wheel because it's not a good Wheel map. And you kind of force them to play something like Wax Artist. I think maybe that's the idea here. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense as well. But then you also kind of limit Moro's options as well. So it's kind of a, a bit of a double-edged sword there. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. Red Church is, uh, is a good map in general. But I believe there are certain hunters that just don't work well in Red Church. Such as you mentioned, Breaking Wheel. Geisha is also one of them because of the high walls. Sometimes she could uh, throw two butterflies and accidentally dash to the one that she doesn't want to dash to. So that could be a little bit risky. So we'll have to come into play to see what is, what is these hunters like feel comfortable playing with. Either Geisha or a breaking wheel. And if those two are not available because they feel this map is just too risky for that, then we might be able to see a wax artist. And why not? Do you think we'll be able to see a clerk again? Because Eli, this is a smaller map. And we have seen clerk before in Red Church. 
and even though it's not like the best map, but I think it works quite well because it's quite small, quite compact. The cyphers are all towards the center. There's no much area for the survivors to go when the cyphers are so close to each other. So actually, do you think it's a possibility to see Cleric again? Um, yeah, I mean, Cleric on Church is good. It's just like, hmm. I don't know if Moru's comfortable playing Cleric. I mean, in the first round, mm -hmm. the Cleric wasn't that strong. So I, I don't know how comfortable Moru's actually going to be with playing Cur Cleric here, um, considering that the first round was, was very difficult for him. So... Uh, looks like we're gonna see Enchantress actually get banned um, for uh, for number five here. So I actually don't know what that indicates. I don't think it's gonna be a wax artist. We actually see Bon Bon get banned. So they give Sculptor here. Uh, yeah, that's really I don't know about that. That's really tough. Giving Sculptor around three here, considering he's a very strong Sculptor player. Um, I mean, maybe they try to play something that goes against Sculptor, but I, I don't know. We're gonna see Ford. And entomologist locked in. These are the two most standard uh, lock-ins here. Of course, uh, acrobat would also work. Female dancer actually getting banned as well. Which is uh... oh, dancer. So it's not enchantress. Okay, interesting. Um, we may actually see enchantress get banned here. We might also see acrobat get banned as well. Um, but it's like uh, I'm not really sure. I think the the bans might be a little bit off because we are going to see uh, acrobat actually potentially getting locked in. Yeah, and we have the chat back. Eli, so we have Jay the Deal, Charlie Ski, Lumi Loves, Kino, Nello Mel also in the chat, Corona, Mani, Peace. Hello, guys. Thank you so much for coming. We, we're back into the band phase, and like you said, a tough guy forward coming in. Entomology is a very popular pick for Mad Penguin. They always play with the Entomologist meta. And then Acrobat coming in, Elsie. Elsie is one of the main characters of Mad Penguins. Eli, he's one of the one of the survivors that kites the longest, and he's also a forward main. So him playing forward in this map is totally unreasonable. And look, Eli, what we were talking just a little bit now, we kind of make a little prediction because even though it's not Morris Clerk, it is going to be a no five Clerk. Let's go. Yeah, interesting. Uh, we also saw no Priestess again, so I'm still disappointed, but it's okay. Um, it looks like we are going to see... Uh, so it, it's kind of interesting is they were able to actually take Magician here, Soy, and, and Magician... Uh, is actually very good against clerk. Magician is one of the best kiters for going against clerk. So uh, I actually think that um, this is a tough team comp for playing. I mean, this is a, you know what? Actually, this is a really hard team comp for playing clerk. Uh, we talked about four being very good against clerk. Magician, excellent kiter for going against clerk. Uh, Acrobat's just good in general. And Entomologist support is very good. Entomologist is a good kiter against clerk. So out of all the, the team comps to play clerk against, he actually picks it for probably the hardest one possible. But um i don't know we'll see i mean dl still has a slight lead here so i think that uh they definitely could hold this if clerk's able to get a draw here and the bl survivors able to get two out but uh yeah definitely up a battle for number five this is a really hard challenge for him i'm very excited to see how this plays out yeah i already see eli banging his head for not seeing the priestess as a pick early on because actually i believe same as you eli priestess will have been a very good choice in the first uh, picks but they we're gonna have to see what mad penguins has prepared because they definitely have study blno5 hunters and we're going to see the first time he bring out his clerk because we've seen other hunters bring out clerk but not yet blno5 and this is red church guys a map that it works really well for clerk it's going to be that bo3 between mp and bl if bl gets a tie they will win so mp is forced to get at least three survivors out of that game your caster is so new and can live any reaction. We're going to see the top rogue spawn from Clerk immediately. Going to use that vision on the center church there, trying to see if any survivor is in the vicinity. Does not see uh, the forward. We actually see the forward take middle. This is really smart. Forward definitely wants to take middle. The reason why is that when survivors try to loop around uh, church or they try to kite through the church windows, forward can stun as the hunter vaults in after them. Going to go ahead and chase after the forward for a little bit into graveyard here. Probably going to change targets to whoever's decoding the graveyard cipher. Does see uh the entomologist here and uh i don't know let's see how this plays out trying to mind game the entomologist here entomologist not getting mind gamed beautiful job here entomologist is actually a very nice kiter against the clerk here he is going to use that recording there so he did get the vault recording uh so next time the uh the entomologist tries to vault a pallet he can block that off with that reverse recording there um and uh, looks like entomologist does not have the bees for another 10 seconds here ford goes for the stun here beautiful stun from the ford no excitement. He should have just, I don't understand it. That would have been a perfect excitement. 
uh, situation there. He did not go for it. And we're going to see Elsie able to, to make it to this window here and just kite around in this area. It does have, yeah, no blink. Has excitement, so he cannot blink through there. So I don't know why. No, uh, number five should have just excited and gotten a free hit on Ford. There was no reason not wow. to do it there. And that's an interesting choice. Choosing to go for the best kiter in the team, LC, is very not a good idea, but we'll see how this... Ooh, taking that hit and got stuck a little bit in the pallet, and now LC is in a top spot. Gonna take this ball, putting this pallet out, and now shutting in the distance between LC. He needs to use the ball, but no, the bees come in as well, but a little bit too late. And now that is going to be a very difficult position here for the survivors. There's still one minute and 40 seconds on the, on the match, Eli. So far, not looking too bad for MP just yet. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, looks like he's going to go ahead and uh, uh, just try to force the Cypher progress down a little bit using that vision on the center uh, Cypher machine here. And uh, are they even going to go for a rescue at all? I mean, you, you, yeah, it's tough because if the survivors do get a draw here, right? You know, say MP survivors get a draw, then Moro has to actually win for BL, uh, sorry, for MP to actually win. He's going to get the hit on the Acrobat. Entomon's bees are going to come in here trying to support, pushing him away. That allows the forward uh, to make some distance here. And again, as we mentioned, no blink. So, oh, goes for the slow bomb there. Beautiful slow bomb there. Slows the clerk down long enough for the forward to transition away here. But with no football available, uh, I, Ford doesn't really have anywhere to rebound. He's kind of just running in the open. He's kind of kiting away from all pallets and windows. So he's just going to go down to another hit here. So interesting route there from LC. Dies away from Cypher Machines, but does not kite very long in return, unfortunately. Yeah, now we're going to see here how it's going to be involved in the event, because now he still has excitement. I'm pretty sure he will decide to change uh, anytime soon, because hasn't, he has no real reason to keep that excitement. We see the survivors healing all the way in the chapel area, and there's still four Cyphers remaining. He is going to catch sight of the survivors in chat here, uh, he tries to go for the block there. Uh, did not get that one off there. I think he might have used the wrong recording. And we're going to see a flame bomb at the window. This is actually a very good choice of bombs. We typically would see a, uh, the white bomb to slow down the vault there, but the red bomb is perfectly fine. This is going to prevent him from using um, abilities for the time being. Now they are back online. But look at that distance uh, that the, uh, the acrobat re um, was able to create there. And uh, we're going to see... He's going to go ahead and use that recording just to break that middle pallet without actually having to uh, to do it himself, so it saves a little bit of time. And he's going to go ahead and chase after the uh, the entomologist. Does have a perfume available, but does not have any more bees, so it's going to be difficult for him to kite. He's going to go ahead and break this. He did pick up a pallet break recording while breaking that pallet, so he's going to have a very strong chase opportunity here against this entomologist. Yeah, she's she's here trying to trap entomologists in this area. She's using all these pallets. Hasn't got the chance to use the perfume yet. I don't know sure if she got... Oh, she will put the pallet up. Nice recording coming in from NO5. Going to go around this pallet. She's not afraid of pallets at all. Using the excitement at this point, afraid of getting stunned. But nice wow. perfume from Zero. Yeah, beautiful job. That was actually a huge play there. Uh, he gets the trait out. And he also absorbs the uh, the hit there and recovers it with the perfume. So that was actually really, really important there. Um, and he's going to take the hit onto the... The entomologist is going to take the hit there. One Cypher Machine remaining. They've managed to get down to one. Goes for the window block. Still able to get the vault off here. So I did have enough distance for that to work out there. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, number five having a difficult time playing this clerk here. These survivors doing very well. He's going to go ahead and use that vision onto the survivor doing the back eight Cypher Machine there. Um, and he's going to go uh, continue after the entomologist here. He's constantly trying to record both these survivors, but he's going to run, run out of recordings eventually, and they're going to be able to decode for free in a moment here. Yeah, the thing is that she needs to always clean up her hard disk, cannot reutilize the recordings, and now we'll see whether she can get this entomologist recording her. Two seconds of recording, she has full vision of her, going to go, ooh, you know this kiting in this area is very good for entomologists because Clark has a very slow vaulting window speed, but at the same time, we'll get that hit connect. The last cipher is still at 70%. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to share near top broken, so he can kind of pressure the cipher. But the, I mean, you also have the back eight cipher with progress as well. He only has, he's about to get a second recording online in a second here. Um, so he can double record both these ciphers. Um, I wonder who's actually going to come in for the rescue. He's going to, uh, uh, he's going to use an illusion. I'm not really sure the idea behind that. I think he was trying to decode a little bit while in illusion forms to get a little bit of extra decoding progress in. Uh, we do see the uh, acrobat get the rescue. Does get the ball. Oh, beautiful vault and beautiful body block. 
from the Acrobat here. He's going to be forced to go to the Cypher Machine, but they're just going to pop it. But the Acrobat's right there. Gross does not get it there. Almost a premature pop costing the Survivors the game there, but a little bit short. And MP keeping themselves alive here. We do have the Acrobat. Still has that slow bomb available. He's going to be able to use it here. We might actually see him use... Okay, yeah, he's going to straight swap to Blink. Does get the down with that. And actually, this would normally just be a draw, but it's a Clerk. Clerk has the ability to pressure that exit gate, so... Uh, there's still a chance that uh, number five can actually get to that gate there. Uh, let's see if he's opting to do that. The problem is you can't really leave too early because if you do leave, then you allow a free rescue. He's going to go ahead and, and uh, use that vision there to try to slow down the gate opening progress. But we do have, I believe that's the magician still in the area pressuring that rescue. And Tamal just not able to get the gate open in time though. So this match is not yet over. Of course, yeah. The moment the machine pops is when the real clerk game starts because he can control those gates. He has the vision, CCTV on the gates. Stopping the game from being decoded at its fullest. 60% on Entomology's gate. The other gate hasn't been touched. So now survivors are still remaining in the middle. Not giving a chance for her to have the vision and the confidence to just move away. So Clerk is still waiting here to maybe baiting the survivors also. But now she's going, Entomology is going back to the Cypher. Which is still stuck at 60%, Eli. Yeah, still stuck. At, cause that's the thing. Clerk can constantly just keep looking at this gate. And push the survivors off of it. We are going to see them not tap it there. Five second cooldown. He's going to get it back right now. He's going to use that again. He's going to use that onto the magician. And they do get the gate open in time there. So two survivors will get out the gate there. And just like that, two to two for the first half of the third round. So now it's a situation uh, where Moros can have to eliminate three survivors if MP wants to win. And if BL is able to get at least two survivors out the gate, then they will just win themselves. Yeah, that was that was an amazing pull for survivors and hunter because at this point against the clerk, we have seen some clerk hunters go very very aggressively and some survivors will also get greedy and come close to the chair. And NO5 knew that at the moment there's someone next to the chair, he can stop the rescue immediately. But the survivors, very smart for the survivor size, not giving any chance to get one survivor more there. So getting the tie was really steady for them. And amazing game gameplay, although we did see some difference between the two clerics, Eli. We can talk about that more later, but let's go to the match stats. Yeah, overall here, uh, obviously Magician getting the most uh, uh, decoding time in there. Only 84 seconds on the forward was not ideal. I actually think it could have been even shorter. Uh, if number five, Excitement, got the first hit on that forward, we ended up holding it. Uh, which was interesting, but um, yeah, I mean, just very proficient here with the Clark, obviously getting excellent window blocks. I think he only missed one window block that game, so that was really important. Um, and he was almost able to slow the Cypher progress down all the way to a full stop, but not enough. They were, of course, able to pop that last Cypher machine, um, and uh, and yeah, I mean, just like that, a 2-2 two two there. It's uh, back in, it's, it's back and forth. Both these teams very even. Again, we talked about going into this matchup on paper. Both teams very, very even. Of course, Beal having maybe a slight edge, if anything, uh, or even MP having a slight edge, rather, because good surviving can be good hunting. But, I mean, overall, it's it's just it's neck and neck here. Again, it comes down to this. If BL survivors get two out the gate here, they will win. If MP uh, can eliminate three survivors or more from BL, they will be the winners. Yeah, definitely. We have seen the clerk of BL in 05 totally different here. Oh, you see the points also. Total 10 points for MP and BL taking the lead with 12 points. So there's definitely a very tight, uh, both two tight contestants, but we see definitely BL has a little bit more of advantage, especially with the hunters that uh, NO has bring to the match today. Clerk, his clerk is so different than the other clerk that we've seen before. There's a different play style and even though it missed a little bit some of the recordings, he was actually quite steady overall, pushing the survivor and eliminating that forward so early on that completely changed the match, Eli. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is just, uh, this is tough. I'm trying to think about like, what does, uh, you know, what is more play here? I mean, it's, it's right, the, the problem with, with going with this strategy is the idea here was they, they weren't going to ban breaking wheel from from number five and they were going to kind of allow him to potentially play wheel and they, they don't care about church wheel he obviously didn't do he went clerk so now moro doesn't get to play wheel i mean it's a double-edged sword right moro doesn't have wheel they're not going to ban wheel because there's no reason there's no reason to ban wheel here because it's not a good wheel map and also with flywheel being in the meta it's unnecessary so we're going to see probably uh bonbon bon and sculptor get banned here and then moro's gonna have to play clerk again and Maybe Geisha ban as well. You could ban Geisha as well. Uh, we might see maybe something like Bonbon. 
uh, in Geisha, and then he gets to play Sculptor. I don't know. I mean, Moro does have options. I think he's going to be playing either Geisha, Sculptor, or Bonbon. Bon. I don't think he'll risk playing Clerk again, especially how that first one, round went. Um, maybe he can try to pull out something like Wax Artist. That's also an option, but yeah. um, considering what we've seen with, from Moro so far in this tournament, I think the most logical options are Bonbon, bon, Sculptor, or Geisha, depending on which one is not banned. Yes, I'll agree with you. Since we saw Moro has a very steady Bonbon, bon, and he has managed to get all kill in a VO1, but this is about VO3, so it's gonna be more banned here. So even though he brings his strongest counter, which is Bonbon, bon, then the most likely will be able to also ban a lot of survivors. That, that could also work to his benefit, because the VO survivors also know to play with many characters, a huge pool of characters. So we'll see what is going to be one of the survivors' strategy to counter MP's um, Morris Bonbon, which is actually used to get all kills and actually very steady Bonbon player. Retchers, a very good map for Bonbon as well. So, like you said, I also don't, don't believe he's going to bring out Clerk because it's not necessary to go with a hunter that you are just not that familiar with. It's better to go with a hunter that you feel more comfortable with and you already have got all kills. The problem here, Eli, will be what happens if they ban his bonbon and they also ban his sculpture then what what will be the play here for more uh if he bans bonbon sculpture he's gonna play geisha um so that's what we're talking about so one yes. of the combinations of geisha bonbon or sculptor uh let's see what they actually opt to ban here um i think he uh for the survivors that he's gonna ban probably seer ford and they might not ban priestess because uh these teams haven't really been utilizing priestess that much um, but I think it'll probably ban Seer Forward, and then maybe maybe Mercenary is the last one. Um, and the Survivors, I, I don't think they need to ban Bonbon. Bon. I know Morris Bonbon, bon, eh, maybe maybe they do. I don't know. I guess you ban Bonbon bon, Geisha or Bonbon bon, Sculptor, and you kind of have to let them play one or the other and hope that you can at least get a draw. Just play a Tycom. You can play in Bomber here. You can play Mechanic here. Um, you can play good Thai characters and, and just get two out the gate. That's all you need if you're BL. Yeah, let's say hi to the chat, Eli, to the people in the, in the crowd. Uh, Nelly. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you were gonna say? No, I'll, yeah, go ahead. Melly, LMP Stan, Ice, Charlotte Hood, Bianca, Isa, Kino, Corone, Mamie, and Lumio Say. Also, on the live, in the live chat, PP Chat Stan, you're back. And it's also Clark, Clark Steel Emo, Blood Zombie, Ty Luck. Thank you so much for everyone for coming, Kina, MP, MPLC Steam, everyone, let's go. This is going to be the BO3, BL versus MP, the match is still going on. We're talking about maybe a Geisha gameplay. We believe they're going to ban Morus Bombo, most likely, because he's so strong. So we probably see a Geisha, maybe, so that would be good, because he's he hasn't seen he hasn't seen his Geisha recently, but we know he plays Geisha very well, so... No surprise that he actually decides to bring Geisha here. And look at the bands, Eli. So far, forward, patient, and acrobat. Yeah, the thing is, uh, these bands are the same kind of bands he went with in round one when trying to play Clerk. So there's a chance he's trying to play Clerk again. But I don't know. I, I mean, the, the way the Clerk went in that first round doesn't really make as much sense here. Um, these bands also, it looks like we're actually going to see Sculptor and Geisha. So they're going to give Bonbon bon here. These bands also work for Bonbon. Bon. They work for Bonbon bon and Clerk. Um, so Geisha Sculptor here, Mercenary and Embalmer, yeah, I mean, there's the Embalmer, you know, as we just, we just talked about, Embalmer's a great tie character, it's good against Bonbon, bon. you can self-rescue and avoid having to deal, uh, with a Bonbon bon camping, so, um, Embalmer's a, actually just a great option, I don't know if he would have actually banned Embalmer, so maybe, maybe they didn't need to lock it in, uh, they can play Postman here though, they can play Mechanic, we're gonna see a chance for as well. Uh, they could definitely just play a, a Dakota like Postman or Mechanic and again just go for the tie here. It looks like Postman uh, perfectly fine. Postman and Bomber, great tie characters against the Bonbon. Bon. Um, with this uh, with this set of selection, of course, Moro can play Bonbon bon or or Clerk here, but uh, we'll have to see what he's, he's most comfortable with against this uh, team comp. Whatever the last character is going to be here, I expect his last ban to be... Uh, I actually don't really know. I, I would probably... He's going to ban Seer. Um, and what do the survivors play as the last one? Do they even play mechanic or do they just play uh, more of a standard team comp? Maybe go for something like a. Uh, uh, it looks like that's a uh, entomologist, I believe. Yeah, Bill, one of the strongest team in able to get a dungeon, is going to be very difficult here for Moru. So I believe if he brings out a Bonbon, will be very steady. He's very familiar with Bonbon gameplay. He has practiced so much. So I think he, he before he gave us four kills with Bonbon before. So I think Bonbon will be a very steady 
Hunter for more with here. But looking at the BL survivor side, they chose Ram, Flame, and Palmer. Tito with Postman. Those are the very strong survivors because against any Hunter, bringing the decoding uh, Cypher Rush is going to be difficult to counter. So I think when able to counter this team up, he needs to find a keystone. And I think the Postman will be a good survivor to chase because stop him from bringing those letters and also once he gets out of the map he cannot give boost to anyone else so if he can find the postman early on match that will be very good gameplay for Moro. definitely uh what lucky guy as the last character uh, uh breaking low from what is happening uh okay first of all are we actually seeing a lucky guy i don't know if that was i don't know if that was a misclick or maybe they didn't lock in a survivor i'm not really sure um but it looks like lucky guy i guess yeah they just didn't lock in a survivor so lucky guy was automatically selected here and moru's actually playing breaking wheel and breaking wheel is um breaking wheel on this map this is so bad i mean i guess more maybe is comfortable with playing wheel here he has to go for a win so i guess that's the idea of playing of uh of going ahead and playing wheel here um and also wheel is not bad against embalmer as well so I think that's kind of the game plan, but yeah, flywheel meta with wheel on church. This is uh, this is a really tough battle here. Um, so um, we'll see what what Moro can do here. I think uh, realistically, BL Survivor is in a great position to play against the wheel, but a bomber being fairly weak to wheel here, and a lucky guy on the comp. I I don't even know anymore. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, Mini Blue, one of the best kiters in the team, being able to play a Balmer is very recommendable because he can kite, uh, use, kite the wheel with no presence very well. And if he gets down, he doesn't need to be rescued, he'll rescue himself. So this is really good. He can use the coffin to revive himself. Although a Balmer is not really a common pick for Red Church because this map has no really good areas for coffin placement unless it's the gate or the dungeon. But there's no second floor here to loop the hunter around. So very interesting pick here from BL guys. And like you said, lucky guy is, I believe they, unless they lock it, I will believe it. But so far, um, I, I don't feel like lucky guy is a very common pick for the survivors at this point because there's so many other survivors that can easily replace lucky guys such as coordinator or or even like entomologists like we've seen a lot of entomologists recently and with this combo though yeah it's a little bit of like a wild wild pick here coming in from bl from chapa he's uh very popular for getting the dungeon though eli so he's a very experienced player so any any pick he chooses i believe they already have a very good strategy BL coming in very strong in BO3 going against MP Moru breaking wheel. Eli, this map for breaking wheel? Um, I don't think it's coming to see, but we have seen some few breaking wheels in this map. It's just not as common. That's the thing that it really doesn't um yeah, it doesn't really tell us much. But let's get right into the match. Eli and Sonic as your as your cast of the yeah, here we go. Uh, we're going to see the, uh, the wedding spawn here going immediately towards bottom broken. Does catch sight of the mercenary. So, um, you know, that's uh, definitely not the ideal spawn for Moro here. He's going to change targets, head towards back gate, looking for his next target. Obviously, cannot commit to a mercenary. Um, nice rotation here from BL. They're positioning themselves well. We saw the postman head towards, um, towards church window. We actually see the wheel go to graveyard. Typically, as a hunter, you never want to go to graveyard. Uh, postman... Stood on that Cypher way too long. Uh, he did not rotate. He's going to get an early spike because of it. So, uh, Rem and a first trap there. Oh, unfortunately, Postman is getting, I feel, way too aggressive with that decoding. And this might actually be a huge mistake on the Postman's part. Um, we're going to see him go ahead and change target. Yeah, continue. No, sorry. Continue after the Postman here. Extended spikes. All he has to do is get a wheel from go for the snap here. You do have to keep in mind, though, um, that yeah. he does have flywheel still available. So, will he flywheel this? No, he's going to vault after the Postman. And he oh, stands still for a second here. Goes for that dog, just trying to dodge it there. Goes for the trap. Goes for the snap. He does not flywheel the snap. And that's a very fast down for Moru. I mean, this was we were talking about how this was looking very good there for the survivors. But uh, the postman just sitting on that cypher forever. I, I don't know what he was doing. And unfortunately, that's going to cost Beal a very fast down here. Yeah, now the lucky guy coming in for a behind rescue, going to get for that chair before have very nice rescues, very smooth, very steady, getting a spike on him. A shot he coming in from Chapa, defended the postman. He's sending some letters here, left and right, going into this pallet area, and now making more going to wheel form once again. 
Yeah, back in the wheel form here, he is uh, going to try to get two spikes onto the postman. Excellent juice from the postman here. He is able to get that there. Uh, he does have flywheel. So, oh, he flywheels too early. You saw what Moro did there. He kind of, like, turned his camera super quick, so it looked like he was going to go for the snap, but he wasn't. And he baits out the flywheel, so unfortunate misstep from the postman here. Using the flywheel a bit early, he's going to get the second chair here. And, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be honest, this is actually looking good for MP. I mean, BL positioned themselves so well throughout this match. Um, but, uh, yeah, just like that, it looks like it's falling right in to the favor of MP here. Uh, we're going to see Moro go ahead and pressure down this uh, Mercer. No full presence just yet, so he's going to be able to get the trap on the Mercer. He's going to get the hit on the Mercer. He now does get that full presence online. Still has Blink available. He can actually just Blink the Postman for the down. Gets the trap there. Gets the Blink on to the Postman. He will be eliminated here. So now uh, this is really getting into a slightly more endgame situation here. Postman being sent back to the manor. Of course, no support available. Uh, the only uh, character would be the Lucky Guy. He's currently not holding an item. Just going to go ahead and decode away here. And we're going to see, uh, I mean, it, yeah, sent back to the manor here, and they still need to do an entire cypher machine. So uh, BL is really, unfortunately, starting to fall apart a little bit here, and Moro taking advantage. BL has to stick to this. They have to get two out the gate here, but uh, down to one cypher machine, but still an entire cypher machine left to go. And Mercenary already injured here, so uh, one spike and a snap would down that Mercenary. There's a survivor hiding here. Will Moru Hunter Sense come down to the survivor? He's looking for another prey. He feels there is Tinnitus on the map, but everyone is hiding. Very sneaky here, coming in from BL side, hiding from a full presence, breaking Will Moru, taking the spikes, zooming around the map. What a nice wheel control here from Moru. And now we'll see the blood right here from Potato. Potato hiding in this wall area. He's still not deciding to come out, trying to get the spike on him, hiding in this corner area once they get that the spike and will come out of will form throwing him and snap oh he cancels the elbow pad as well unfortunately the uh the mercenary yeah just missing that one there um he's actually gonna chair mercenary which is interesting uh I, I guess you can apply pressure this way force a rescue uh where's the last cypher machine is the question um it looks like we're gonna see the embalmer coming for the rescue he's trying to cut off the embalmer early Oh, does turn too far to the left there. And Bomber's going to be able to get the free rescue. And we do see the uh, the lucky guy continue to decode that bottom broken cypher machine here. So the question is, does he switch targets to it? I imagine he probably will. Uh, this situation is, is actually still drawn, believe it or not. This is why Breaking Will is really just so weak right now. Moro, oh, he keeps extending the spikes way too early and he keeps wasting them. Um, and that actually is going to cost him a little bit. They're beautiful hiding job here from the uh, the lucky guy here. Uh, and uh, he's gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, just continue after Lucky. I get that second spike there, and he's just gonna try to kite here as long as possible. Yeah, the lucky guy with no items but three spikes on him. That's very dangerous. We'll go for the hit right next to the cypher that was almost decoded, but luckily, BL survivors are already on another cypher, which is 80%. Yeah, looks like it is almost done here. He's gonna try to get back to that graveyard cypher machine before it is prime, but uh, they're not gonna have enough time. Uh, I think uh. Even with the Postman's huge misstep early game, uh, it looks like we're still going to have a drawn position here. And he's going to really get that spike right away. And you see, again, you see why Red Church is so difficult here. He's going to get the spike onto the, uh, onto, he goes to the flywheel. Does he get the flywheel? He does get the flywheel to cancel that there. And a perfect example yet again, Sway, of why flywheel is such a hard counter to breaking wheel. Uh, he has to change targets. He cannot afford to chase Embalmer because he has to get three survivors eliminated here. Embalmer can just cough it away once he gets down anyways, but he's going to continue after Embalmer. I don't really understand why. Uh, he might just, uh, yeah, he's going to down Embalmer, but Embalmer can always just use that coffin if he wants to. And now he's going to go ahead and, yeah, change to backgate here, I think. Um, and uh, what's Moro doing? Uh, he has to go to backgate. He's got to pressure backgate. No, he's going for the Embalmer, but he, he can't. He needs to eliminate three survivors here. Um, unless I missed something huge, which I, I don't think I did, so uh, he he's just gonna go for Embalmer, I guess, and both survivors should make it out the back gate. Yeah, he feels there's Tinnitus on the map, and that's he just trying to find a blood trail, and he indeed found Mini Blue Blood Trail. Uh, although, like you said, he should definitely focus on one survivor, but now it's going again to snap, and it's going to be a tie for BL.
It's gonna be a tough reveal, and they, yeah, that means they are the winners. Of course, they did win round number one. You see, Mad Penguins winning round number two, and a tie for round number three. But BL up on points, so that means that they will ultimately be the winners overall here. Um, yeah, in that in-game situation, we really needed to see Moro. You, you can't really chase in a bomber because once you down in, if it's any other survivor, you can slug them, then go pressure back in and try to go for a win that way. But the problem is, if you go for a bomber, they can just coffin away, and that's why bomber is a great tie survivor because you get in a situation where uh, if you down if you down them, I mean, at any point throughout the match, but if you die on them at the end game there, you're forced to continue to chase after them, which buys the remaining survivors enough time to get out the exit gate. We saw that exactly happen right there. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, really a, a back-and-forth uh, matchup throughout both of these teams. But, yeah, Moro really needed to change targets to back gate there, try to pressure down the back gate, exit gate. But it ended up not actually, uh, ended up not working out there. And, yeah, like that, BL is going to be advancing to the next stage of the winner's bracket. So uh, BL really off to an excellent start so far. Yes, definitely. That was amazing matching from both sides. MP just going to the lower bracket, so it's going to be a chance for them. But they're thua, going to win it. They definitely chose to thua, alert. Very good discipline from the survivors of BL. Not focusing on the last cipher, they immediately went to decode another one, which gave them great advantage because Moru in real form, if had to dash from one to the other, he would have been able to win the match. They would have been able to win the match. They would have been able to win the match. They would have been able to win the it was an amazing, an amazing gameplay from both of their hunter and survivor. I'm looking forward to see more of Mad Penguin. Uh, continue looking for that, and I really like uh, their survivors and hunter playstyle as well. Yeah, but yeah, ultimately BL is going to be winning, so they will be advancing to, uh, of course, the the winners bracket. Now we're going to see the uh, the final match stats for this game here. Um, we did see the overall, yeah, only 68 seconds for the postman. Very, very short, and it was just, uh, it was really tough. I mean. You know, as a postman there, I mean, he, he you have to rotate to at least to a pallet earlier, so you can try to juke around the pallet, mind game there. But he kind of just stood on the cypher. It was so confusing. I, I wasn't really understanding. Maybe maybe a little bit lag. I'm not really sure what happened there. But, um, yeah, unfortunately, and then missing that flywheel as well. Moro did what he could. Uh, he took advantage of that misstep, and he was able to, to capitalize on it. And an excellent job there. But, yeah, BL ultimately holding out there with the, <laughs> with the lucky guy. Uh, not something you see every day. Actually, it's you, you never see it, but... Um, just like that, we're going to see BL is winning by two points here, and, and they will be advancing the winner's bracket. MP moving down to the loser bracket here. It's going to be very hard for them. They're going to have to come back. Uh, I believe they will be playing the gin, the winner of WP and GH. Um, so definitely... So uh, chắc là sẽ phải gặp GS ngày mai. Well, so, uh, yeah, the, hạ được GS thì mới đi được Thái Lan. Tức là hạ một đội Thái Lan để đi Thái Lan. It is going to be uh, Potato, the, uh, the embalmer. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, Embalmer, a character that's really found found its way into the into the meta for being a very good tie character, and they can also help with wins in later games as well. So, um, yeah, excellent job for Potato here. Yeah, he definitely managed by that time and putting that coffin away that would definitely help him out at the end, forcing MP Moro to stay in that area and buying so much time for his teammates to escape out of the gate. So, Embalmer definitely a game changer survivor. Even though I, I know there's so many fans out there for Embalmer, it's so happy to see him in competitive play in tournament as well because he has so much huge potential like we just saw right now. He can ensure the team gets a tie and that is just so difficult to do because he's a very steady in that way, especially if used well like we saw BL play him so well because at the beginning they didn't get so lucky with the forward because the forward was forced to use his football in the, the rugby ball, sorry, in a very early time in the game and that really put a lot of pressure on them but they managed to stay steady and use that and they didn't man they didn't focus on one cypher they also went to another cypher and they definitely tried to deal with the pressure very well and that is something that BL did in this match really really well yeah absolutely um it, it was just uh i mean again it was the the early game right the, the early the early parts of this round BL you know had a uh, they had a great position X, i mean it look, BL looks so dominant right away right a three survivor escape right away. Hunter got a four person elimination and then it just turned around. A little bit of a misstep from, from Mini Blue there. A lot of four survivor elimination. And then you look back into um, um, the sculptor was able to uh, to get a tie, which is not bad. 
uh, that was actually uh, ended up being a key factor because then it actually still held the lead for BL. It forced MP to go for a win last go. round rather than just a tie. And that Home was a difference maker. So ultimately, BL... Kêu su BL gà lắm sao rao một Moru bị BL thoát ba vậy Aoi Zama. Ui dồi ôi, mẹ quả thả thả quả thả quả bếp này thì cũng không thơm lắm đâu đâu bạn. Nhưng mà mình xin khẳng định với bạn là mình chưa bao giờ nói su BL gà nhá. Mình bảo cách chơi của B, BL tiêu cực. Được chưa? Mình bảo cách chơi của 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 bên phía BL chơi tiêu cực. Các bạn nếu mà các bạn nhìn vào cái cách ban pick của họ các bạn sẽ thấy họ đánh hoàn toàn là muốn đánh hòa cả ba rao. Thấy chưa? Nói chung là bạn thích bẻ lời của mình thì bạn cứ bẻ thôi Còn mình phải nói luôn với tất cả những người xem của mình là mình chưa bao giờ bảo BL gà Được chưa? Nhưng mà tam sao thất bản lại cứ thích tạo ra những cái uh, cứ, cứ thích bẻ lời, nhét chữ vào mồm người khác thì thôi chịu Cứ muốn nhét chữ vào lời à, Nhét chữ vào mồm thì thôi chỉ chịu Nhưng mà mình chỉ nói là BL mình không thích cách đánh của họ Ok chưa? Và mình nhìn bạn mình biết là clon vào đây để thả bếp rồi Ờ ừ. Nói chung là MP thua chắc chắn sẽ có những đứa cay À sẽ, sẽ có đứa, đứa hả hê chứ MP thắng thì chúng nó sẽ cay MP mà thua thì chúng nó sẽ hả hê Cho nên là mình cũng không có vấn đề gì Thử hồi xưa nó đã như thế thôi Đứng chỗ cao thì người ta sẽ Bị ghen ghét thôi Không, không bạn đứng chỗ cao thì thì mới có những kẻ ghen ghét các bạn chứ bạn không ai biết bạn là ai thì cũng chả ai ghen ghét cả chung thì uh, bl thì Năm nay họ đẩy hai Hunter của họ sang team Icon, Zen O với cả Duck O O là sang Icon. Còn họ bốc về hai Hunter người Nhật, uh, Pipicha và Sai NF. Cái ông Six NF kia hình như đang top 3 Hunter server. Còn Pipicha thì mẹ Hunter C5 đúng không? Hunter C5 của team vô địch còn lại khu vực Nhật. Xong rồi Survival thì Chafa hình như là ở Survival Trung Quốc chứ không phải là Đông Nam Á, cũng không phải Nhật. Cha pha là người chung với tao, người không nhầm thì là vậy. Sao hôm nay su su vai của MP bị lỗi, đánh lỗi. Thật ra cả round 2 lẫn round 3 đều có khả năng thắng Round, uh, round 2 thì ăn chan cai hơi thiếu một tí Round 3 thì cường lỗi Round 1 thì thì thì, thì cả ăn chan lẫn ban đều lỗi Ban để ăn hit free là nát game luôn đó mọi người Hiru cai lỗi uh, Ăn chan đẩy ong lỗi Xong ban ăn một hit free Đấy. Lỗi nặng thì thua thôi Thật mà mình thì mình cũng không mình thì mình cũng không nghĩ là bọn mình vô địch được cái giải này trước khi team đánh mình cũng phải chia sẻ luôn cho các bạn là trước khi team này vào IBC thì mình cũng chia sẻ là mình không 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 nghĩ là team này của mình vô địch được bởi vì team gen một mạnh hơn mà không vô địch được thì bây giờ ở một cái mùa mà không chỉ là Đông Nam Á nữa mà còn Nhật còn Trung nhảy vào cái Đông Nam Á này thì bọn mình cũng, nói thật là mình cũng đặt mục tiêu là top 4 thôi mình không có ý định là bọn mình sẽ có thể vô địch được nhưng mà ít nhất đấy ở Đông Nam Á ấy, cũng chẳng có team nào dám vỗ ngực 100% là ăn được team mình cả. Hay mình cũng chỉ nói thế thôi. Mình bọn mình cũng không nhắm là bọn mình vô địch nổi cái giải này nhưng mà bọn mình không bọn mình cũng nói luôn là cũng chẳng có bao nhiêu team Đông Nam Á dám vỗ ngực 100% thắng được bọn mình. Được chưa? Còn nếu mà team nào vỗ 100% thì có thể làm một cái kèo. Thế thôi. Đúng rồi, round 1 Moru giết được một nữa. Thì 72 thì vẫn đánh có rao 4 đúng không? Hoặc là rao 2 Anchan cai tốt hơn một tí Hoặc là survival của MP không lỗi Nặng 
ở rao một đúng chưa không thì rao ba cường không bị lỗi thế là sao tất cả đều có thể khả năng đúng rồi mỗi rao thiếu một tí thôi không có vấn đề gì bọn mình vẫn còn cơ hội thật ra là trước khi đánh trận với BL là bọn mình đã tính đến cái nước thua là thế nào rồi bình thường ờ mai chắc là sẽ gặp GH đây bạn nói thế thì hơi uh, hơi 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 uh, coi thường cái WP một tí nhưng mà WP thì chưa đủ để thắng GH đâu WP chưa đủ để thắng GH Nói chung là chắc là Mai sẽ phải đánh với GH Mai đánh thì mình chỉ lo là buổi tối thì mạng lag thôi đánh Chỉ lo là buổi tối ngày Mai đánh thì nó có thể sẽ có tình trạng mạng lag Bởi vì đợt này bọn mình trên tối hay lag lắm à, sao? Mai chắc là đánh trận cuối ấy. Hoặc là trận giữa Tôi biết được Để Xem lịch của ban tổ chức nó đưa ra thế nào đã Các bạn là mùa này cũng khó Mùa này các team nó mạnh lên Thật ra trận nhà thờ này là Một phần vấn đề là do Đăng nó Đăng nó xử lý lỗi cuối trận Và một phần nữa là đi ao núp được Núp là một con dao hai lưỡi mà Các bạn nhớ trận ăn chan núp không? Đấy nói chung là Núp là một con dao hai lưỡi Bạn núp được thì không sao Nhưng bạn không núp được là ăn free một cái gai nhá Cosplay, but we're gonna talk more about it later. Yeah, yeah because we we just witnessed like, have, did you watch the game just now? Amazing yeah, game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, BL, BL there um, versus MP, such a neck and neck battle. And yeah, honestly, I, I was very very uh, impressed by the tenacity, going all three rounds. Mm -hmm. And yeah. yeah, but now we're gonna go into the next match, which I believe everyone's waiting for as well. <laughs> but where are my manners before that? Welcome to the stream, everyone. For those of you who are still in the stream, I'm looking at names right now. Papa Norton, Red, Yel Chapa, thanks. Okay, uh, Levia, Cat, Elise, my besties as well. Mani, Chantel, if you're still there. And Re um, of course, yeah, we're going to be seeing ZT versus Ryu. So I'm really looking forward to this game. What are your thoughts for this game? Mm, yeah, so ZT, yeah, we have been hailing them all around. But Ryu also. It's a very strong team. We, here we have Sneaky on the hunter side, which is known to be a very formidable hunter 
has been appearing around in the competitive scenes and now will be playing for Ryu. Yeah, I mean her galaxy is really strong. Mm -hmm. We've seen we've seen her on the Bloody Queen as well. We've seen her on Dream Witch as well. And speaking of Dream Witch, we have Kuga on the right side playing mm -hmm. for ZT. Uh, a lot of times we've seen Kuga first round Dream Witch, uh, just securing that 4K uh, most of the time. So really, really excited to see the aces of our YU, Ryu versus ZT, going head to head. So yeah, we'll, we'll see whether it's the Battle of the Hunters or the Battle of Survivors uh, this evening. And this yeah, day. definitely. Uh, <laughs> both have very equal in terms of skill. And we'll move on to the Survivor side here. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. we got to see a lot of Norton on the side of our YU. They do love yeah. the Norton. Cutie. <laughs> yeah. cutie, with cutie. Lemon here. Yeah, cutie. with Lemon here. And uh, ZT run with the Mechanic main. So, uh, uh, yeah, Mechanic. I don't really see uh, her though. <laughs> I don't really see her playing much Mechanic though, if you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of the time we see her playing uh, Machinery, right? Like she's yeah. always on Machinery. And, uh, amazing. Speaking of Machinery, she's done amazing yesterday. Um, actually, uh, in game number two, um, the beautiful dash out of the basement and just, you know, yeah, avoiding... Yeah, you know, the third dash. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Dạo này hơi khó cho mấy Ryu. But yeah, uh, to be honest, Dạo này hơi khó cho Ryu các bạn ạ. Most I have a lot of game sense when it comes to teamwork and their personal skill. So, yeah, look mm. at the win rate. Like, they are all above 40%. Uh, and yeah, let's head on to... Here is Tofu and Yash. Um, oh, do you have no any data. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we don't have any data on Tofu as the machinery. <laughs> but yeah, we do exactly. have data. <laughs> but, yeah, so data unknown uh, probably needs to update later. <laughs> the PC updates uh, on Tofu later on. But we do have data on Yash. Uh, Yash, he's been known to play a very impressive batter. But lately, mm -hmm. we've seen him a lot on Prospector, so... Yeah, to be honest. Uh, a lot place. of harasser, a mm -hmm. lot of harassers mm -hmm. under play. Um, yeah, provide uh, the uh, lifeline for the other survivor, which, um, to be honest, is very crucial if you want to get at least a 3 man escape or a 4 or four man escape. Yeah, man. Um... I mean, we definitely see a shift, like he's not really picking a lot of batter now, we haven't mm -hmm. seen it much, but Prospector maybe trying to find a balance between harassing and decoding. Mm -hmm. But next up, we're gonna see Cake, uh, speaking of Cake, feeling hungry right here, but you know what, Cake, 31% on the machinery, uh, I have to say, um, still very, very impressive, especially if you look at the, especially if you look at the rescue average 0 0.65, so most of the time, that's what you doing that rescue, versus seeing Shadow on the Enchantress, I mean, uh, thoughts on Shadow versus uh, on the Enchantress? Oh yeah, the Enchantress. To be honest, the Enchantress has been falling in term of in terms of meta since mm -hmm. the Breaking Wheel has been countered heavily by uh, Flower Wheel effect. Um, so mm. yeah, Enchantress usually is just an an annoyance to the hunter, less of a coverer. Um, but to be honest. Mm. Enchantress is still a good character against uh, single hit hunter. Yeah, or even against chip damage, right? Like, cause oh yeah, the bomb bomb. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next one, uh, Ryu, Ryu Eng, right there. I, I have no idea why I'm yeah. spelling out Ryu. But... Yeah, Ryu, <laughs> Ryu. Yeah, I mean, from... <laughs> mm. but he's he's gonna be seen as the machinery. But of course, he does play other forms of um, mm. order as well. He does play the forward if he's needed, as well. Uh, versus Sing yeah. MX, uh, you yeah, can see the one, the only, <laughs> the one, the only Milo Tin ambassador, uh, the Thief, <laughs> S1 Thief right there, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, Ricardo yeah. MX. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it suits him. It suits him completely because all the characters he play, I can put it in one word: troll characters. Because mm, yeah. <laughs> cheeky survivor. Cheeky, cheeky. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that um, sounds British, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he does play a lot of other characters as well. We've seen him on uh, the Thief. We've seen him on the Acrobat. We've seen him on even the Magician. Yeah. Yeah, Magician as well. So he, yeah, I, I, I think you're right. He's really cheeky. Nào, chúng ta sẽ nói về cặp đấu thứ hai của ngày hôm nay, cặp đấu giữa Ryu cùng với Zerotu. Zerotu vẫn đang thể hiện phong độ hủy diệt của mình khi mà họ hủy diệt bằng C, hủy diệt GS, sau đó là à, họ hủy diệt bằng D chứ, hủy diệt uh, Noi, hủy diệt uh, 
TMX sau đó là họ hủy diệt uh, GS ở trong trận đầu tiên của playoff và tiễn GS xuống đánh thua còn bây giờ thì sao bây giờ họ phải gặp Ryu một đội đứng đầu bảng B vậy là hai đội đứng đầu bảng B và bảng D sẽ gặp nhau uhm, ai thắng cặp này họ chắc chắn sẽ có một vé trong top 4 và sẽ là đối thủ của BL trong trận chung kết nhánh thắng ở Thái Lan còn ai thua thì sẽ xuống nhánh thua và có lẽ là gặp đội thắng trong cặp giữa Noi và Sugar cặp đấu sẽ diễn ra ngay sau cái cặp trận đánh thắng này để xem nào. Theo như tôi nhìn được ở trong room, trong room của IVC thì map 1 bên phía Zero Two là bên ban map. Ok, vậy là họ sẽ ban Moon Lead ở trong round đấu đầu tiên và bên phía Ryu chọn thị trấn say ngủ. Zero Two họ sẽ lựa chọn cho Hunter của mình là Kuga đánh trước. Ok, vậy là Kuga sẽ chơi trước trong kèo đấu này. Bốn tám một bên GS là Skyphone không Skyphone là Skyphone nhá Skyphone hình như là không định ra đánh giải này rồi. Tại vì mấy cái trận quan trọng của GS thì đều không thấy Skyphone đâu. Mà người đánh là Nerukun, 481 là có một cái tên xưa là Nerukun Hay là về sau bỏ chữ Kun đi để mỗi Neru đó Anh ta là thành viên của OSM trong cái đội hình vô địch IBC 2020 Và sau đó là thành viên của team uh, lúc đấy là VX à? Ở VX VX Rồi sau đó tiếp tục chuyển khá là nhiều team Vì sao có một thời gian mà Nerukun ở trong team Nelo Melo á ở trong team của một, một người caster mà đang uh, cast ở trong cái IVC lần này đấy là Nelo Melo. Sau đó là bây giờ thì team Nelo Melo giải tán và xây chu này, Giao Khan này và Nerukun ba người quay trở về team GS cả ba người luôn. Đợt này phong độ của Godjay khá là tệ. Là anh ta cái, cái meta này cái nhánh 12 nó khá là ổn, khá là mạnh làm cho con Polu nó bị yếu đi. Thế nên Godjay mất mất lựa chọn mà hồi xưa anh ta cực kỳ tự tin đó chính là con Polun. Sau đó Godjay tập sáp khá là nhiều. Nhưng mà con sáp thì các bạn nhìn thấy nó hơi bị... Uh, nó khá là dễ bị đánh hòa ấy. Thành ra là khi mà Godjay bị đánh hòa thì thì, thì... thì họ gặp khá là nhiều khó khăn. Đấy, về sau bây giờ có trong cái meta này thì Godjay có đánh ở một con là con nhẹ, con ma nhẹ. Đấy. They are so trained mm. to play against meta characters. We've seen how they got the three man escape, consistent three to four man escape against meta hunters like Breaking Will uh, versus Sing GH yesterday. So, mm -hmm. but when they face the Wax artists, something that is not common uh, for them to face. Oh, yeah, yeah, they they actually <laughs> they, they actually very got very thrown off. Yeah, 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 that's... yeah. So I have to say, I think um, it's going to be an uphill battle for Ryu. But if they can pull one off, if they can get that. Um, advantage in best of one using the dream wish i think uh ryu will have a chance to actually knock knock uh, zt onto the lower brackets but mm -hmm. i have to say it's really an whew, uphill battle right there <laughs> yeah it seems like a very tough task for sneaky asset now uh then to be honest uh when we compare kuga to sneaky sneaky has been getting more 4k or 3k than kuga to be honest Mm -hmm. So Kuga is more into the stability, and mm -hmm. Sneaky is more onto the point. Mm -hmm. But okay, you know what? Ryu versus CT right now. I have to say though, entity, like let's all let's all pay attention in this match. Like let's analyze the matchup, like ZT strategy. Like because ZT is. Không phải Thảo Linh ơi, GS là họ phải đánh một trận với WP đã, xong đội thắng mới gặp MP, rồi thắng ai thắng trận đấy đã vào top 4 em hiểu không? Nhưng mà vào top 4 kiểu đấy là cũng sẽ sẽ vào top 4 rồi nhánh thua ấy. 
nên là nguy cơ đi về nói chung là cứ xuống những thua là nguy cơ đi về rất là cao bởi vì chỉ cần sơ sẩy một cặp trận thôi là cút ổn là như vậy Đấy, cái vấn đề cái vấn đề là GS sẽ phải đấu trước một trận với WP đã ai thắng thì mới vào nhưng mà thật ra thì mặc dù GS không còn là không còn là một team phải gọi là đàn áp cái giải đấu này nữa nhưng mà về các bản là không ai dám coi thường họ cả họ là đương kim vô địch và họ vẫn là một thế lực lớn nhất của Thái Lan thế nên là kiểu đặt cặp với WP thì cái tỷ lệ mà GS thắng nó nó phải khoảng tám chín phần trăm thì thắng cái trận đó thắng cái trận mà cặp thắng giữa GS cùng với uh, uh, GS cùng với WP thì mới được đến top 4 đó còn thua thì đi về thua top 6 đúng không? GS toàn là những cái player kiểu đánh mấy mùa COA rồi ấy. Các bạn đếm nhá. Cap cool, COA 2, 3, 4 như là... 4 hình như cũng có Cap cool hay sao ấy. 2, 3, 4, 5. Nói chung là lần nào COA là hình như là Cap cool cũng có mặt. Tôi nhớ không nhầm là như thế. Còn... À... Nerukun thì từng uh, vô địch IBC 2020 Đấy, còn Little Boy là cũng đánh CO3 4 năm Nói chung là họ toàn là những player đến Nói chung là cực kỳ kỳ cựu và đến được từ Đánh rất là nhiều những cái mùa CO3 rồi Không ai dám coi thường cả Mặc dù bây giờ họ không thể hiện được cái phong độ tốt nhất Nhưng mà thật sự là không ai dám coi thường nào, cấm tiên tri là có vẻ như là lỗi hiển thị sao tôi lại thấy cấm hai con ba tender thế này bên phía Uga anh ta sẽ sử dụng mộng cù thủy cho bản đấu này và Ryu nữ chủ tế tiền đạo bác sĩ tâm lý và cuối cùng đó là tập luyện ở trong vòng đấu đầu tiên này. Chắc là hiển thị lỗi gì đấy, mà chắc ban lính thuê à? Bên phía Rio chỉ có một giải cứu thôi, khá là nguy hiểm. À, chúng ta sẽ đến với round đấu đầu tiên cặp đấu zero two cùng với cả Rio mộng phù tiểu Kuga di chuyển ra khu vực giữa bản đồ và có vẻ như anh ta sẽ rẽ về gây xa ngược lại rồi dấu tay là ở đây là có nhưng mà Kuga chưa phát hiện ra thành viên nào của bên phía Rio bây giờ tiến về khu vực biệt thự thì lại gặp Ng ở đây Ng là một người chơi tiền đạo ký sinh không không phán sẽ bị phá Ng sẽ không có một tình huống nhảy ván thành công anh ta bị ký sinh chặn đầu rồi khu vực này vẫn còn khá là nhiều những tấm ván ổn để cho Ng có thể lật con gì để chơi nữa không ta con gì để chơi nữa không con gì để chơi cho Ryu nữa không vậy Ryu đánh như này thì làm sao mà ở Nikki thở đây hả Ryu ơi Ryu đánh cái này làm sao sở Nikki nó thở được thật luôn á đánh cái này sở Nikki thở sao hả mấy bạn Ryu khổ thân sở Nikki <cười> liệu yếu đào tơ tôi phải gánh cái bọn này rồi thậm chí là mất ok ok vẫn cứu được nhưng mà Lemon mất hẳn hai máu trong tình huống cứu này 
lại mình mất hẳn hai máu luôn bây giờ thì ng còn cho mình đó là 3 phần tư trái banh để có thể cai tiếp rồi rồi ấn tức là ký sinh lên lên mình của thân sở Nikki chung là đánh thế này rồi vẫn chưa chưa làm gì được đâu chưa ăn thua đâu đây chưa ăn thua đâu các bạn ơi đâm bóng rất xa đi đến từ vị trí của NG máy nó vẫn đang rất chậm cho bên phía Ryu họ gần như họ thiếu hẳn một máy trong tình huống mà phải di chuyển đi cứu quá sớm pha cứu vừa rồi là để ng cai thêm anh ta không cai thêm được nghĩa là bên phía ryu sẽ gãy con đệ đi về đến nơi rồi không có một tình huống xuyên cửa sổ không có một tình huống xuyên cửa sổ lên tàu thì sao không lên được tàu đến từ ng anh ta gục mất rồi mới có hai máy xong thôi vẫn không làm gì được đâu vẫn không ăn thua đâu đây mình gỡ được xong ấn rồi nhưng mà vẫn là hai máy wow. Both times he has been down by the lead. The follower itself, the spawn follower. So he, Kuga doesn't even need to uh, use that leech onto the forward again because the, the the leech is still there. He's able to leech anyone who comes to the second rescue anytime he wants. So he's just far camping right here, uh, just making sure that no one gets close enough without taking double hits. You can see that the priestess is around trying to give tonight as he can spawn. Không còn gì, không còn gì cho Ryu nữa. Ba máy mới với một tình huống ngồi ghế lần hai cùng một cú thủy. Về căn bản là đánh không nổi Về căn bản là đánh không nổi à, Vẫn là ba mấy mới thôi các bạn ơi Vẫn là ba mấy mới thôi NG bay luôn rồi à, Tofu sẽ bị đuổi luôn trong tiếng này Hunter còn phép à, Lemon đã mất máu ra Kuga có thể bắt được anh ta Hầm trận đấu này nó ở khu vực giữa bản đồ Và đây là một chiếc hầm tôi nghĩ là khá tốt Hầm giữa map khá là dễ nhảy nhá Lemon đang cai ở khu vực chính giữa bản đồ này Kuga đang có một tình huống điều đệ Ừ. khá là khó khá là khó để lấy hit đầu tiên nếu không có phép các thành viên còn lại của Ryu đang làm khá tốt nhưng mà hai người bị dồn cùng về một phía rồi ok ok chủ tế đục vòng đi rồi chủ tế đục vòng đi rồi tranh thủ thời gian đó thì cách đã đập được khoảng 50% mươi máy mới hai máy rưỡi cho bên phía Ryu thiếu hai máy thiếu hai máy rưỡi nữa thôi hoàn thành được một nửa trận đấu rồi lại mình đang bị dí khoảng cách là gần mà không cần đổi phép Rút được một hit đến từ Lemon và quá tầm đệ rồi Đó là con ấn ký sinh của Tofu Và nó quá tầm rồi Rút được một hit cực kỳ ăn tiền đến từ vị trí của bác sĩ tâm lý Bây giờ cách sẽ phải mua máy ra khi mà Hunter nhắm đến khu vực biệt thự này Anh ta phải cay chay Nhưng không sao Hunter chưa có ấn lên anh ta Đổi phép đi sao Chưa Vẫn đang muốn Ê. Ok 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 vẫn đang làm tốt với tư cách lùi được vào ván rồi ở đây đã mất ván ở đây mất hai ván rồi thế là chắc chắn là tẩm liệm sẽ mất một máu đầu tiên nhưng mà máy thứ ba của bên phía Ryu đang sắp được đập xong họ đang sắp đập xong chiếc máy ở khu vực biệt thự này rồi còn một máy biệt thự bên trong nữa đó là chiếc máy đã 30 phần trăm hai mươi chính xác hơn là hai bây giờ thì bác sĩ tâm lý bị ký sinh một lần nữa rồi đây mình sẽ lại bị đuổi vào địa hình trong khu vực biệt thự này đã được vị trí của ng dùng hết trước đó bây giờ lemon không có gì để cài ở đây cả ôi rồi rồi ôi rồi kuga bị làm sao vậy kuga bị làm sao vậy kuga bị cái gì ấy? rồi thế này là thế này là bị skip hết con chó rồi không 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 được không được không được không được không được không nhảy được không không đến được đủ cái palette để nhảy qua trong tình huống đó rất đen cho lemon anh ta chắc vừa rồi đã có cơ hội skip xong hẳn con chó đó Tầm này thì đổi phép được rồi Rồi, tầm này thì đổi phép Và Lemon sẽ gục mất máy 30% đến từ Rio Tại sao họ cứ muốn cai ở biệt thự Trong khi khu vực này nó đã được dùng hết ván rồi nhỉ Thật ra chắc là muốn Chắc là muốn đập máy trong này Nhưng mà thật ra sau khi mà ăn hit Bạn có thể đổi về cổng cũ mà Tự bản thân ông Lemon chạy ngược lại biệt thự đấy chứ Cho nên dùng hết ván rồi Cho nên dùng hết ván rồi Tofu đang là người đi cứu Thiếu hẳn một máy mới đến từ phía của Rio tốc biến đang có đấy thì con đệ này đục vòng tô phu ăn một hit đâm vào ghế cứu có thể hồi đòn kịp rồi pha này đắp bồ đào là chắc luôn pha này đắp bồ đào là chắc luôn rồi kuga có trận đấu này rồi rất nhiều lợi thế từ pha tero sóc đầu trận lemon không chạy đi đâu được đâu anh ta có ăn ký sinh và chắc chắn kuga sẽ biết vị trí của anh ta tốc biến còn đang có ở con đệ ký sinh này nữa không có cơ hội gì rồi khách đang di chuyển đến từ khu vực biệt thự à từ khu vực nghĩa địa anh ta đầy máu lại rồi nhưng Hunter cam sai, tốc biến đang có Có vòng được đục trước đó và Kuga <cười> cam sai hướng Anh ta cam sai hướng rồi, cứu free Không được, 
đổi đệ về đây khách đang làm gì thế này khách đang làm gì thế này lướt 12 tốt rồi 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 lướt 12 tốt và vẫn là cái vòng đó cũng đã không phá đi chiếc vòng đó từ, từ lúc mà chủ tế của tofu đục chiếc vòng lại sau đó ờ cách lỗi mất rồi cái hòm ở ngay cạnh anh ta đó, khó. Trận này, trận này không được này. Uga không cho bên phía Ryu một cơ hội nào cả. Cách dùng cho mình là cái hòm, cái hòm của anh ta được ngay cạnh Hunter luôn. Cái hòm ngay cạnh Hunter luôn. Nào, ta ghế anh ta làm gì đây? Khu vực này ván chỉ còn một chiếc mà thôi. Cái bong bóng sắp mất rồi. Hạ được ván xuống. Vẫn còn cái nhánh 6, vẫn còn cái nhánh 6. Không được rồi, cách sẽ lên ghế lần 2. Và máy thì vẫn không đập được khi mà cái máy nhiều nhất nó chính là máy trong khu vực biệt thự. Mà máy biệt thự thì làm sao đập được khi mà Hunter cam ghế ở đây. Rồi, Ryu thua 4 trận đầu rồi. Lemon bị kiểm soát vị trí rồi. Ryu, tôi không nghĩ là họ thoát nổi một người ở trận này. Với tình huống thế máy thế này rồi, lần này là heavy attack luôn, không cho đối phương cơ hội để giúp nữa. Kuga cẩn thận hơn với Lemon rồi. Không chỉ là một đòn đánh thường, mà nó là một tình huống heavy attack. Tofu bị phát hiện vị trí ân ký sinh đang có. Kuga sẽ đặt thẳng ấn vào Tofu trong tình huống này. Và cơ hội cho Ryu gần như là bằng không tốc biến bên kia thì lemon tự dậy nhưng vị trí của anh ta vẫn đang bị hunter kiểm soát 15 giây nữa sẽ có tốc biến không chạy được, không chạy được. Mấy căn bản là không đi đâu được thêm. Vẫn đang bị ép góc. Vài giây nữa thôi Kuga sẽ có tốc biến và kết liễu được vị trí của Lemon. Và trận đấu này nó sẽ kết thúc. Tốc biến. Rồi. Mấy kia Tofu tự dậy. Trời ơi, mấy ông này. Ấn mới đã có rồi. Ký sinh Tofu là xong rồi. Ryu hết cơ hội rồi. Cổng xa. Rồi, xong mất cổng ra và đục vào cổng thường như tôi phu nhưng mà rước 12 thắng 4 cho Kuga khá là dễ dàng cho anh ta ở trận đấu này khi mà tiền đạo của bên phía Ryu quá lỗi Yeah, I mean, beautiful game right there. Um, you definitely do not want to give chance to ZT, but considering how strong BO1 is, because like number one, you don't have a hunter bed, so Kuga was able to use his ace, uh, the Dream Witch, and right now, uh, Kuga is doing an amazing job, 4K for ZT. So it puts a lot of pressure onto Sneaky to try and equalize that point. But again, they are gonna be dealing with the strongest faction, the strongest survivor, um, the alleged strongest survivor team. In Southeast Asia right now, mm -hmm. yeah, in Southeast Asia right now, and that's gonna be the survivor side of ZT. So Sneaky has to pull out uh, a the lot. A game, yeah, has to yeah. bring on her A game to deal with this survivor team. Plus plus, <laughs> yeah, A plus plus, like yeah, like A plus plus, A is no longer enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah maybe an like S. Oh no. Yeah. Um, I mean, the... mm. Go ahead. Uh, let's look at the match that we have just witnessed because. Lướt 12 để làm gì á? Lướt 12 quả đấy là để à, chào khán giả. Ok chưa? Để lướt 12 chắc là để chào khán giả. Kiểu gì cũng thua rồi. 
go for the risk because when you get hit by the lich, the lich disappear and you only have to deal with one follower. Um, and you still have the full ball. Yeah, and, and, you still, and he still has the full ball to transition to whatever area that he want. So it's kind of questionable why he went for the fault. So yeah. that's a big risk that he took, and to be honest, he had to pay the price. That's uh, true. That's that. true. Uh, but to be honest, after the rescue, uh, he still uh, he he was still able to kite fairly well, able to transition into the graveyard area, yeah. and yeah, did a lot of things to hold himself up. But unfortunately, he was getting hit by the the spawn follower a lot, not even by the mm -hmm. leech, and that's why like he was constantly spotted by the leech. The leech was constantly following him everywhere he went, and it gave Kuga the opportunity to leech another survivor, as we have seen just now. Um, but you know what? More on that analysis later, because we're going to look at the match stat. You can see Lemon is actually uh, doing a lot of the containment time, 137, followed by Tofu. So definitely amazing containment time by both of these survivors. Even Cake has 75 seconds. Uh, Eng, unfortunately, will only be decoding 11%, touch it for 11%. Um, Kai, even with like uh, two rescues right there, it's only going to be 36 seconds. Do I? Can I be like more Cái này một A đó, mà thua 4 luôn rồi. Khó, khó cho mình sneaky. Yeah, and to be honest, it still feel very, very weird to see an Embalmer in the first round. Because usually, they would bring a supportive lineup instead of going for the uh, potential tie lineup like this. So, and also the dream which is a counter to the to the embalmer because she can transition she she can traverse the area so well mm. uh so that is the factor that uh the embalmer pick was kind of questionable because i think they did expect uh the do which happened uh, to, to to appear with that psychologist pick but they immediately went for the embalmer and that is just not great of character in round one yeah but oh well, after all is said and done, I, I just have to say, well, Kuga, he, he happened to be at the right place, made the right decision, mm -hmm. and went for the forward. Because like, how many times do we actually see hunters chase um, rescuers first, especially when it's a forward with a full football? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we see it a lot. I mean, we see it a lot. And, but, you know, how many times do we actually see that early down, especially when you're chasing uh, a rescuer that, can, that has such good um, mobility? Like uh, either machine with the pads or forward with the football, so that's a lot of mm. uh, a lot of advantages. Nah, bây giờ vốn cái kèo đánh với Zero Two là kèo khó cho Sneaky rồi. Mà không bây giờ Team Su và Ryu còn thua bốn đó. Thì không biết họ đánh như thế nào đây. Yeah, to be honest, the early game of round is pretty much like a game of play. They all went for the pad. They all went for the risk. That's uh, true. Kuga, Kuga risking the entire game chasing that forward and it pays out well and also the forward risking to vault the pallet and it's pretty much um, um, a mistake, a, a, a mishap for the forward uh, costing the entire team so yeah on the standpoint uh, I think too much risk was, was taken so yeah that's, yeah. that's, the, that's the analysis yeah, unfortunately, uh, with big risk comes big reward, but uh, it's just too bad that this time it didn't really pay it off for Team Ryu. <laughs> but you know what, ladies and gentlemen, nah. like, round đấu 1B, now, bây giờ thì Hunter của bên phía Zero2 đã thắng 4 rồi. Sneaky sẽ phải làm gì với cái team Suivo cực kỳ mạnh của Zero2 đây? Tính ra ở thời điểm hiện tại trong giải đấu này thì team Suivo của Zero2 đang là team mạnh nhất. Đó là team Suivo nhất nhất, chưa kể đến Hunter. Hunter thì có khá là nhiều những Hunter mạnh. Tuy nhiên thì survival thì team survival của ZT đang là mạnh nhất Mà đây là một kèo khó, vốn là khó cho Sneaky rồi Nhưng mà team su của Ryu còn gãy nữa Thì Sneaky sẽ rất là khó đánh Cấm bartender thì Sneaky Bác sĩ tâm lý nên được lựa chọn đến từ Zero2 Họ... Họ lấy lính thuê Vậy thì thật ra Sneaky có thể cấm nốt đi con bác sĩ tâm lý trong kèo này Rồi, cấm nốt bác sĩ tâm lý rồi Zero2 còn con gì ta? Ong thợ máy. À, ủa? Sao thạ cấm cái gì mà lại còn lòi ra bác sĩ tâm lý thế kia? Uh, 
the forward, I think the forward's definitely gonna. You know what? Uh, the early down on Ryu right there is the forward. Yeah, I'm not gonna make that mistake. So that's three imposts. A uh, hard to chase the virus right from the start. Plus shadow on the priestess. I have to say, that's mm. an S batch priestess right there. Detectives, that's shadow on the priestess. So I have to say, battle of the dream. Oh, okay. So the it's a little bit of an S third band. So. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of imagining Zero Two using the little gun and Sneaky won't have anything to deal with that. We won't have to do anything to deal with that, so... Mock Phu Thuy dành cho Sneaky. Nhưng đây là một kèo khó. Hai giải cứu bác sĩ tâm lý thêm nữ chủ tế đều là những cái mục tiêu khó bắt dành cho Sneaky. Bây giờ ở meta này thì nữ chủ tế nó bớt khó chịu đi một chút cho con Mộc Phu Thủy khi mà chủ thể có thể đi ngang qua chiếc vòng. Nhưng mà tôi tôi đánh giá đây vẫn là một kèo khó bởi vì Ryu thua 4. Ryu thua 4. <laughs> yeah, I think they have to. And I see Ricky as well. Hello, Ricky. Shout out to you. And yeah, we're gonna head into the game straight away. We're gonna see Ryu, Sneaky right there on the Tomie. Sneaky xuất hiện ở khu vực biệt thự và có hướng di chuyển về cổng cũ. Ở đây là lính đánh thuê của bên phía Zero và đây không phải một mục tiêu ngon ăn để bắt. Sneaky di chuyển ra giữa bản đồ. Tầng hai là ai đây? Tầng hai là là Yus. Khó rồi. Đuổi con tiền đạo này là. Đồ có tiền đạo này là cực kỳ khó nhưng mà Shadow đang bị kẹt lại Shadow đang bị kẹt lại Bắt vào Shadow rồi Một chiếc vòng được đục và chủ tế, chủ tế. Ôi 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 Sneaky đệ dừng lại rồi Sneaky đâm vào chiếc vòng lỗi và con đệ dừng lại rồi Thế là bây giờ tự nhiên lại phải kéo đệ lại một lần nữa Con đệ còn chưa quay lại kìa Khó cho Sneaky Và đó Đệ dừng rồi bắt buộc Sneaky phải dừng lại để phá ván Tự nhiên bị đối phương rong nguyên một cái mát chỉ bởi vì đâm đệ lỗi, chỉ bởi vì đâm vào cái cổng lỗi. Quá là toàn luôn. Shadow. Shadow, con đệ đang phá ván rồi. Chó được thả ra nhưng mà đục vòng. Rồi, cắn được chó. Có nhánh 12 không? Hình như là có 12 cho Shadow nhưng mà xuyên ván. Mất đi con lần ký sinh rồi. Và cũng mất một con chó đến từ vị trí của Sneaky. Bây giờ bắt vị trí của Shadow tầm này hơi khó Ván sẽ được phá Shadow lăn ván và có cho mình Đó là một chiếc vòng nữa Tăng tốc nhánh chín đục vòng Về bên kia của khu vực biệt thự Lên tầng 2 mất rồi Khó quá Khó cho Sneaky quá Bắt được người nhanh chưa chắc là đã thắng được Chứ đừng nói là Như thế này The second cipher is about to be done. The third cipher is already at sixty percent. All ciphers are being decoded right now. Three ciphers are being decoded right now. So, and Shadow is still not down. Đúng rồi em ơi. Em mix và Shadow là từng là thành viên của BL. Lúc đấy là Zero Two chưa đủ cả team đủ mười sáu tuổi đánh giải. Thế nên là lúc ấy là Shadow này, Karin này, xong rồi các thứ thì sang team BL đánh. Nhưng mà bây giờ thì Zero Two họ đủ tuổi rồi. Họ đủ tuổi rồi. Thế là họ sang đánh thôi. Ok, mất ấn, mất ấn ký sinh đến từ Sneaky, nhưng mà ba mấy rưỡi, ba mấy rưỡi sắp xong cho Zero Two, trận này đánh, Sneaky còn không thắng được ấy, chứ đừng nói là thắng 4, trận này còn thua ấy chứ, trận này còn thua luôn ấy chứ. Zero Two toàn là 16, 17 tuổi ạ, họ là tài năng trẻ ạ, chính ra mà Zero Two mà có sự bài bản như những cái team chuyên nghiệp bên Trung ấy, là họ đọ được với bên Trung Quốc, bởi vì tất cả những thành viên của Zero Two đều có kỹ năng cực kỳ cao tất cả các thành viên đều có kỹ năng tốt nếu nếu mà nói có điểm yếu nào về kỹ năng thì chắc là chỉ có vị trí của Run thôi nhưng mà Run là một người chơi lính thuê đánh đánh giải cứu thành ra là cũng không phải là quá đòi hỏi về kỹ năng nó quá là cao ấy vẫn cao nhưng mà kiểu người người mà kỹ năng chắc là yếu nhất trong team này thì lại là Run là một bạn nữ còn ba uh, thành viên còn lại đấy là Yus này, MX này, Shadow thì thôi khỏi phải nói rồi, đúng không? Yus là người chơi kỹ năng tốt nhất Đông Nam Á thời điểm hiện tại về bên Survival. Còn MX thì đã đánh COA4, COA5, uh, Shadow cũng thế, Shadow cũng thế luôn. Thành ra là 
Họ đều là những cái người chơi có kinh nghiệm thi đấu và có kỹ năng cực kỳ cao Rồi, kiểm soát máy đến từ Sneaky Đây là cái team su mạnh nhất của Đông Nam Á ở thời điểm hiện tại Rồi, làm sao mà bốc người, đẩy đệ sang đây thì làm sao mà bốc người tự dạy luôn đến từ Shadow Jus sẽ cover cho anh ta Jus lướt 12 này được đón đánh Đấm bóng đi, rồi ok, Sneaky đi Tốc biến, rồi tốc biến mới lấy được máu của Jus Ờ, răn là nữ, răn là nữ. Ê, cuối 80%. Con đệ của Jus đang canh trên tầng 2 và Jus đã kéo đệ ra rồi. Bây giờ thì MX chỉ cần vòng lại tầng 2 đập máy một lần nữa mà thôi. Đang có một con đệ khác được đẩy đến. Ôi, nhảy thẳng vào đâu? Ừ, rồi, không sao, không sao. Emic có máu giả. Emic có máu giả. Có thể chơi bình tĩnh được với từ Zero Two. Sneaky quyết định kiểm soát chiếc máy khu vực nhà tầng 2. Thế thì hai thành viên của Zero Two hồi máu cho nhau thôi. Truyền máu cho Shadow à? Định truyền máu cho Shadow à? Rồi, hai thành viên của Zero Two vẫn chưa hồi máu cho nhau. Vẫn chưa hồi máu cho nhau đến từ Yus và Shadow họ đang làm gì vậy Bên kia thì Run đang đập máy mới khu vực biệt thự luôn rồi Tự trích kim tiêm đến từ vị trí của tiền đạo Anh ta bỏ kim tiêm và nhặt lại cho mình trái bóng Nhưng mà Shadow vẫn đang nửa máu Đấy là một mối nguy hiểm cho bên phía Zeroto Tuy nhiên Run đang bốc máy mới và nó đã 50% mất rồi Shadow cai ngược về khu vực máy của Run Đây là đệ của Yus và nó sẽ đi ngược lại ngay bây giờ đó là con đệ của Yus, nó sẽ được đi ngược lại ngay bây giờ. Ôi rồi, MX vừa đi vừa xì sticker rất là nhiệt tình. Trận này không có gì mất, không có một cái gì gọi là áp lực cho Zero Two cả. Đơn giản chỉ là vào đánh với con bọn phù thủy này đánh bình thường. Chưa kể là chưa kể là Shadow Kai còn tốt nữa. Trận này Shadow Kai còn tốt nữa. Thành ra là cứ đánh bình thường thôi là khó cho Sneaky thắng. Mà cứ quay sang MX là xì sticker vào mặt như thế này thì chắc là Sneaky đang đang cuống lắm rồi. Máy Pram rồi, ok, máy Pram mất ấn thôi, mất ấn thôi, mất ấn thôi các bạn. Bây giờ Sneaky mới có ấn mới ra đặt vào Run, Run có cho mình là hai chiếc găng tay này, ấn ký sinh vào Run cổng bên kia mà được mở Run búng găng tay thẳng về hầm người không, từ từ cổng xa đang được gọi, cổng xa đang được gọi, xa đâu đang gọi cổng xa về khu vực cổng biệt cổng nghĩa địa. Pha này mà mở được cổng là thoát 4 này Emic kẹt lại giữa map Sticky biết đối phương muốn mở cổng nghĩa địa rồi nên đang đẩy đệ về đây để kiểm soát Bắt gặp được Emic ở đây muốn giữ lại cho mình một mạng tốc biến đang có nhưng quá tầm con đệ Quá tầm con đệ Có nhánh 12 nha Có nhánh 12 cho Emic Lướt 12 này tốc biến Không được rồi Không 12 này tốc biến được rồi Giờ tôi vẫn đang muốn thoát 4 Họ vẫn đang muốn thoát 4 Cổng đã mở nhưng mà tôi không thấy họ chạy ra Tôi không thấy Yus chạy ra mà tôi đang thấy anh ta chạy ra đây Họ đang muốn thoát 4 các bạn ơi Chắc chắn nhìn tình huống này là muốn thoát 4 rồi Chưa, chưa, không, Yus chạy ngược đi rồi Yus chạy ngược đi rồi Cổng, cổng quả đấy cổng mở rồi Yus sau đó để đâm vào cổng được Nhưng mà anh ta lùi ra Thôi được rồi, hết cơ hội với việc treo ở đây thì hết cơ hội thoát 4 cho Zero Tôi nghĩ họ sẽ ra và hoàn thành trận đấu thoát 3 của mình 8-1 cho ra đấu đầu tiên Từ từ nha, từ từ nha Jus đang tự trích máu Anh ta đầy máu rồi, họ đang quay ngược lại Shadow, Shadow bị quạ bù Hai cổng đã được mở Zero Two muốn thoát 4 Hoặc là họ biết là ít nhất họ đã thoát được một người rồi hai cổng đã mở ít nhất thoát thì cũng sẽ thoát được một thành ra là bây giờ đánh muốn đánh thoát bốn mãn nhãn đấy mà đúng là những tài năng trẻ là không sợ gì hết những tài năng trẻ là không 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 không, không sợ gì hết ran bị ký sinh ran bị chặn lại phương hướng vào ghế rồi nhưng bây giờ chỉ có ran cứu được thôi tiền đạo của Yus đang húp vào đó là nguyên trái banh và cứu được người rồi rồi nhánh 12 đang có mắt đỏ đã hết và thôi Sơ Nicky tầm này chỉ có thua 4 thôi làm sao mà làm gì được nữa Rất nhiều vòng được đục đến từ vị trí của Shadow và họ vào cổng nghĩa địa rồi thoát 4-10-0 cho Zero Two
Oh my god, and, and Max is just gonna escape through the dungeon. GG. Well played. I don't check, I don't check. Day! Uh, ZT. Uh, 10 all in the first 10, game. 10, 10 in the first game, right? Now, like, they're not giving any chance at all. Like, just when you think that 3k is enough, uh, 3 escape is enough, no. They said, yeah, you know what? We can uh, definitely do this. 4 escape. Yeah, I think yeah, they still have the resources, so they quickly go up for the risk because the ball was still have a uh, uh, three quarter of the ball. Mm -hmm. Chris still have three portal, and yeah. then the Missouri still have elf pass. So Missouri went out for the bait, and then the forward went in for the stun onto the follower in front of the bear, and oh that is God. such a meticulous plan that it works out so well against a uh, sneaky dream witch. Yeah, I mean, that has to be a very devastating blow uh, to Team Ryu right now because, oh. yeah, that's very demoralizing. But you know what, Ryu, I know it's easier said than done, but at this point, they definitely need to be resetting their minds right now. They have to reset, they have to recuperate, they have to gather their thoughts again because, yeah, even though they got one win, points doesn't really matter because round, round wins comes first. If mm -hmm. Ryu is able to get the win in second game, or even a draw, at least, uh, sorry, they have to get a win in the second game. Yeah, because they have if to they get, get a draw, win. it's so hard for them to, yeah, if it's to the, come if back. It, yeah, if it's a draw, they have to get another 10 -0. They have to replicate the result that ZT is having here, yeah. which, to be honest, um, uh, almost impossible. That's true. Uh, yeah. But if you yeah. look at the time just now, Priestess get 100 seconds containment time. Mm. Oh, what gets 100 seconds? Psychologists get 100 seconds, but it's not doing justice to Shadow because Justice was the, uh, it was not doing justice to Shadow because Shadow was the one taking the first kite and he actually kited for uh, almost three cyphers, two and a half cyphers right there. So I think that was also uh, one of the things that um, enabled ZT to, uh, you know, create so much pressure. The decoding was so fast and props also to, to run. She managed to rescue without getting hit. So at least yeah. she'll be able to come back for the second time and, you know, she got hit again, but it's okay because she got that rescue without getting hit. So uh, definitely creating so much pressure and the four-man escape NTT, I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, uh, yeah, um, now, uh, here's the thing, with the new update, Dreamwitch is able to go through the portal, right? Yep, yep, yep. But, yeah, but the patroller can't go through the portal. So exactly. when she dropped the patroller, Shadow, immediately go for the portal and disrupt the flow of the game so sneaky has to you know uh, move. take some more time to move around and to get the first hit onto shadow which she is required to use the leech hit so mm. it's still it's by a lot of time for the survivor team uh because you know chris this is so hard to chase with only one follower you have to body block you have to uh circle around block the route like a lot of thing has to be done in order to chase the first first game. That's very true. Like, but there's no one else you can chase, especially if you're playing as a dreamish. Yeah, in the lineup like that. Oh. Yeah, it's just so hard. So I'm. That's why I said I was really happy to see that Ford was being picked and Machinery was getting picked as well. So I think that definitely built a foundation. Like, Sneaky is definitely not gonna go for um, the forward because Yash on the forward. Uh, not only does he harass good, he also kites really good. So he's def she's definitely not going to go for forward. And on run, yeah, you can go for run, you can go for the machinery, but it takes too much effort to down the machinery. It takes too much, and the delay damage some more, so it takes too much to down. Too much time is going to be wasted there. Uh, Psychologist, three hits as well. Too much time. Priestess is the only choice he has, but unfortunately, it is Shadow <laughs> that's playing Priestess, yeah. and we know Shadow's like super... Uh, super good oh. S match. And now oh, the substitute yeah. going to happen right here. I think wow. they're feeling very comfortable right mm. here. They're just going to substitute and maybe give more experience to Z to play. So Ren's going to be substitute out. So mm -hmm. it, it shows that they are really comfortable going to game number two. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, you can't ban all the comfortable character from ZT. Like, in a meta like this, if you ban the Chrysis, they want to use the Seer and the Forward, which you know, you have seen the, the Seer coming from the side of ZT. They demolished the other side with that. So, oh, Leo's memory? Really? Yo. Uh, well, well, Leo's memory 
Nào, ký ức Leo cho round đấu thứ hai Và đây là map pick của Zero Two. Họ bị cấm mất cái bệnh viện thánh tâm Và quyết định đánh Leo ở map thi đấu thứ hai này Quả 10-0 này nó ép bên phía của Ryu vào đường cùng rồi Bây giờ một là họ ăn lại round 2 Không là họ đứt Không còn cách nào khác cả Nào, ban pick của round đấu thứ hai, Ryu đã bị dồn xuống thế chân tường rồi. Khi mà cái trận đấu này họ sẽ phải chiến thắng, chứ không có quả 10 không kia mà bọn đánh, họ đánh hòa ở cái round hai thì nói thật là chỉ có toan mà thôi. Tiên tri tiền đạo bị Kuga cấm đi ở bản đồ ký ức Leo này. Lính thuê đang được bên phía Ryu họ nhá ở trong lượt chọn đầu tiên. Có lẽ sẽ là lính thuê chủ tế chắc không, họ lấy lính thuê tập kỹ rồi. Lính thuê và diễn viên tập kỹ Bây giờ thì cũng qua cấm tiếp đi Đó là đưa thư ở trong bàn đấu này Ryu sẽ lựa chọn như thế nào đây Ong đang còn này Đồ chơi Không, hình như kia là thợ máy Con kia, con kia là con gì Ok, đồ chơi dành cho bên phía Ryu 
in the <laughs> factory, like there's positions there. I mean, it's gonna be so annoying. Catapults you to the to the stairs. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so if she were, if 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 how are you went full on uh, climbing to the stairs strategy, the patient will be the next hit. That's the thing. Um, but they are, they still need a decoder in the lineup if they want to go for the cyber rush. Um, mm -hmm. And Kuga knew that and banned the mechanic straight away. Um, wow. Uh, the other two, I mean, the other decoder potential like the mine side, the prisoner, explorer, lawyer, all are risks that they had to take if they want a decoder lineup. Mm -hmm. That's true. I mean, looking at this lineup, do you think Kuga wants to go for court? I mean, banning oh. the fast decoding, fast banning forward. Cậu máy là nhân vật cuối cùng mà Kuga cấm đi trong vài đấu này Và bên phía Ryu vẫn còn một lựa chọn nữa Họ đang định lấy gì đây? Nữ điều phối Vậy là muốn counter Bon Bon Khắc chế con Bon Bon của Kuga rồi Đính thuê điều phối Tạp kỹ và đồ chơi Đây vẫn là một team đi cốt có thể nhanh Để tính là nhanh Điều phối đập máy cực kỳ nhanh luôn à, Galati cho Kuga Yeah, but no we're gonna see the Galatea, so yeah, going straight for uh, Sculptor, not even gonna consider Bon Bon. I mean, usually we, we always see Kuga, like I, I, it's either gonna be Dream Witch first round and then it's gonna uh, transition into Bon Bon second game. Uh, but this time around, yeah, Kuga's just gonna go for Sculptor. And I think against uh, uh, a survivor like the Coordinator, the statues can definitely come into play, like blocking the shots if he times it well enough so a lot of factors to be taken into consideration here but yeah one thing that Ryu absolutely must not allow Kuga to do is get another 4k they have to get at least yeah, sure. one yeah one or two survivors out like one minimum one's the minimum to get out so that at least um sneaky uh she can Turn come around. back with the 4k yeah. yeah she would be able to and win the round so Ryu, um, yeah, they have to focus on their survival first. They have to turtle it out. Um, go, go for the turtle strategy, defensive, um, tank it out, make the proper transition. Uh, Toy Merchant's gonna play a lot of role here, uh, placing the catapults to extend the kites for the teammates. And yeah, having Tofu bring, having Ryu bring the coordinator as well is definitely gonna force Kruga to think again. Will I need the bling more or excitement first? <laughs> yeah, but, but yes, but yes, thing. Uh, there's still a chance of Kuga fighting the coordinator first. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I won't be surprised if uh, the coordinator here have no tight turner, but instead going for a kiting build like a three nine or three twelve. But usually, when we when we go up against uh, Galatia, it's it's going to be three nine. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I mean three nine is very aggressive, right? Three yeah, nine aggressive. Yeah, to be honest, um, I have a feeling that Ang and Lemon will be the one having tight turner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all, yeah. all of them are very sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> all of them are very sneaky and put together in Leo's memory, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if Ryu has been practicing a lot in Leo's memory. Um, yeah, but we'll have to see what, what is in store for us with this lineup. Yeah, we see we're seeing coordinator like once in the blue moon right here and the toy merchant as well so yeah definitely having a lot of fun trying to figure out if Anne and Martha is gonna be carrying this weight right now nah, chúng ta sẽ đến với rao đầu thứ hai cặp đấu giữa Zenoto cùng với Ryu rao này mà vào Kuga giết bốn nữa thì thực sự là không còn gì để đánh cho Ryu cả là họ sẽ phải xuống nhánh thua Kuga anh ta đã có một trận giết bốn với mộng phù thủy ở rao đấu đầu tiên rồi bây giờ anh ta mà lấy nốt một trận giết bốn nữa thì có khi sẽ là MVP luôn và không ai tranh được với anh ta cả tượng không chính xác ở giai đoạn đấu trận Lemon đang cai quanh khu vực nhà nhỏ nhưng nhảy bóng gì vậy thôi 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 không, ông Hunter có làm gì đâu tự tự mấy ông survival lăn ra đấy đấy chứ tự mấy ông survival lăn ra đấy đấy có đấy nhảy bóng đúng thì Hunter chỉ có thở oxy mà thôi nhảy bóng đập mặt vào tường trong một tình huống nó rất là bình thường thôi và có bàn đạp nhưng mà cách đang cách đang bị kẹt lại đây anh ta định làm gì? Anh ta có bàn đạp khác à? Anh ta có bàn đạp khác các bạn ạ. Và anh ta sẽ bay về khu vực nhà nhỏ. Không, bay đi đâu? Bay ngược lại đây nhỉ? Không, bay ra giữa map à? Thế đi rồi. Tốc biến sẽ có cho vị trí của Kuga. 
uh, setup bàn đạp nhưng mà quên setup uh, bản thân mình setup một cái bàn đạp nhưng mà quên setup bản thân mình các bạn ạ toa Fuga Một cái tượng không thực sự chính xác Có một tình huống tăng tốc nhánh chín đến từ cách Ở đây ta có thể thả cánh một lần nữa Không, không thả cánh Không thả cánh rồi Tốc biến vẫn đang còn này Fuga nên tốc biến đi thôi Né được tốc biến đến từ bên phía của Ryu Ồ, cách đang làm rất tốt nha Cách đang làm rất tốt Bây giờ thì bay rồi Bây giờ bay thẳng ra ngoài cửa sổ thì sao Không bay được ra ngoài cửa sổ vẫn thiếu một cái tượng cuối từ Kuga nữa Máy của bên phía Ryu đang khá là chậm Máy của Ryu đang khá là chậm Họ mới xong được hai máy mà thôi Một tượng nữa cách sẽ gục Anh ta đang làm đủ cho trận đấu này rồi Bây giờ còn thua là lỗi đồng đội Thật sự luôn Tầm này còn thua là lỗi của đồng đội Tại sao máy nó có thể chậm được đến như vậy Tại sao máy nó có thể chậm đến như vậy Hai rất lâu rồi Né tốc biến rồi ai sẽ là người cứu đấy lính đánh thuê của ng đang di chuyển đến và ta bị bắt hướng rồi bị bắt hướng rồi máu đang rất là cái máu nó đang rất là gần vạch rồi nha còn này có khi xả tượng ra là cứu không được này rồi 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 hai người đến cứu và không có quá nữa không có quá nữa nhưng rất nhiều rất rất nhiều những tình huống mất máu của Ryu Hunter mắc chiêu rồi họ còn thiếu nguyên một máy mới trận này nữa trận này đánh vẫn không thể nào mà thắng được đuổi xong Tô Phu Tô Phu đã mất 0,75 máu sẵn và đây là một điều tượng hoàn hảo không thể nào trượt đi đâu được cả góc quá hẹp để có thể né được ba máy ba máy sách đi đâu đây sách vào nhà máy luôn ca một chiếc máy 30% phần trăm của bên phía Rio bây giờ không ai cứu được cả NG lẻ máu thế này Hunter có tượng hoàn hảo có khi anh ta không không làm gì được đâu cắm cọc búng một cái bàn đạp đi đâu đó đến từ vị trí của Lemon à búng bàn đạp vào giữa map NG sẽ phải cứu rồi NG sẽ phải cứu bằng một cách nào đó bằng một cách nào đó anh ta sẽ phải cứu anh ta đang tạo một cái dấu tay ở đây hiến rồi Ryu muốn hiến người, họ muốn đánh an toàn để cho Sneaky có cơ hội được chơi chứ còn bây giờ đâm vào cứu thì rồi NG. Ồ, oh, tượng trượt. Ok, tượng trượt, tượng trượt đến từ vị trí Kuga. Oh. Oh, bị đấm rồi. Yeah, vẫn đang muốn lấy máu NG Vẫn đang muốn lấy máu vị trí của lính đánh thuê Cặp tượng đặt ra không được rồi, Anh ta đặt, anh ta vuốt tượng lỗi rồi. rồi Bây giờ thì mạng đầu tiên sẽ có cho Hunter của bên phía Zero Two. Sách đối phương ra ngoài nhà máy để tiện đường di chuyển đuổi người sau khi vào treo ghế Máu của các thành viên bên phía Ryu đã được hồi lại Khách đã được hồi đầy máu và có cho mình một chiếc bàn đạp chưa được setup Mạng đầu tiên đã có Fuga bây giờ cần cố gắng đánh ít nhất là có một trận đấu hòa trở lên hòa thôi sau đó là team survival của Zotu vào hủy diệt một lần nữa thì có thể là họ sẽ knock out luôn đối phương chứ không có không có gì quá khó để cho Kuga trong đấu này cả một máy mới nữa cơ có một máy an toàn ở trong khu vực nhà máy nhưng mà chỉ là khu vực nhà máy thôi họ vẫn thiếu một máy cuối máy nhà máy đang được bóc rồi trách tượng trách tượng lỗi không chỗ này không còn dấu tai nữa rồi Kuga đang tìm một khu vực không còn dấu tay Cách đang chạy được Có bàn đạp là được set up chưa Tôi chưa thấy cái bàn đạp nào được set up đến từ vị trí của cách Chạy về khu vực nhà máy Máy 60% Ở đây máy mới 60% nó chạy lên tầng 2 rồi Cách ăn một tượng Anh ta đang lên tầng 2 Bên kia NG đang cố gắng đập chiếc máy ở khu vực nhà máy thật nhanh Nhưng Hunter tới rồi NG mua máy ra Còn một căng tay cuối cùng cho lính đánh thuê của bên phía Ryu Anh ta lách né được tượng của đối phương Chỗ này Nhảy xuống dưới không được rồi, NG búng găng lỗi Chịu đấy ờ, Chịu đấy Toàn 
you could tell I, us we are going forward. Um, I, I don't know. Is there anyone decoding at the moon no, gate? No, because <laughs> possibly going back there. Yeah, no cipher was shaking there. As yeah, one cipher yeah. remaining. It's eighty-two percent. Oh my god, two guys play this right. Otherwise, Ryu is gonna. Chỉ còn một máy cuối cho bên phía Ryu nữa mà thôi. Tám mươi hai phần trăm. Nhưng máy mới đang được bóc. Máy tám hai phần trăm chính là chiếc máy của một nhà máy này. Tốc biến đang đuổi cách luôn. Cách ăn một tượng rồi. Anh ta lại thả cho mình đó là cái. Cái cánh Một tượng Tượng trượt Tượng trượt Tượng trượt Cách đang làm được ở đây con ván Cách có thể chịu một tượng Rồi ok Anh ta chịu một tượng Và bây giờ hạ được ván xuống rồi Máy cuối đang đập khoảng 50% Đến từ bên phía Ryu Cách phải né tượng rồi Anh ta sẽ chịu một đòn đánh ở đây Máy mới 60 mà thôi Cần phải có một tình huống cứu Cần phải có một tình huống cứu Ai sẽ là người cứu đây NG đang về máy Vậy nghĩa là Lemon sẽ phải là người đi cứu Anh ta nên di chuyển luôn đi Chứ không bị bắt hướng là thua đấy Tôi nghĩ là Kuga biết hướng rồi Anh ta buông người xuống cắm cọc sang phía nhà nhỏ vẫn muốn có cho mình một chiến thắng đây là những tình huống phá thế hòa của Kuga hay là anh ta cũng muốn câu lại cái thời gian hồi phép bổ trợ cho mình nữa cho phép bổ trợ còn khoảng 50 giây nữa sẽ hồi 50 phần trăm 50 giây 50 giây máy cuối 76 máy cuối 76 NG đang bốc máy cắm cọc không 5 giây nữa mới có cọc bây giờ là tăng tốc giải mã rồi sách người lên treo đây, Lemon sẽ áp thẳng vào ghế luôn trong tiếng này Đây mới chỉ là, là người ghế thứ hai của cách mà thôi Tượng đặt ta lần đầu là không chính xác Đấm luôn vị trí của Lemon và cứu người thành công Rồi Ryu có thể đánh hòa trong kèo này Pram này luôn đi Không, họ chưa muốn Pram Pram đi Hunter có mắt đỏ Hunter có mắt đỏ Đây là một tình huống đuổi vào vị trí của Lemon Tượng đặt ra là không chính xác Kuga đang muốn lừa đèn Lemon biết rồi Lemon biết rồi Từ từ, Ryu Ryu ở đây có ván Ryu dãy mạnh lên chặt từ từ nha, Kuga sắp có cho mình là phép bổ trợ Anh ta cắm cọc về phía NG, NG không có đồ đạc gì cả Đuổi NG luôn không, Tele đã có Tôi đang muốn thấy, tôi thấy là đang muốn đuổi NG rồi Điều, Kuga đâm vào địa hình lỗi NG vẫn đang tiếp tục cố mở cổng khu vực mặt trăng Và Đây là một tình huống không thể nào mà anh ta mở kịp được cả Phải câu thời gian cho những người đồng đội của anh ta mở cổng Nếu không, Kuga vẫn đang còn Tele để xử lý Có thể thắng 3 được, ở đây có bàn đạp Không làm vào bàn đạp kịp không tay nào vào bàn đạp kịp đâu hầm ở đâu hầm ở cổng cây thông nhưng mà các thành viên ryu chưa ai về được cổng để mở cả chưa ai về được cổng cả họ làm gì nãy giờ vậy ôi thôi xong bây giờ thì tê lê bây giờ thì tê lê cách sẽ là người bị đuổi cách đầy máu nhưng hunter mắt đỏ quay ngược lại bắt lemon ng đang chạy về cổng bây giờ ryu chưa hòa nổi đâu một tình huống vứt bóng đỏ tốt Bây giờ đi qua đây là không có tượng nữa này Đây mình xử lý bóng đỏ tốt Không như đoạn đầu trận Từ từ nha cổng 40 50 60 Về cổng hơi sớm rồi Tôi nghĩ là không ra cổng kịp đâu Cổng mới 80 thôi Không kịp rồi Và Quách bị phá tình huống mở cổng Lê mình sẽ gục ngay chiếc cổng này Và Ryu vẫn có thể thua ba Cách đang muốn mở cổng cố Và anh ta gục rồi ngồi ghế lần cuối Đến từ vị trí của đồ chơi Xong 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 mất người rồi Mất người rồi Ông NG tự dậy được chưa Ông NG tự dậy được chưa Đang bò Đang bò là không tự dậy đúng không Đang bò nghĩa là không tự dậy nãy giờ đúng không Mắt đỏ sắp hết rồi Cắm cọc về phía NG À ông này mất tự dậy rồi Ông này mất tự dậy rồi không dậy Đang bò đang bò đang bò Cổng mới 46 thôi rồi ôi cố đấm ăn xôi rồi mất trận hòa rồi xong rồi 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 đi đi riu đi rồi riu đi rồi ông này mất tự dậy rồi thu bốn không không cổng mở cổng chín mươi phần trăm né được một cái tượng là ra được cổng né được một cái tượng thôi là lemon sẽ có cho mình một tình huống thoát một thế sneaky phải giết bốn thôi những khi không giết bốn là vào rao ba là chỉ có đứt thôi Tele sẽ có Nhưng Lemon đã mở xong cổng Và đây là một tình huống mà anh ta thoát được một Ok Chỉ là một trận thắng ba thôi
khó cho bên phía vẫn khó cho bên phía Ryu vẫn khó cho Ryu Honestly, that, uh, at least that was a slight improvement from the first game. But will it be enough for Team Ryu to come back from this predicament? Because right now, Sneaky has to get a 4K in order for them to win game number two, in order to bring them to game number three, uh, which yeah. is still going to be very hard for Team Ryu. Um, right now, guys, um... if, you, if you don't know the scores yet, the score is currently at 10 to 0. Uh, ZT, 10 and Ryu at zero in game number one. In game number two right here, first half, it's gonna be three to one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's the that's the state we are at right now. Yeah, 13 to one for the mm. side of zero two. And yeah, the acrobat, it was the only one getting out the gate right there. I think the toy merchant was quite risky there, opening the gate right in front of the hunter. Mm. And, you know, we had to pay the price there because Kuga did bring the detention and it only takes one normal hit to down this uh, toy merchant. That's true. That's true. I mean, Kuga does look a little bit shaky and lost in the early games, right? We we were talking about like, oh, why is Kuga going back to the moonlit river, uh, the moon gate, especially yeah. when there's no type of shaking. And then even yeah, and, and then even at the end game where Kuga didn't even go for the chair. Instead, the chairs are over there. Um, yeah, give, giving chances to the survivor side. Uh, but yeah, uh, looking at the stat here, I, uh, Acrobat decoding a lot of uh, the progress with 288%, and of course, the uh, Stable Rescuer with two rescue in the entire game. Yeah, I mean, best case scenario, man, uh, avoiding a potential 4K, 4K by Kuga. So right now, Ryu, uh, they have to depend on their ace, the Lady Boss. Right there, Sneaky. Otherwise, you guys might know uh, Sneaky from her previous name, Sneaky and Sign. Uh, I believe that's her previous handle. Um, yeah, the pride of Singapore right here playing IBC. So, second half, uh, what do you expect to see in Leo's memory? Um, NTP, like, well, Jubu is definitely going to be banned. Cause... <laughs> yeah, um, to be honest, I'm not sure about that. Like, I, I'm not really sure about if Zero Two is going to respect man the dream witch because they did so well against that that's so, true yeah um but they definitely have to respect ban the dream witch right because mm. think he might be like okay uh i've i've woken up from my first game now i'm upgraded to dream witch 2.0 so I, I think maybe if they want to play safe they should just um delete Sorry, ban the potential 4K hunters. <laughs> just, just delete the hunter. <laughs> <laughs> just delete perma erase with the snap of a finger. Yeah, Boom. yeah but uh, yeah. well, I think it's just a matter of whether they want they are more comfortable mm. playing against this uh, Dream Witch or Sneaky Skeletor. What do you think? So here's what I think. Um, okay. What are the potential 4K uh, hunters other than the Dream Witch for Sneaky uh, right now? Skeletor. Um, yeah, I got and the club. Those yeah. are those are the two because the Geisha and the Bloody Queen has been uh, has been considered to be a tie hunter, to be honest. Um, so yes, yeah, Nikki had to get at least three K. So those are the two hunter that she should go for, unless she is training something that we don't know. Training something we don't know sounds Which like a secret artist. project. <laughs> 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 I mean, who knows? I mean, lately we've seen a lot of wax artists. We've seen not just once or twice. We've seen like, I don't know, five, six times wax artists used in IBC and with good results as well, like a draw or even getting a win as well. So uh, I just have to say, uh, do the unexpected, catch your opponent off guard. Maybe that's what they really need to depend on. Because right now, uh, ZT is in a very... Nào, chúng ta sẽ đến với uh, to win this game round đấu. Let's hai b zero two có quyền tự kết thúc trận đấu này chỉ cần họ hòa mà thôi trước đó thì đã có một trận thắng ba của kuga rồi bây giờ zero two chỉ cần hòa trở lên là họ sẽ có một trận đấu knock out hai không bên phía ryu và tiến vào chung kết chiến thắng để gặp bl trong cái uh, uh, trong cái offline ở thái lan 
Nicky cấm tiên tri cảnh đạo mộ phù thủy của Nicky bị cấm đi chúng ta cùng chờ những lựa chọn mà phía Zero đưa ra rồi ga đừng đơ đến từ bên phía zero to họ muốn pick ra để khắc chế madam gây xa của sneaky ra nhưng sneaky vẫn còn đó là galati và quyết định khóa luôn cho mình và con galati này rồi lính thuê bác sĩ tâm lý tạp kỹ và cuối cùng là thợ vườn tôi nghĩ cái lượt cầm lập pick tự vừa này nó không đơn giản chỉ là chỉ là pick vào đấy cho vui mà nó nhằm mục đích khắc chế đó là con mộc phù thủy à xin lỗi đó là con galati thì, uh, chết mẹ rồi áo rồi nó khắc chế con gây xa cùng với madam của sneaky nhưng mà họ có vẻ tính hơi sai khi mà sneaky vẫn còn đó một nhân vật nữa có thể chơi tốt được đó chính là galati khóa luôn không suy nghĩ không cần suy nghĩ rồi khi mày đánh gala được nhưng mà bây giờ Sneaky cần giết 4 cơ Bởi vì nếu mà chỉ giết 3 thôi thì rao sau họ phải gỡ lại 10 không Thực sự đấy là một điều không thể nào Bây giờ một là giết 4, không thì nói thật là Ryu sẽ hết cơ hội Emma is no longer Emma, it's now M X Sorry for the pun right there This, yeah, but... uh, this is what you had to put up uh, when casting with Nell He will make uh, that jokes here and there That jokes? How dare you? <laughs> it's it's called puns, and and it, it makes sense. M X yeah. see? M X and yeah, but enough of the puns, man. Because right here, uh, detectives, we are gonna be seeing Sneaky trying to get a 4K against <clears throat> ZT. I mean, worst case scenario, uh, Sneaky needs to get at least a 3K to bring them into game number three, but. Honestly, I think the best shot for you is just to win it in game number two. <laughs> yeah, Sneaky will have to go for, uh, to be honest, a 4K because the 3K here is put so much pressure for RYU in the uh, uh, final round. Oh um, my god. Yeah, because the, 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 the distance that they have established in the first round, which is the panel, is mm -hmm. so, it's too much to close. So. Sneaky will have to consider taking the round, the round win route here mm. uh, for the for a chance for our you to win. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man. Sneaky is dealing with sneaky people right here, right now. <laughs> Nào, trận đấu sẽ bắt đầu với Galati của Sneaky và Yus có vẻ như sẽ là mục tiêu đầu tiên mà Sneaky gặp phải trong vài đấu này. Yus cầm cho mình đó là diễn viên tạp kỹ và đây là Kaito nói chung là đánh giá có thể nói là top 1 đông nam á luôn và một hạ ván tốt né tượng rất mượt đến từ yus và anh ta đang gồng cho mình một trái bóng trắng khu vực này vẫn có thể lút thêm một vòng nữa được bóng trắng được ném thôi sneaky tự ăn quả bóng trắng thôi sneaky tự ăn quả bóng trắng xuống này và phá ván rất chậm yus tranh thủ khoảng thời gian đó và chạy thẳng về cái khu vực một ván một, hai ván một cửa sổ ở cổng mặt trang này đang gồng cho mình trái bóng thứ hai đây là trái bóng đỏ rồi bóng tốt luôn toàn bây giờ ăn một đòn đánh né tượng ăn một đòn đánh chạy vào trong nhà máy đấy là một địa điểm cai tuyệt vời cho yus trong trận đấu này khó ô cái bò qua cửa sổ đấy yus thao tác lỗi rồi bò qua cửa sổ và bây giờ chạy lên tầng 2 
tốc biến đã có tốc biến đã có nhưng mà sneaky đang bị giãn khoảng cách Yus có thể nhảy xuống đây không anh ta không nhảy anh ta ăn tượng rồi gục luôn trong khu vực nhà máy máy không thực sự là nhanh cho bên phía zeo và hunter thì giữ được phép cùng với đó là có hầm ok từ từ nha từ từ nha một pha bò cửa sổ sau đó là một pha ăn tượng ở trên tầng 2 từ từ nha chơi được này tiết bốn thì sao tiết bốn sẽ có rao ba à, một tượng tốt vào em chẳng lẽ cặp trận này sẽ chưa kết thúc các bạn chẳng lẽ cặp trận này sẽ chưa kết thúc ra dương ghi đang có vẻ một cái tình huống rất sáng tình huống này rất cửa rất sáng luôn Emic cần phải cẩn thận. À, anh ta xong được máy rồi, hai máy rưỡi cho bên phía xe ô tô. Just đã quá nửa. Nhìn thấy Z, nhìn thấy Z đang vào. À, trận này Z ra trận chứ không phải ăn. Đúng găng tay tốt đến từ Z vào sự vào đường hầm rồi. Tốc biến, không lấy được cái đòn đánh. Pha tốc biến vừa rồi không lấy được đòn đánh. Sonicky tốc biến nhưng mà đối phương cứu xong rồi phát đó muốn tốc biến để hồi đòn nhưng mà nó không thành công thôi được rồi thế này là bị câu hòa rồi thế này là bị câu hòa rồi Just. thật ra là tình huống cai đầu này nó vẫn câu được khoảng thời gian nhất định và ba máy rưỡi sẽ sau cái tu như thế này thì rất khó từ từ này từ từ này zero tu zero tu ở đây cái 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 ghế bị phá rồi Rút bò rất nhanh Rút bò rất nhanh Emic đang đứng lấy khiên Anh ta block được một hit rồi Rồi quả này bị dãy rồi Thôi 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 Quả này bị dãy rồi Quả này bị dãy rồi Ok Emic đã gục Nhưng mà Rút sẽ dãy ra được Chắc chắn với các bạn luôn Họ cầm mắc dãy này Đánh với thợ vườn mà Dãy 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 được ngay trước ghế Dãy được ngay trước ghế Thôi xong cho Sneaky Rồi Rút nhảy luôn một trái bóng đen Và vào được khu vực nhà máy Tượng trúng một một, một cái tượng nữa Không được rồi Nicky toa Jus vẫn đang dãy chết Ở khu vực nhà máy này Anh ta chỉ cần câu một chút xíu nữa thôi là Zeo Tu có thể đánh hòa một cách cực kỳ thoải mái Thậm chí là đánh thắng nếu anh ta làm được Một cặp tượng nữa thôi Nicky. Rồi, ok, có mạng dành cho Nicky, nhưng mà làm sao để giết bốn đây? Lại là Emic. Chiếc ghế này chưa hề được phá. À, lấy luôn cho mình cái khiên tiếp theo rồi Khó quá Anh ta chủ động đi ra làm người bị đuổi Máy cuối của bên phía Zero 2 70% rồi Em biết chủ động chạy ra làm người cai luôn Shadow đang đập máy Máy đang dùng tele sang đến từ vị trí của Sneaky Shadow có cho mình Không, không có cho mình cái gì cả Máu giả cũng đã truyền luôn rồi Cặp tượng đặt ra là không chính xác được Sneaky Chưa phá ván phá được ván rồi nhưng mà tôi không nghĩ là Sneaky sẽ hạ được vị trí của Shadow ở trong khu vực cấp phải nhà máy này nơi cái máy cuối của Zero Two. họ đang đập máy mới Zero Two đang đập máy mới Shadow rời được khỏi địa hình né được tượng của Sneaky tiếp tục là những cặp tượng trượt ăn một đòn đánh thôi hai cặp tượng của Sneaky trượt cả hai và để cho Shadow anh ta cai được tiếp rồi Máy đã xong 90% Ăn một đòn đánh nữa là đủ Hoặc thậm chí là Zero to Pram máy luôn Hunter đang không có phép Việc hòa là rất dễ Cắm cọc Không, chưa Sticky muốn đánh thường rồi Máy đã Pram Có người đang ở cổng Cho bên phía Zero to Tại đầu vẫn đang dẫy được tiếp Rồi, máy Pram Z mở luôn chiếc cổng Của khu vực cổng mặt trăng nhưng mà em biết chạy về đấy thì hơi xa lại là em ở đây thằng tôi không có mắt đỏ tôi không có mắt đỏ 
Ờ, dễ quá rồi. Dễ cho bên phía Zero quá. Hắn ta không có mắt đỏ. Tầm mày chỉ có chỉ có đất thôi. Ship đồ đến. Ừ. Z đang ship đồ đến. 20 rồi. Rồi, Shadow gục và cổng đã được mở. Uh, Sneaky sẽ cho người xuống hầm và đây sẽ là 2-0 cho cặp đấu giữa Ryu và Zeroto sẽ kết thúc rất nhanh đàn áp hoàn toàn đến từ bên phía Zeroto Hunter một trận giết 3 một trận giết 4 Survival thì một trận thắng 4 và sau đó là họ giữ được hòa từ từ nha từ từ nha Z à đây Z có đồ Z không sợ gì hết Z là muốn biểu diễn kỹ năng Z là muốn biểu diễn kỹ năng Nước hoa xịt ra hơi muộn rồi 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 ông Z này ông Z này ông Z này ông oh, rồi ok biểu diễn kỹ năng biểu diễn kỹ năng suýt cút rồi, rồi, rồi. chiến thắng sẽ thuộc về Zero Two and i i just have to say that gardener uh has won my heart mx on m yeah. right there <laughs> yeah that's that's one uh, yeah that's that's one play that is definitely uh, uh mvp worthy right there mm -hmm. <laughs> God. to be honest yeah it's, uh this time around is the zero two side that's bringing non-meta character and making it worse instead of the hunter bringing a non-meta character to go up against ZT Survivor. So, it goes so well for Sneaky at first, but the Survivor, yeah. after that ship break, uh, just, the game yeah. just flow right back to the exactly. Survivor side. Yeah, and having MX just now, I have to say, MX, the addition of MX, uh, he moved from BL, right? He was from BL. The addition of MX into ZT right now, miracle combi right there, miracle combination, because he combined with his cheekiness and his combo right there. How many times have you seen MX just showing his face in front of Sneaky like, hit me, hit me, and... <laughs> that pops so much. That, that's so distracting, honestly. That's so distracting, especially if you're playing a hunter and you're like... Because the instinct of a hunter is to hit survivors, right? So when you have two people in the same place and one person is practically standing there asking you to hit, it's so distracting, and in this case, uh, MX made it work. And... Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and even escape. After all of that, MX survived. So, yeah. Oh my god. Um, I'm just a lot for work now. Um, <laughs> yeah, ZT will be taking the win with a gap of 15 to 3. So, 12 Jeez. point deficit. Um, yeah, unreal. Actually, yeah. unreal. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to pull up the daddy quotes right here. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but honestly, uh, Ryu is still not out of the game, ladies and gentlemen, because Ryu will still be uh, fighting for their life in the lower brackets. But NDT MVP, take it away. My God, <laughs> MX will be the MVP of this match with that chair breaking, allowing the MX to be MVP in this match with the chair breaking, allowing the Thật ra tôi thấy là Kuga xứng đáng hơn khi Kuga có một trận thắng 4 và một trận thắng 3. Không, bọn mình xuống nhánh thua, bọn mình thắng đội thắng trong cặp WP và GS là mà mình được uh, đi. And you know what? It's not only enjoyable to high level uh, tier players. It's also enjoyable to everyone who's playing casually. So guys, keep on supporting the game. Keep and thank you so much. We are at. Let me have a look at the viewer counts right here. We are at six million strong wow. right here. Wow. And with a play like that, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, shout out to all the people in the chat here. We go, we go into a little bit of a break. So ah, yes, yes, yeah, and yeah. you know after that match, uh, we just <laughs> we have to, to take drink. a short break. Yeah, we need to drink and eat. <laughs> so, yeah, yes. Yeah, see you guys after a short break. Okay, see you guys.
Vậy là chúng ta còn một cặp trận ngày hôm nay thôi Cặp trận đánh thua giữa team Sugar và Noi Vậy là Thắng sẽ gặp Ryu trong trận tiếp theo này mà tốc biến sớm hơn được một tí thì ngon ngày mai mv sẽ đấu nhé mai chắc là trận với gs thì tôi đoán là kéo gs với cả kéo gs với cả wp thì gs sẽ win tôi đoán thế Father, you taught us that the Shao family must act like bamboo in the winter, unruffled and composed. But what if the powerful seek our downfall? What good is our composure if evil goes unpunished? Forgive me, I must defy our mantra. and hide for the Shao family for vindication and for her safe return I knew this was a life of hardship a life of uncertainty and diligence my only option is to press onward and tread the unknown the Shao family must act like bamboo in the winter and steadfast in the face of adversity. With steam dense as a veil, and wine sweet as honey, one can't help but relax at the hot spring. Turn to basics, surrender restraints, relinquish thyself. Like the eagle plummeting straight down, lusting for lambs, hating all lamb souls. Bathe in the spring, we drink, we worship. We 
indulge. Said it's fine in July they came and then in August for flowers they were named they stayed and dwelt in September bathing in the sun oh sway she let down her guard Rosemary, who couldn't let go of his scars. Night and night stood. Now it's Asia, 2022, with me. Now, chúng ta sẽ đến với cặp đấu cuối cùng trong ngày hôm nay, một cặp đấu ở nhánh thua, cặp đấu giữa hai team Noi cùng với Sugar. Are you the fun guy or the fun guy? The the punny guy. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> the funny, <laughs> funny guys. But thank you so much for introducing. What an amazing match! I think we've actually we we've, we've been talking about uh, the plays just now and how amazing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, how entertaining as well. So, so yeah, just, to be honest, <laughs> it was uh, very entertaining. Uh, how often would you see the the yeah, I mean the early top character like the thief, the lawyer, the gardener, uh, yeah. even the lucky guy in the tournament? We just saw a lucky guy with a matchup that Eli and Sonia casted, That's and true. he did very well. And now yeah. it's the gardener. Yeah. What's next, lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But you know what? You know what? MX makes me want to sniff Tiger Bow, just to oh. power up. Yeah. But anyway, we're gonna go into our next matchup, right here. It's gonna be SG versus Noor, and NTP is very amused by my Tiger Bow. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, I bought it from Vietnam, so Ooh, <laughs> let's okay, look okay. at the player stats first. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, Pao Pao, yeah, Pao Pao. It's going to be SG Pao Pao and Noah. Uh, I think the spider leg is covering the name a little bit, so... Uh, yeah, um, I, I think it's uh, NR okay, Spidey. Glass, okay, Glass. Glass, okay, yeah, Glass. Um, yeah, I mean, Glass has been making an um, appearance yesterday with the wax artist, and to be honest, he did play very well. Getting mm. a, a tie against the survivor side, and Pao Pao is the uh, second hunter for Sugar aside from Cerberus. Mm. And, Cor you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Pao Pao is from Thailand, right? <coughs> mm, I, that I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I think I think Pao Pao is from Thailand. Yeah, I think Pao Pao is from Thailand. But mm. you know what? It's still it's still a Vietnamese-based team. They have Pao mm. Pao, and Pao Pao has been very very strong. Uh, the bloody queen not just the bloody queen but with the dream witch as well the go-to hunter um yeah so we're gonna be expecting a lot out of uh these two hunters that we see right here um, yeah and to be honest in the situation where you are in the loser bracket as for sugar and noah they want to bring their a game to the table here so yeah. that's why pao pao is it. in the lineup <laughs> and glass is also in the lineup for both sides không, số nhánh thua gặp đội thắng trong cặp trận WP và GS nha các bạn ơi. Còn uh, Ryu sẽ là đội gặp đội thắng trong trận này. Đấy chưa? Noi và Sugar, Ryu sẽ gặp đội này. Nói chung là cái cái nhánh bên kia thì vào top 8 nhẹ hơn. Cái nhánh này vào top 8 nhẹ hơn này. Comparison stats here. Ah, but I'm going to win. I'm going to have to play hard, but I'm Perfect representation there. He does play an amazing enchantress. Uh, I believe an S batch enchantress as well. Yeah, and also uh, an S batch perfumer. Oh, an S batch in my heart. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, the the punny joke continues, but okay, mm. please pardon me. Yeah, and, you see what I have to put up. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, but you love it. Admit it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now there's oxygen from Noir and. Yeah, Cowboy is definitely Oxygen's mm. uh, go-to player, uh, go-to survivor. He does play a lot of Cowboy when you see him. Uh, even in last year's IVC, he plays a lot of Cowboy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. and in IVC this time, Oxygen was the chosen... Ở đâu ra GH là nhánh thắng. GH bị thua ngay trận đầu với Zero 2 rồi. GH xuống nhánh thua từ lâu rồi. Ngay trận đầu luôn. 
Còn bây giờ GH đánh với WP, từ đầu thắng gặp MP. Còn uh, Noi và Sugar đội đầu thắng gặp Ryu. Đấy. Cảm ơn Minh Xuyên nha. Yeah, yeah, so thua ngay trận đầu, nghĩa thua ngay trận đầu Zero Two, Zero Two đang bán chủ luôn các bạn nhìn thấy không? Nói chung là đến mà vòng bốn đội mà trên chung kết đánh thắng kia mà nó xiên BL một cách dễ dàng, tầm này không có ai ngăn được Zero Two luôn. Sugar cấm đi cố tàu và noi chọn thị trấn cho ra ao đấu đầu tiên. Không em ơi, thắng gì hết là được đi Thái á Chúng mà thắng một đội Thái là được đi Thái á Bắt buộc á Thua là đi về luôn Glass is going to go with um, Yo One Spider or and what about Pao Pao? 
Yeah, glass. <laughs> uh, we did see glass going actually going for the wax artist in uh, round one previously. Um, mm. like yesterday he went for that uh, wax artist. So I'm not sure if glass still has something in the artillery, or he has been training the wax artist for a long time because he did get a very great result yesterday with a tie. Mm -hmm. Like that's that usual. We usually see the wax art uh, the wax artist with a three man escape. So he's True. breaking out from the mold there. And yeah. also, you know, Pao Pao plays a lot of meta hunter, so mm -hmm. it's just the battle of the hunter as look of it. Mm. Totally agree with you. And just to add on a little bit, we did see, yes, uh, we did see a lot of wax artists, but yeah, not everything turns out really well. Mai chắc là mình đánh trận cuối á, thì sợ mạng lag tầm đấy là mạng lag nhất luôn. Chán. Nó mai thắng được thì nhẹ nhàng, còn nay thua thì mai phải vất vả. They are in this spot right here, fighting for their tournament lifeline. So yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see what's gonna happen in this round because they're obviously it's Pao Pao that's gonna be spearheading first. So the ace, mm. Pao Pao, how how do you say Pao Pao man? I, Pao 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 Tea. <laughs> I mean Pao Pao. What? Yeah. What's, I, what is Pao Pao Tea? What are you talking about? Okay. I know, I, I made up that, yeah. I mean, what's oh. Boba Tea? I don't know what's Boba Tea, so oh, it's quite okay. kind of, Yeah, so, <laughs> persisting glass, uh, yeah, I have to say Battle of the Hunters. I can see that coming, I agree with you, I can see that coming. Yeah, to be honest, when considering Pao Pao and glass, glass is more into the op meta picks, because we see the spider and the wax artist appearing, while for Pao Pao, mm. it's the dream which the Bloody Queen, the Galatea, like, all of those meta picks so mm. it's just a battle of the meta and the non-meta usually uh the non-meta would be uh you know making the survivors uh, side uh, feel uncomfortable because they haven't deal with that often but mm. uh you would bring much of a better result with a meta character mm. <clears throat> yeah i totally agree yeah, I, I, I can see that this, both these teams are very heavily reliant on meta characters, especially SG. I think they are very um, meta invested, which means that they mm. don't really go off meta. They don't really go off meta. And even when they do, it doesn't really pay off the best results uh, most of the time. But we'll see how they fight uh, this round. Um, yeah, a lot of it is at stake, right? I mean, I mean detectives, uh, the viewers at home right now that's watching, uh, thank you so much for supporting just just a little bit of background story uh, winners <clears throat> are gonna move one step closer into the final four the finals uh the best of the best top four teams that are going to be flying to bangkok for the final offline offline i don't know if i'm supposed to say this but yeah they are gonna be fighting offline we are gonna be offline and then yeah, uh, NTT is gonna be cosplaying as Felipe. I'll be cosplaying no, 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 as. No, no, I'm not sure about that. I'm not I'll, sure about I'll be that. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, nah. I'm not allowing you to climb onto my shoulder. <laughs> uh, climb behind your back, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll... <laughs> With the wig, yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. The stage is set. Like, oh, we are still trying to find the four team to get the ticket to be flying to Thailand for the offline event so it's going to be an, a very exciting uh, event that we are having here for southeast asia mm, yeah i mean i'm really excited uh, to see what's in store i mean especially since the pandemic has taken us by surprise for the past three years we aren't able to travel anywhere uh we're basically stuck at home we uh we have to wear masks all the time so now that we are able to travel and start going to events offline so it's definitely very exciting to see the teams in person. And yeah, thank you so much for Netu for making all of this happen. And of course, we're definitely looking forward to all of you guys coming as well. Please do come. Uh, definitely want to say hi to you guys and, uh, you know, spend time together with you guys. So if you guys are going to be taking, you know, if you guys are around in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, definitely. Yeah, we, we would love to hang out with you guys. <laughs> yeah, whoever comes will get a chance to touch my hair. What? Yeah, there, there you go, Entity. Entity <laughs> is offering his hair to be touched. Apparently, Entity's hair has never been touched before. So, 
So yeah, first person to to first person to to give the perfect compliment is gonna touch MVP's hair when you meet him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's get back into the match now. Um, we have talked about the hunter now. Let's talk about the survivor side of Sugar and Noara. Um, what are your thoughts on the side of the survivor for Noah? Because I see for Sugar, they usually went for their favorite pick. What do I think of Noir? Yeah. Well, well, I think that Noir is also very meta invested. Uh, like Night Owl, he plays a very, very, very impressive uh, priestess support. He also plays. Honestly, they play so many meta characters. It's hard to pinpoint, which is why having a deep character pool is so important. Because, um, according to the bans and picks, it's okay. You ban this, I still have this to go to. So they're not a one trick survivor kind of player. So they can play a lot of characters, which is definitely a, a bonus, in my opinion. And even Sugar Team as well, I like that they are investing more time to pick up new roles. Uh, for example, you, you talk about Sugar Daddy, he's always been known as the person who plays Rescue, he plays Mercenary, he plays First Officer. Uh, but right now he's taking a more active role, like you've seen him play a new character, which we never thought he would play, the mechanic. So. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really uh, good to diversify, I would mm -hmm. think. Yeah, to be honest, <clears throat> it's it's great for the survivor side to you to be able to use lots of other characters because you know the tournament has been increasing over oh, time. Oh, the you went from going uh, with no ban in the early days of the tournament mm. to one ban, then then two ban, and then three ban at the start. So there's not much uh, uh, mm. character pools that you can go around when those band appears so it's like forcing you to use the other character like what you see uh, with the toy merchant picks like that's not meta uh, gotta know <laughs> yeah not meta definitely mm. uh, yeah um, lucky guy gardener like what I said maybe lawyer next <laughs> maybe the thief next who knows we it's full of possibilities and yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what they're gonna do. But you know what? I'm just gonna quickly look at the chat. It seems like something's going on there. You know, um, MPLC Sim. Uh, yep, I'm okay responding. Yeah, uh, hope you are doing well. Hope you're doing well. Uh, take care. Um, yeah, anything. The chat is very supportive, very positive, and full of love. Like, we have something for you as well. Like, let me give you something, Ray. Uh, it's from my pocket. There you go. Aha. So. You didn't expect that, did you? Huh? Okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, but you know what else is here? Double hearts! Did oh you my expect god. This too? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Đây thôi, chúng ta sẽ đến với. Ah. Đùa, ban tổ chức hôm nay làm sao nhỉ? Rồi mới hiện ra cái bảng ban pick xong rồi mẹ lại bắt luôn. Just come and tune in in IDV. You know, enjoy the game with us. And just join in our chat. It's okay. We're we're just here to lighten up the mood. Um, it doesn't have to be all uh, super hundred percent uh, analytical and serious. But we just try to balance things out and just have a good time together with everyone. So yeah, shout out to you guys. Thank you for supporting. And yeah, entity, any shout outs you want to give to the people in the chat? <laughs> yeah, shout out to people in the chat here. Mainly Ellis. Um, who else? M P L C Sim. Uh, mm, that's right. Some person, yeah, some person, 1522. We have eyes in the chat over here. Norton, Compass, Caliper. <laughs> you guys. Uh, round đấu đầu tiên, cặp đấu sẽ nòi và Sugar. Bao bao hôm nay sẽ là tôi đánh chính cho Sugar chứ không còn là Severus nữa. Thiên Chi bị cấm đi. Có lẽ là Sugar nhận ra là hôm qua nòi đánh cái kèo mộ phù thủy với bên Sugar. Uh, Bên bên BL không tốt lắm Thế nên là hôm nay đưa Papa ra đánh một phù thủy nó một trăm Tiền đạo chủ tế sẽ là hai lựa chọn đầu tiên mà Noi lấy Trong trận đấu này Tại sao lại có hai Aurora là sao Nên phía Noi Hai Aurora, hai đi 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 Lại lỗi kỹ thuật rồi Trời ơi not allowing the survivor side to take in that state rescue um, but they still have that forward as the uh, potential rescuer picking the bomb it though so they are trying to pick a Nào, tiền đạo chủ tế bây giờ là ba tender rồi oxygen đó là thành viên thứ ba của bên phía nội thành viên cuối cùng thì sao vẫn đang bị trùng tên magician bị cấm đi 
cấm magician à pao pao đánh gì mà lại cấm magician thế này bên phía noi đang có lựa chọn bartender để khắc chế mọi cú thủy trong cái bản đồ này bây giờ thì cấm nốt magician họ pick giải cứu hay là họ pick một cai tơ đây con nhà côn trùng học sẽ một lựa chọn tôi nghĩ là hợp lý không lấy cho mình là gác mộ rồi một lựa chọn an toàn các bạn sẽ đánh gì madam red rao một rồi madam rao một Madam ra một đến từ Papa. Trận này pick Madam tôi cứ cảm tưởng như đang thấy bên Nhật đánh nhưng mà Madam xuất hiện ở ngay ra một. Tuy nhiên Papa là một top một Madam Red một thời của server châu Á và đây cũng là Hunter Papa đánh tốt nhất. Thế nên có lẽ là vẫn có thể đặt niềm tin vào Pao Pao chẳng Khi mà anh ta được cầm nhân vật mà mình đánh chắc tay nhất Đội hình của bên phía Noi nó cũng khá là ổn Bartender, chủ tế, tiền đạo và các mộ Đây là những lựa chọn tốt để bạn đánh được cả với mộng phù thủy hay là mái đao Nào, round đấu đầu tiên, Madam Red của Papa xuất hiện ở khu vực biệt thự và có hướng di chuyển về cổng cũ. Nay Âu hôm nay ta đánh rồi. Hôm nay đội hình của nó không còn thiếu Nay Âu như ngày thi đấu trước đó nữa. Tôi đang thấy Papa Pao đuổi vào Nay Âu. Nữ chủ tế có cho mình hai chiếc vòng ở giai đoạn đầu trận và đây sẽ là mục tiêu khá là khó truy đuổi dành cho Papa Pao. Nay Âu lên tầng 2 rồi, không gương được. Về căn bản phát này là không gương được. Ok, lừa hướng đến từ Pao Pao. Anh ta không đi lên cầu thang. Gương đặt ra tốt. Rồi, mất luôn một máu đến từ Nay Âu và anh ta đang đâm mặt vào Hunter. Ok, lách ra đây có ván. Xoay gương ra. Muốn một gương hai hit đối phương. Đục được vòng. Đục được vòng rồi. Pao Pao sẽ bị giãn khoảng cách một lần nữa. Tôi đang nhìn thấy Nay Âu có nhánh 12. 3 12 rồi. Có rượu được cho ở trong tình huống này chưa? Ơ. Rồi, noi. Chịu, 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 noi, noi, noi cái gì thế này? Noi và Clover giờ tờ, hiểu không? Noi và Clover giờ tờ. Ôi, rồi, tiền đạo của Oxygen hút lỗi luôn. Tiền đạo của Oxygen hút lỗi trong tiếng này. TDD đang pha rượu. Anh ta cần phải cẩn thận. Hunter có tốc biến. Chỉ có một máy của noi đang được đập mà thôi. Và cài đầu đó là một sai lầm của Nail Và sau đó là Papao đang có rất nhiều lợi thế rồi Tốc biến vẫn đang còn Đắp bổ đao chẳng không Đụng cho mình một chiếc vòng luôn sau khi ra ghế Nail vẫn sẽ gục mà thôi Anh ta không dãy được à anh ta không dãy gì được cả, dùng nhánh 12 cô đã dùng rồi, 60 giây nữa 12 mới hồi. 
Tập này Hunter vẫn đang còn phép Quá khó cho nó Đây là một trận ma đam thắng rồi Tập này là một trận ma đam thắng rồi Oxygen đã mất cho mình Đó chính là nhánh 6 Và bây giờ anh ta chỉ có nửa máu mà thôi Aurora đang phải đi thôi À, nó hôm nay thiếu Kokua Kokua hôm nay không đánh rồi Oxygen Không đâm bóng đi đến từ Oxygen Và đây là một tình huống double down cho Pao Pao Rồi, 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 rồi Noi làm gì thế này Noi làm gì thế này Aurora đang vào ghế Bắt buộc phải cứu được người ra Đào đất xuống luôn Đến từ vị trí của Aurora Tốc biến lên Không bờ block thành công được Không bờ block thành công được bên kia Thì Oxygen được dựng dậy Hunter lộ tốc biến rồi Oxygen có dám ra cover hay không Xoay gương sang Đuổi Oxygen luôn rồi Nao đang đứng, Nao đang xuyên một chiếc vòng sang đây. Phá vòng. Đợi gương, Pao Pao sẽ phải đợi gương. Thách không, vẫn phải đợi gương. Hút bóng vào. Rồi, nhưng đây là một pha hút muộn. Lướt 12 tốt đến từ Nao. Anh ta không đục được vòng đi. Lướt 12 tốt, né đòn đánh nhưng không đục kịp vòng đến từ Nao. Và hút bóng vào một lần nữa. Ui. Vua người xuống rồi, Oxygen lại gục Xong, chịu rồi, chịu rồi này, à, Oxygen đánh thế này, Nayo đánh thế này Thì ai gánh noi đây Kokua đâu rồi, Kokua vào cứu noi đi Wow <cười> Noi đánh thế này thì chịu rồi Noi không hiểu luôn á Tôi đã không hiểu Noi bằng cách nào mà họ thắng TMX ở vòng bảng luôn Để họ lọt từ vào đây mà sao họ đánh cái kèo này như thế này luôn á <cười> Anh quá buồn cười luôn Lướt lỗi rồi. Nói thua bốn mà đam. Noi đánh quá khó hiểu tự dậy đến từ vị trí của đi đi và đây chỉ là một tình huống câu giờ mà thôi sẽ không làm gì thêm được cả và bao tele về khu vực gây xa và có dấu chân của đi đi rồi gương đặt ra ngay giữa người và không có cơ hội cho anh chàng đi đi này nói đánh chán thật sự cai đầu đã lỗi rồi xong rồi lại còn xử lý cứu lỗi nó ông ông oxygen đúng kiểu cái bao cát luôn mà oxygen đúng cái bao cát luôn và cho rượu đầu đã lỗi rồi xong rồi Uh, 4K right there, you can see that none of the survivors have kited past the 60 second mark. Oxygen was the closest. Unreal. That's just unreal. No one able to kite above 60 seconds. Yeah. And the only reason Oxygen has 
uh, 59.5 seconds is because he was spending a lot of the time trying to harass, uh, yeah. trying to get back out off. But uh, ultimately, there was just too many hits given by an, uh, Noir to Pao Pao. Yeah. No, I just give too much chance. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, I don't know why would you keep the Dolphin for healing in the middle of the road where. Ah, thế này cửa đi của Sugar hơi bị sáng này. Bây giờ thắng uh, thắng Noi à? Mai thắng nốt uh, Ryu thế là vào top 4 rồi. Bảy cửa của Sugar có gì sáng hơn cửa của bọn mình ấy các bạn ạ? Cửa của mình có cửa hát đứng đây chấn nhở? Đấy cửa này nhìn đấm được uh, Noi xong vào đấm Ryu luôn. Ui, tỷ lệ top 4 cực cao. Đấy, cửa vào top 4 của Sugar khi cao hơn cả MP ấy chứ. Chứ còn Noi đánh cái này là bỏ tay không không thấy ông Kokua đánh Kokua là top survival á Kokua là đánh với rất là nhiều top survival của Nhật luôn á Mà hôm nay không thấy Kokua đánh Không hiểu Team mình thì sẽ gặp đội thắng trong cặp GH với WP Nói chung là chắc là GH sẽ là đội vào thôi Chứ còn WP thật ra họ có team work đấy nhưng mà hơi non Glass is under a lot of pressure right now because yeah. you had to get um, the equalizer, to be honest, which is the 4K. Um, yeah. It's very tough um, considering the pressure that he's feeling under. Uh, mm. uh, let's look around the side of survival for Sugar. Um, well, it's not impossible. I mm. mean, uh, Sugar team, yeah, well, they, they have a lot of players. They have Beloy, they have Nana, they have Zenny, they have Sugar Daddy, they have um, what's the one person again? Um, yeah, basically they have a yeah. lot of survivor uh, who can who can just swap in and swap out anytime they, they mm -hmm. want. So they they are pretty well rounded. So I I, I think that they have a lot of chance uh, to get at least one or two escapes. So, but again, yeah, Glass is definitely under a lot of pressure. He. Yeah, but honestly, I don't know. I don't know what Glass can play to get a 4K onto Wax SGS. Artist. Wax Artist, okay. Let's go, I mean, guys. That's, Wax what, uh, yeah, that's what he brought um, uh, previously to mm. bring the pressure to the survivor side. Yeah, yeah, that, that can work as well. But, well, SG survivors have to feel very comfortable right now because they don't need to... They, they are under no pressure uh, after the performance of Pao Pao the first half so i think they are very happy now but they have to be very careful not to get too comfortable and then give chance to glass to come back because noir uh if we if we learn anything from experience giving chances giving free hits that's gonna result even if it's not terror shock giving free hits is gonna result in a snowball situation where yeah. hunters are gonna slowly take over the control resources slowly getting less and less and then All of a sudden, you're like, oh my god, no more pads, no more watch. What am I gonna do? So I think yeah, Glass has to bet on that. Mm -hmm. and, and and that's scary. And that's very scary for the survivor side. Where, you know, you got, you got, to be honest, in the lineup like this, you have to have a stable mentor in here, a stable yeah. mentor to go into yeah. the match like this. If that's your true. mentor is shaky, you will have. Um, unreasonable uh, decision. Yeah. Well, I have two things to say to that. Number one, uh, another scary thing that I have to say is, yeah, it's scary that your hair costs ten dollars to buy. <laughs> <laughs> and number two, if you are nervous and you need to shake it off, well, basically you can do the jiggle jiggle dance and you know just laugh together with your survivor teammates and then. Anything that you can do to lighten up the mood because you need to reset. Do something silly. I mean, clown around, do something silly. Don't, uh, the last thing you want to do is get upset, start shouting, sh start 
um, getting mad and upset because that's going to affect your performance for sure. So Noir has to reset. They have plenty of time to do that because. Nào, chúng ta sẽ nhìn cái rau đấu một bên cặp đấu giữa Sugar cùng với đó là Noi. Glass sẽ ra trận với phía Hunter và Tiên Chi là những vật bánh ta cấm đi. Chủ tế cùng với Đính Thuê à? Đây có vẻ như sẽ là hai lựa chọn đầu tiên mà Sugar đưa ra. Ok, cấm mỹ nhân đến từ Glass và thợ máy đã được lựa chọn ra bên nơi khá là khó khi mà họ đã thua 4 ở round đấu trước đó và Glass sẽ phải đánh một kèo đối phương chỉ cần đánh thoát ít nhất là một người tẩm liệm bị cấm rồi cấm nó tẩm liệm của đối phương thì bây giờ con nào để đánh hòa nữa ra có khá là nhiều những lựa chọn để đánh hòa và không một cây tơ đã được lựa chọn đến từ Sugar đó chính là tạp kỹ Colun dành cho Glass. Đây là một lựa chọn hợp lý bởi vì căn bản mà nói thì không có gì để mất cho Noi nữa rồi. Không biết Glass đánh Colun thế nào thôi, chứ còn tôi nói thật là không có gì để mất cho Noi nữa rồi. Họ đã thua 4 ở trong round đấu. Một a. Và bây giờ thì Glass cần gỡ lại 4 điểm đó. Không gì đó, đó là 5 điểm. Thế thì cần gỡ lại 4 mạng của đối phương. Nào, chúng ta sẽ đến với rau đấu 1B Glass đang lăn về khu vực ba ván giữa map Và anh ta đã bắt vào nữ chủ tế rồi Không, không, lăn hẳn về biệt thự Vậy là bỏ qua vị trí nữ chủ tế Chúng ta sẽ nhẹ, đây rồi, đây rồi Quay lại cổng cũ một lần nữa Xe nhẹ Một gai tốt đến từ vị trí của Glass Cái này còn rất dễ lăn hai gai này hai gai luôn rồi Xe nhẹ có vòng Và không lừa vòng được Pha này như định lừa vòng hay sao ấy Chỗ này không ném chát được và hơi khó cho Glass để truy đuổi thành công được Senie. Một đối phương đã đục một vòng rồi, tiếp tục sẽ đục một vòng nữa và pau game. 
Bây giờ Việt Nam lag rồi Mai mà tôi có khi phải đánh giờ này But the idea behind priestess countering breaking will as a kaiser is that when you place a portal, it has to be to force breaking will out of the will form. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like, like what you saw just now, like break will form, portal away. That's what Tenyu did. That's exactly what. Until you force the breaking will to go back into will form, you win because you mm -hmm. waste time. You waste the time for breaking will. So that's the idea. Of, um, that's the idea. That's the idea right there. Uh, behind the logic of picking priestess and it actually counters uh breaking wheel forces him to go back into the form forces him to go uh, and it's just too annoying for the breaking wheel to deal with that because when you go through the portal at the wheel form there's no stunning happen but when you are in human form you have to wait for a while until yeah. you go for the chase again and that just allows the survivor to create distance Dropping uh, the pallet to, you know, separate uh, her from the hunter, and you know it's a priestess, so over time she's just gonna have the portal regenerating time and time again. Mm -hmm. That's not to mention the flywheel effect to avoid the trap. That's true. That's true. Uh, Seni is definitely gonna buy a lot of time right there. The priestess and, and like what you said, the flying wheel as well. Um, yeah, but. Right now, Glass has already gotten two spikes onto Senye. So the moment Priestess runs out of portal, and the moment the Priestess gets caught by the trap, that's a lot of ifs, right? So the moment that happens, uh, yeah, it's going to be an instant down. Doesn't even need a second chase right there. So yeah, Glass off to a good start, getting two spikes. Uh, basically, what Glass needs to do right now is just force... force. Uh, nah, chúng ta sẽ quay trở lại với trận đấu oh, giữa... And, and yeah. Noi và Sugar Tên e đục từ một chiếc vòng rồi Anh ta có vẻ như đang nhận ra một tình huống lừa đèn của Glass Tiếp tục có một tình huống lừa đèn nữa Tên e, ở đây vẫn còn ván cho anh ta Chát trượt rồi Tốc biến sắp có Vẫn đang còn 12 giờ cho Tên e. Và đây là một tình huống khó để cho Glass Một cái chát nữa chính xác thì sao Rồi, oh, chát trượt mất rồi Tốc biến đang có Nhưng mà Tên e vẫn còn 12 Ê, Tên e, Lật ván lỗi Lật ván Ở bên phía Hunter và lăn ván xong ăn tê sốc rồi Ok ok Máy của Sugar chưa thực sự là nhanh UE3 là người đập máy ở giữa bản đồ này Và lập tức Glass có một tình huống Thôi Sugar đắt đi Cùng với đó là lăn theo cái dấu chân của UE3 Chia kiếm Một gai Có muốn về ghế luôn không Về ghế luôn rồi Yeah, but remember it's the mechanics that's running around the map so the decoding progress won't be uh, Đúng găng lỗi. Chắp được quang ra. Và là một tình huống đấm luôn. Ơ, à, thật ra là có thể quang hai chắp quá nửa này. Người lát này có thể quang hai chắp quá nửa này, anh ta hơi vội. Lướt 12 lỗi. Rồi. Nhưng mà Berlin cũng lỗi luôn. Ok, ok. Anh lỗi tôi cũng lỗi. Chúng ta hạnh phúc. Nhưng mà rõ ràng là đây là một tình huống khó hơn cho Glass Đi kiểm soát rồi Anh lỗi tôi cũng lỗi à, Anh anh lướt 12 lỗi thì tôi tốc biến cũng lỗi theo anh luôn Và Bây giờ quay thằng đây đuổi Nana thì hơi nô hốt Lại là một nhánh 12 mới Ôi đâu. Đánh cái này là chết noi rồi, noi chết rồi Yeah, Glass just trying to create pressure here and there, but again... Glass đánh như này là noi chết rồi. À, cái cặp này là cặp uh, Deja Vu. Các bạn biết vì sao tôi lại bảo Deja Vu không? Úi dồi ôi, quả búng găng gì thế này? Búng găng đập vào tường, giật gai tốt. Là robot. Mất robot rồi. Robot nhận vòng xa Rồi <cười> Cái gì vậy hả Sugar Tôi đang thấy cái gì đây Đầu tiên là UE3 búng găng lỗi Sau đó đến là Robot nhận vòng xa của Senye Và lại ông tơ ở bụi này Lại ông tơ ở bụi này Bên kia thì UE3 đang gục Senye Một gai Hai gai Giờ hết 12 rồi nha Hunter biết rồi Giật gai này Lần lên ghế thứ hai của Senye Nana sẽ là người đi cứu Nhưng đây là một điều Hunter đã mắc chiều Thật sự là à. Ủa ông Glass lăn đi đâu vậy Glass tưởng đối phương sẽ đập tiếp máy cổng cũ Nhưng không đối phương đi vào đến ghế rồi 
nhánh 12 của Xenia sắp hồi Máy đang rất nhanh một không chưa được một gai nào cả một gai đổi dạng lướt 12 né cháp được quăng ra đấm luôn không có nhánh 6 đến từ vị trí của Nana Zlat đang muốn lấy mạng Nana luôn rồi có một tình huống đắp bù đao và bây giờ thì đổi dạng đuổi xe nhé nhá sách Nana lên luôn rồi sách Nana lên luôn bên kia Uy Bang được dựng dậy rồi soi ai soi đắt đi soi đắt đi đang hưu biết vị đối phương đang hưu rồi có có thể có một tình huống đục vòng tốt nhưng Senie cứu luôn đã đi chứ à cứu luôn Nana chứ không một gai từ từ nha Senie đang có nhánh 12 anh ta đang có nhánh 12 hai gai trên người đổi ra 12 tốt sau đó là đục vòng nhưng mà bị giật gai mất rồi à, là có một pha xử lý tốt và bây giờ có một thành viên của bên phía nó Sugar bị tàu đâm đó là Nana Nana đi luôn rồi từ từ nhá 60 phần trăm máy cuối Glad đánh được này anh ta có phép bổ trợ rồi và đây là lần ngồi ghế thứ hai của Nana ôi trời ơi tàu đâm tàu đâm máy cuối ở cổng cũ Sugar đã đi đập máy Glad biết điều này anh ta đổi dạng và lăn thẳng sang phía Sugar đã đi con thợ máy này cầm 39 không có nhánh 12 Máy không kịp rồi Ép vui bang cứu luôn không Lăn ngược về ghế Con tự máy này không có những 12 Một gai rồi Quay ngược về bên phía của Nana Nana chưa hồi nhánh 12 Đây là một diễn viên tập kỹ tiếp tục quay lại phía Sugar Daddy Bắt Sugar Daddy là game này đi luôn Cho cho bên phía Sugar này đập lại máy mới Tập này làm sao mà chơi được Sugar Daddy đi luôn rồi Đập máy mới Mất luôn máy cổng cũ Ôi đá máy luôn Sao vội thế cam được cái máy này mà ôi anh ta lăn đi tìm hai thành viên còn lại của sugar luôn hồi máu 30% mươi phần trăm à không đây là không 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 đây là sugar đã đi tỷ hưu hưu trên kia 50% mươi phần trăm rồi sáu mươi bảy mươi hunter lên đến nơi rồi không hưu được nữa đổi ra đó là một tình huống đánh hồi đòn ue bang đi rồi bờ lốc hộ đồng đội nhưng không thành công nana nana mười hai không mười hai kịp sugar đi bốn rồi ôi cái gì vậy đi bốn rồi nana ngồi ghế lần cuối sugar đã đi mất tự dậy như vậy bang đang đang sắp gục với nội tại của lính đánh thuê bây giờ sugar đã đi mất tự dậy rồi không có nhánh 12 hunter lăn về là đời đi rồi thôi được rồi đổi đá máy vội <cười> cũng được anh ta xử lý được anh ta bắt được sugar đã à, anh ta còn bắt được sugar nana rồi giật gai ok luôn mất tự dậy rồi mất tự dậy rồi ue bang đang ở góc của khu vực biệt thự giết bốn cho glad một sự bất ngờ cực kỳ lớn đến từ hunter của noi cô tưởng chừng những cái thế trận này là chỉ có chỉ có toang cho glad thôi nhưng anh ta giết bốn luôn rồi ue bang tự dậy không thể nào kịp được bên kia sugar đã đi không còn tự dậy nữa anh ta làm được gì đây sách hơi xa dậy được thì sao không được, không dãy được rồi. Anh nghĩ chỉ cần lên treo Sugar Daddy mà thôi. Ngồi ghế lần đầu, không thể nào bò ra hầm được các bạn ạ. Thôi đầu hàng đi thôi. Thợ máy. Thôi còn đá cái máy cho nó màu mè nữa. Năm đều. Bò về hầm không kịp nữa. Ông lính thuê mới ngồi lần một thôi. Không, The Last Human là Crocodac. Và The Last Human đã bị loại khỏi giải này rồi nhé. The Last là một người khác hoàn toàn. Rồi năm đều. Yeah. Yeah, it's down to the survivor seems like like which survivor side will not make the mistake first because from what we see in the matchup is usually the hunter that's popping off for both sides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean Pao Pao's BQ definitely can. Pao Pao sẽ uh, buồn rất nhiều. Pao Pao sẽ bòn rất nhiều. 
more tram actions coming on. Uh, okay, I, I think we have... The Dark Demon đánh cho team uh, Riffer Noon em. Nick bây giờ là Crocodac và bị loại rồi. Riffer Noon bị loại ở vòng sơ loại luôn rồi còn không vào được vòng 12 đội cơ. Thế nên The Dark Demon thì cũng bị loại thôi. Đơn giản là không không phải ai không có cho họ đánh mà đơn giản là họ bị loại rồi thôi. Có ông nào bị ban vô thời hạn ở giải C hay là AU à? Đâu làm gì có ai hết? Chính nhất là anh chưa có thông tin nào là có một ai bị ban vô thời hạn ở một cái giải nào đó nhé. Chưa, chưa có. Tính kết quả cặp MP với BL à? MP thua bạn nhé. MP uh, xuống nhánh thua. Gặp người thắng trong trận WP và GS. Đấy. Anh chưa có thông tin nào về một thành viên của bất cứ một một team nào mà lại bị cấm vô thời hạn ở C hay ở IU. Chưa nghe, chưa hề nghe, chưa hề nghe nhé. Có thể là có nhưng mình chưa hề nghe hoặc có thể là không có. Người ta chỉ đồn đại thế thôi. Anh chưa? Mình không biết. Mình bảo là mình chưa hề nghe. Có thể có mà cũng có thể không. Một ông ở Nhật à? Thường thì những cái án ban này nó phải nặng lắm ấy, phải gian lận cái kiểu gọi là nhờ người khác đánh hộ đánh đánh này đánh kia thì mới ban vô thời hạn thôi. Hồi xưa có một cái kèo mà bên bên noi họ tố một người chơi hunter của team lighting là đánh giúp nhưng mà cái đấy thì cũng chỉ team lighting cũng chỉ bị loại và noi được free win thôi. Chứ còn họ không được à, Họ cũng không cấm vĩnh viễn người đó yeah. Hồi xưa có một cái vụ đấy Bên Noi này họ tố một đội Các bạn có nhớ đội LT mà đánh với uh, Đội LT đánh với um, MP ở cái vòng sơ loại IBC năm ngoái không? Đấy đội LT đấy là Hunter nhờ người khác đánh Thế là Thế là chỉ bị đội đấy chỉ bị loại thẳng thôi chứ không bị cấm cái việc mà cấm hẳn ra khỏi tất cả các giải đấu cấm vĩnh viễn đấy nó phải là một cái án nặng vô cùng luôn á à, à rồi 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 cái vụ đền thờ đấy rồi nhưng mà đấy là ở nhật mà mà kia hỏi si hoặc nửa eu tôi tôi mới nhớ là không có cái gì ở cái si hoặc nửa eu đấy đúng không đúng không? Bạn cứ hỏi ở nhật, ở C hoặc là AU mà không có ai bị cấm ấy, kiểu đấy cả. Chắc là đúng là có một ông ở Nhật. Không, nói với Sugar ai thắng gặp Ryu ở nhá. Nói với Sugar ai thắng sẽ gặp đội Ryu, Ryu á. Ryu vừa thua xong á. Ryu số nhánh thua rồi họ ngồi chờ cái trận tiếp theo. Đội nói với Sugar ai thắng sẽ gặp Ryu. Yeah, in the meta yeah. lately so yeah i mean we're not seeing a lot of prisoner honestly i mean uh i just think that as soon as you use up the the shot there's nothing really you can do you, you can't do uh, a rebound, a rebound but the card. thing but the thing is in terms of the decoder lineup prisoner is the only one with the most potential for a long kiting session that she has really? a shock she has a shock uh she, yeah he had a shock he has mm. no debuff on vaulting The only debuff that he has is on the heartbeat, and I don't think in a tournament setting that's gonna do much. But so is so is postman though, like postman. Yeah, yeah. so that's the thing. Yeah, if the postman is, is yeah, if, if postman is banned, I think prisoner should be a great substitution to that, other mm. than the mechanic. That's true. That's true. Unfortunately, no one in SG plays prisoner except me, so, <laughs> and I'm not sugar, so. <laughs> Yeah, I like to be sugar, right. but fortunately I'm no sugar. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, honestly, I agree with you simply because I I I also love the fact that prisoner uh, used to be played a lot as well, but uh, sadly not a lot recently. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's definitely um, a, a good alternative to the mechanic as well. 
like like what you said, no debuffs. Uh, the shock can definitely help, especially reaching the late game. The the cipher transfer is also very good. The hundred and ten percent when you have decoding when connected to other ciphers is also good. So yeah, definitely can help. Uh, but yeah, mm. I mean, nothing much you can really say about their choices. Oh no, I got cơm rồi nhưng mà cặp này chắc chắn có rau ba rồi vợ ơi. They've already been practicing. They're really. Chẳng lẽ vừa ăn vừa xem, vừa ăn vừa cắt. As far as I know, I don't see anyone in Sugar Tea playing anything else. Yeah, uh, and they just to be honest, after that last game. <laughs> it just bring hope into uh, breaking wheel players. Like breaking wheel is still viable in the tournament setting, and sure. and also the comeback of the bloody queen, the time yeah. queen, you're able to get a boss in. So those will be the two characters that potentially the first, the immediate man for the survivor side. Yeah, I mean, I have to say both hunters are doing uh, very well. Pao Pao doing very well, Glass doing very well. So I think it's really up to the survivors to buckle up, yeah. uh, to you know, de-stress, reset, um, and you know, just forget about the bad games in game one. Go to game two. I keep mm. saying the same thing. It's easier said than done, but you have to do it. Oh, hơi đói. Chưa ăn có hai cái bánh giò. Hơi đói. Ability to toughen it out when things don't go as you plan. Tough it out. Tough it out. Reset. You have to be able to be like a robot, sadly. Like crazy doll reset. That's it. You get hit. Never mind. Bring out another doll. <laughs> so, so that's what they have to do now. And honestly, the team that has uh, is able to play more calmly, I think that's a team with the higher chance to get one or two survivors out and potentially change the the significance of the points going into round so, two and three. Yeah, we gonna head into the map and pick up round two here. Arms Factory will be banned and Sacred Hospital. So a shadow ban onto the Breaking Wheel. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I mean they have to. That's mm -hmm. crazy on Breaking Wheel. Uh, Sacred Heart Hospital. What can Glass play here? Spider? Bon Bon? Doctor? I mean, so many possibilities, right? Wax Artist, like what you no, said. Uh, wax Artist. I think a certain person won't be happy. Uh, <laughs> Pikachu. Pikachu. I, I mean, I don't know who Pikachu is, but I know who Ducky is. So, <laughs> yeah. But, but to be honest, the, the wax artist in uh in the hospital isn't that great either because of all those tall war and the um, hospital area. Now in the ruins, you barely can reach a survivor with the wax. That's true. Hide so long there. Uh, I mean. Honestly, hospital. Oh, right so the con Hermit vào server chính nó có cái tâm ngắm cho chiêu mộ đó. Transitions that you can make, like statue, you have two pallets uh, to force the. Anh chưa thử con Hermit sau khi nó vào server thường đấy. Nó có tâm ngắm cho chiêu mộ đó. Mẹ không có tâm ngắm cho chiêu mộ mà bọn nó vẫn con tap được cái chiêu của con đấy à? Thì mẹ bọn nó ghê thật đấy. And then even in the hospital, the worst place for hunter because. Không à? Ôi thế thì mẹ quái vật. Nếu con Hunter làm ra khó chơi vãi cả đái Thế là con Hunter làm ra chơi khó vãi cả đái ra Thế hiểu sao người ta vẫn để đâm vào chơi ạ It depends on which side Hunters will break down first Like they're gonna The survival side will try their best To find the mistake on the Hunter side That's what they are going for it seems like with the uh, second hospital pick here, which is, mm -hmm. as you said, known to be a survivor side of map, like a very survivor side of map. That's true. Because you get uh, like, well, uh, that's a famous quote, like, you get hit, you just run into the hospital. <laughs> yeah. You got <laughs> injured? Hit, yeah, you got injured? Go to hospital. Run. Yeah, go to hospital. Uh, not just in IDV, but in real life as well. <laughs> if you're injured, go to the hospital. So for the survivors, you're injured, go to the hospital to hide longer. Ooh, bless yeah, you. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's ghost. What? I, I just need. Okay, I need tiger balls. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Nah, you, you, go, you go to hospital. No, I don't need hospital. Like every Asian knows, if you're sick, you don't go to hospital. You just, you just, you just take vapor rub or you take tiger balm and you just, you just uh, put it around like, your nose and your head, and all of a sudden mm. you mm. get well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Enough with the joke. 
Fin, 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 fin. Okay, okay. Usually in this match, Princess will be banned. That's usually the case. Yeah, but chúng ta sẽ đến với round đấu thứ hai cặp đấu giữa Sugar và Noi. Một lần nữa sẽ là Pao Pao ra trận từ Sugar và có lẽ Madam Red sẽ bị cấm trong trận đấu này chăng? Uh, Sao tôi lại thấy Sugar Rue Bang trong đội hình của mẹ Nơi này Thì bạn mấy ông ban tổ chức hôm nay lỗi vãi chưa? Mộc phù à xin lỗi Madam Red của Papa bị cấm có lẽ là Papa sẽ đánh mộc phù thủy trong trận này sao? Đây là bệnh viện thành tâm. Tiên tri tiền đạo mỹ nhân và cuối cùng là thợ máy là những nhân vật mà Papa cấm đi. Chủ tế lính thuê tạc kỹ và cuối cùng sẽ là một lựa chọn. Support chắc ông đang còn này không biết là bên nơi có một đánh support không? It's gonna boost the decoding a lot, and can potentially push for one survivor skill at the very minimum. So I think they should definitely take it. Wait, is that better? Wait, wait. I know, I know. Is that better? Yeah, that looks like the better. Yeah. Đánh bóng cho nó. Gây xa không phải là đêm quýt đến từ bao bao trong trò đấu này. Gây xa chấp kèo đánh bóng. Ok 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 Gây xa chấp kèo đánh bóng Các bạn biết rồi đấy Đánh bóng nó vốn là một lựa chọn counter gây xa Nhưng mà Pao Pao đang đánh lựa chọn gây xa này khi đối phương Pick cái con đánh bóng kia vào đội hình Và đây là meta có 12 nha Có 12 đánh bóng nó quấy gây xa còn khó chịu hơn Nhưng mà tất nhiên cũng có một vấn đề Đấy là đầu tiên là con đánh bóng nó phải cai được đã Bạn không thể quấy gây xa khi mà bạn không thể cai được gây xa đúng không? đánh bóng cho đi đi mình thuê cho Aurora tạp kỹ cho Oxygen và cuối cùng là chủ tế cho Nao. Kokuga có vẻ như là không muốn cứu Noi à? Hôm nay Kokuga đánh. Chưa. Nhưng mà chắc chắn rất là như thế rồi. Chắc chắn rất là như thế rồi. ชีสิกส์เอ่อรีสิสตันและเบอร์เซอร์เกอร์บิลด์เอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่
chơi nhau luôn rồi rồi ok vứt bướm đáp lỗi đến từ vị trí của pao pao đi 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 đang có một tình huống gồng bóng và anti đáp đối phương với một tình huống anh ta nhặt được con bướm của pao pao luôn rồi rồi giờ cứ đi ngược thôi giờ cứ đi ngược với lừa đen lừa đen bóng lại được dương lên rồi nào đáp bướm qua và ăn luôn một trái bóng gồng mắc lực của đi 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 phá trái bóng đầu tiên ba gây ra ba sáu phấn khích trong tình huống này nào anti đáp liên tục đến từ vị trí của đi 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 anh ta đang vào được bãi cai rồi máy được đập cho noi một tình huống vứt bướm đát nhảy được cửa sổ sờ vam cửa sổ cực kỳ nhanh lại là bị đối phương rồi anti đáp một lần nữa oxygen đang bốc máy ở ngay khu vực tượng thôi đổi mục tiêu không pa pa không có tốc biến anh ta đát được xuyên qua tường nhưng lại ăn một trái bóng mắc lực nữa không phá bóng quyết định là đuổi tiếp theo đối phương ván được hạ xuống không có góc để đát không có góc để đát xong rồi xong rồi kèo này là pa pa tôi thấy hơi đứt rồi chứ còn bây giờ còn chưa lấy được máu nào mà không cầm tốc biến thì làm sao mà bắt được người đây đi đi một lần nữa là gồng trái bóng anh ta còn một trái bóng ở đây nhảy luôn được cửa sổ ok không mất trái bóng mà dùng được vào địa hình của khu vực bãi cai bóng choáng lách ơi quả bóng đánh trượt rồi nhưng vẫn có cửa sổ cho đi đi con bướm mới đang có cho vị trí của pa pa chưa nhặt lại được trái bóng của mình đi đi hạ ván sớm liên tục giờ sao đát lỗi rồi thôi sao Đi, đi đi vẫn còn nguyên nhánh 12 các bạn ơi đánh bóng cần nhặt lại những trái bóng của mình anh ta nhặt lại hai trái bóng kèo này là bao bao thua luôn đã tốt à không xin lỗi đi đi lướt 12 ăn hít thôi được rồi nhưng ba máy đã xong rồi lỗi một chút xíu cho hunter một tí cơ hội anti đã tốt đi, đi đi nhặt lại được cho mình một trái bóng hunter có phấn khích bây giờ này còn chưa dùng thì làm gì có lúc nào mà dùng nữa đã không đáp lại lỗi rồi Khó. bóng tốt không phá bóng cho được rồi những trái bóng của Dini đang ở rất xa anh ta đang liên tục là Antidat gồng lên để tương tác địa hình nhanh hơn Papa đang muốn làm gì đây có vẻ như là bên phía Noi Dini đã đoán được cái tình huống Hunter không cầm tốc biến rồi bò qua ván nhưng không sao chỗ này không đát được đây đoạn này đoạn này có thể đát được này đát không đát không không đát À đâu có đát nhưng đánh trượt đến từ bao bao Và đi 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 nhảy được qua cái ván cực kỳ nhanh với cái tình huống gồng nộ của con đánh bóng Kích tóc Không được Không 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 đi đi gục rồi nhưng mà anh ta cai luôn phải đến 4 máy rồi các bạn ơi Máy thứ 3 À chứ là máy thứ 4 70% Máy cuối 50% Aurora chỉ việc cứu đơn giản mà thôi Lên tầng 2 đứng chờ bên tầng hai đứng chờ cứu một lần là máy qua tele luôn sang máy của nayo đây là máy cuối của bên phía noi nayo có 12 không anh ta đục một chiếc vòng dậy chết phá ở đây đã được hạ rất nhiều đến từ vị trí của đi đi trong những tình huống trước đó lướt 12 tốt đón đánh trước ván không thành công khi nayo chạy thẳng anh ta vào được nhà hai tầng rồi vứt một con bướm chưa đát được có lẽ nayo nên chịu đón đánh ở đây rồi chịu đón đánh ở đây vòng ngược lại và có thể đục một chiếc vòng ra vòng không lên tầng 2 luôn rồi máy cuối vẫn đang được đập cái từ nòi oxygen là người bốc máy thật ra bây giờ nay ông còn một vòng có thể gọi vòng xa ra cho đi 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 để hồi máu cho nhau cũng được không nhất thiết là phải vội vàng gì trong tình huống này tôi đang thấy đi đi nhặt lại cho mình được hai trái bóng rồi kèo này nòi đánh thoát 4 thì sao hunter đã đổi phấn khích không còn phấn khích nữa đát oxygen nhảy bóng nhưng mà ôi nhảy được bóng thành công hunter ăn trái bóng trắng và lết qua cái cửa sổ máy cuối đang được bốc dư ra đến từ Noi, ok, Noi đang comeback lại trong kèo này khi đi đi làm hết ở trận đấu này rồi. Các thành viên khác của Noi cũng đang thi đấu rất tốt từ từ Oxygen cho đến vị trí của Nayo. Trái bóng đang được đè, trái bóng đang được đè. Oxygen có rất nhiều bóng, đã qua vẫn mất máu cho tình huống này, nhưng không sao cả. Máy cuối 70% phần trăm rồi, tôi nghĩ Oxygen vẫn có thể làm kịp được nhưng mà pao pao sắp hồi lại tele nha noi phải tính toán thế nào đó nếu mà họ muốn thoát bốn đáp lỗi một lần nữa 80% mươi máy nay âu đang di chuyển về khu vực cổng sau tầm này có thể setup cổng xa đi luật ván tốt đến từ oxygen hay chính xác hơn là pao pao tự đâm vào ván máy sắp ram cho bên phía noi rồi và oxygen còn rất nhiều những cái trái bóng của mình đổi sang đi 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 đổi sang đi đi bãi cai không còn nhiều ván đâu đi 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 ơi vào nhà thì sao 
Từ từ, noi, Ram chưa? Máy Ram rồi và lập tức công ty của máy Ram tăng tốc là rất nhiều và teleport đang có cho pha bao cổng xa chưa được set up. Đát bướm vào đuổi đi đi đi. Bóng còn hai trái. Một trái đấm trúng. Đát chưa có. Hầm trận này nó ở từ ở trước nhà nhỏ các bạn ơi. Đát lỗi rồi. Không thể nào tiếp cận được vị trí của đi đi đi. Một trái bóng. Không, vào được ván rồi, chưa cần bóng. Nhớ hồi nhưng mà đây là một tình huống đánh duyên và bốc đi đi là cổng xong này. Hai cổng nó được mở với một tình huống cổng xa từ từ nhá. Từ từ nhá. Đi 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 tự dậy thì sao? Đi đi tự dậy kịp thì sao? Không 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 không, tôi nghĩ vào vào thì nên vào bốc vị trí của đi đi. Giống tay nó để ở đây đến từ oxygen. Tại sao không phải là Aurora mà lại oxygen? À, oxygen còn nhánh 6. Oxygen còn 6. Oxygen còn 6 noi muốn thoát 4. Cảm ơn chân tô nha Cảm ơn chân tô nha
And yeah. Yeah, I am just going to say, uh, uh, yeah, pressure shifted. No longer is Sugar Team feeling comfortable. Right now, it's Noir that has to be very comfortable. Mm -hmm. They reset, and it worked well, perfectly. Yeah, they update the software, and, you know, <laughs> it's, run it's running smoothly now. And it's Sugar that has to adapt to the... To the to the result that they have just faced, which is a three man escape for the side of Noir. So you know, replicating replicating the same result is possible, but it's yeah. quite tough against Glass. Well, we're keeping our hopes up. I mean, anything is possible if Noir can do a comeback like Why? that. Why? Ông đội được làm uh, yeah. skin súng với cả skin trong PUBG này. Càng. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would suggest uh, drinking Ding. 100 plus or Red Bull, like what NTT likes to drink. Mm. And yeah, for all of you at home as well, uh, if you are also as speechless as us and as excited as the game, don't forget your drinks though, because you know, mm. uh, it's very easy to forget. Mở bán một đợt duy nhất. Quan hay mẹ. Đang đánh thù à? Vậy còn mở bán một đợt duy nhất. Okay. What I say. Uh, yeah, glass. Now considering glass. the meta, glass. Um, in hospital? Wax artist. <laughs> I, I think if, if he goes wax artist, the, the, the fact that it's uh, yeah. But the thing is, the fact that it's uh, the hospital, I doubt Sugar would go for the ban onto the breaking wheel because it's a shadow ban immediately. Uh, so they wouldn't have to waste the ban onto the breaking wheel. Ban the sculptor then. Ban either sculptor or the bond mm, or wax artist because they cannot afford. A draw right now. Then where are you? I'm in PUBG. Then 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 fan page chính thức của PUBG. Để xem. Vừa đăng tin luôn á, hai tiếng trước á. Fan page chính thức của PUBG. Sớt trên YouTube ra. Nào, chúng ta sẽ đến với round đầu 2B cặp đấu giữa Sugar và Noi. Tiếng Sugar vô của Noi vừa có một trận thắng ba. Nhóc dìu của Glass bị cấm đi Anh ta cấm chủ tế cùng với tiên tri ở trong trận đấu này Ở thợ máy Và mỹ nhân là hai lựa chọn được ưu tiên đến từ bên phía Sugar Luôn luôn đầu tư một lượt cấm vào Luôn luôn đầu tư một lượt chọn vào con thợ máy Đến từ Sugar Is this something we don't know? Like they don't want the forward? I mean, you have Bang play forward, right? So, what's the logic of not? Glass sẽ cấm gì đây? Mỹ nhân là chắc là sẽ dành cho Senie. Còn tội máy cho vị trí của Sugar đã đi. Cấm linh đánh thuê rồi. Gravekeeper or first officer? Okay, so yeah, thank you, Chiao Chiao. Glass is an ass. Tiền đạo được lựa chọn rất nhiều sở tân nơ trong trận đấu này đến từ bên phía Sugar. Yeah, they really did their research right here. Tấm tạp kỹ thì sao? Tôi nghĩ là Glass đang muốn đánh cho mình con sáp Anh ta cấm tạp kỹ rồi Bây giờ nếu mà Nana pick ra con đào vàng Thì đây sẽ là một đội hình toàn sở tăn Và Glass đánh sáp là cực kỳ hợp lý luôn Sáp 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 Rồi Mỹ nhân tiền đạo và đào vàng Ba con Stunner đối với con sáp Nào If I have to choose between Wax Artist and Galatia, I would opt for Wax Artist because Wax Artist, we have potential to kite more. Yeah, we have yet to see the you know the ultimate Wax Artist use in the tournament right now. So it so it's exciting to see more and more hunter players utilizing these characters, and also you know from the look of Survivor Cry here. They go for a lineup that can counter the breaking wheel. Yeah. But then the hunter bring in the wax artist and the wax artist capitalize on the survivor stunning to get the wax code on the survivor. 
Các bạn có nghe uh, giọng của NTT đang bị echo uh, Đây là đến giờ lag của Việt Nam đấy các bạn ạ. <cười> lag từ Discord đó. Ôi, ngày mai mà phải đánh cái tầm giờ này thì mệt lắm. Tiền đạo cho UE3, mỹ nhân cho Senye, thợ máy cho Silver Dutty và đào vàng cho Nana. Nghệ sĩ tự sát di chuyển thẳng vào trong khu vực nhà và Sugar Daddy hình như vừa thả robot ở đây chăng? Không, anh ta thả robot ở khu vực trước nhà nhỏ, cửa vào nhà cửa vào nhà lớn trước nhà nhỏ. Ai đang bị đuổi đây? UE3 đang bị đuổi rất nhiều sát, có lẽ là bị ép bóng rồi. Ôi, nó đánh trượt, đâm bóng đi được UE3. Người ta cai ngược vào trong nhà một lần nữa, nhưng mà rất nhiều sát rồi. Đấm luôn không? Tiếp tục là đấm trượt đến từ Glass trong tình huống này. Anh ta đang ép được rất nhiều bóng đến từ UE3, gần như là hết sạch bóng luôn rồi, nhưng mà lạc hướng. Rồi, lạc hướng, lạc hướng luôn. Lạc hướng trong nhà rồi, chặn đầu trong nhà, nhưng không biết hướng di chuyển của đối phương. Các thành viên của Sugar đang chạy vị trí. Tiền đạo không còn bóng nữa rồi. Tiền đạo sẽ thành một decoder, trận đầy trang Senie và Sugar Daddy đang cùng ở khu vực bãi cai. Gặp Senie. Hình như là Glass nhận ra còn một người nữa rồi, cửa sổ được khóa lại. Không, chưa khóa lại, chưa nhận ra ở đây là thợ máy và vẫn đang muốn đuổi Mỹ Nhân. Sáp. Ok, 25 sáp trên người Senie, anh ta lật được ván Hunter rồi. Khá là khó cho Glass trong tình huống này. Cầm 62 à? Cầm 60 à? Ôi, đập máy luôn đấy, tôi xuống Glass đi. Ôi! Chịu. Chịu, 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 chịu. Ok, đồng đội đang cai ở bãi cai, bạn thợ máy, bạn đập máy luôn. Tôi không biết phải nói gì hơn nữa. Tôi không biết phải nói gì hơn trong tình huống về tình huống này. Sáp có thể sẽ được ném ra để chặn cửa sổ. Rồi, đi. Đi. Ui, khó hiểu. Khó hiểu thật sự. Đồng đội đang canh ngay cạnh người bạn. Bạn là thợ máy, bạn, bạn đứng đập máy tỉnh bơ luôn. Thật luôn á. Bây giờ thì UE3 không còn một chút bóng nào cả, lục được cho mình một cái găng tay. Có lẽ là vẫn sẽ là anh ta đi cứu trong đợt 1 này và Glass cầm 69 chứ không phải là... Ủa, anh ta phá ván khá là nhanh nhưng mà chiêu sao anh ta mắc nhanh đấy nhở? Ừ, hình như là có nhánh chín thật. Senie đang di chuyển từ khu vực tượng qua, bắt hướng Senie luôn rồi, quá nửa vị trí của Sugar Daddy. Không, bang không, bang không đến, bang đang vẫn đập máy. Vậy thì quá nửa Sugar Daddy rồi, bên phía Sugar muốn đánh, họ muốn rớt máy trận này và hiến Sugar Daddy sao? Vẫn chưa qua đi di chuyển cả, vẫn đang ba máy dùng, vẫn đang ba máy dùng. Glad, anh ta nhận ra điều này rồi, anh ta quay ngược lại ghế trách không có dấu tay. Tầm này Glad nên biết là đối phương không cứu kịp. Một máy đã hết dùng Một máy đã hết dùng bắt hướng vào đến từ Glass Dù E3 đang di chuyển từ vòm ra Dù E3 đang di chuyển từ vòm ra Không có ai ở đây nữa do hiến người đánh hòa Đến từ Sugar Tele đi Máy ở khu vực trước nhà nhỏ đã có Đã buông ra trước đó đến từ Nana Một mạng nữa thôi thì Glass sẽ có cho mình chiến thắng Giúp tim mình có chiến thắng ở round đấu thứ hai Và vươn lên dẫn trước Vợ ăn rồi à? à thì tí xong anh gọi nhá Nana đang bị truy đuổi ở khu vực nhà nhỏ Anh ta đang muốn làm choáng Hunter Sát được vứt ra Ok 70 sát trên người 70 sát trên người 80 sát trên người 
Có đòn đánh Máy chưa prime được Ở đây có hầm không Ở đây có hầm không Có hầm Vậy đây là pha cam hầm đến từ nghệ sĩ tượng sáp Mắc Chiêu Cam hầm từ nghệ sĩ tượng sáp Mắc Chiêu Ôi lát hơi dại cho pha này nên sách vào ghế sau ghế cuối cùng luôn Ai sẽ là người đến cứu Xenia chăng hay là UE3 UE3 bị phát hiện phương hướng rồi Sáp được bắn Vâng 20, 30 sáp 30 sáp khóa máy Khóa máy không Búng găng tay vào đến từ UE3 Sáp nóng được đổi Ơ ờ, máy chưa khóa à Ờ, đấm luôn nhỉ? Ủa 93 sáp mà ông ông nội Glass Ông nội Glass 93 sáp mà ông làm gì vậy? Đau đầu thật Đuổi UE3 chắc Có mắt đỏ đến từ vị trí của Glass Rất nhiều Rất nhiều sáp đang được ném vào vị trí của UE3 luôn Không chạy đi đâu được rồi UE3 sẽ gục Cổng trước đang được mở Không còn sáp chiêu 2 để khóa lại khu vực cổng trước rồi Glass sẽ làm gì đây? Tele về khu vực cổng sau Không có ai ở đây Nana đang chạy về khu vực cổng trước Vậy ít nhất sẽ có hai người thoát cho bên phía Sugar Sách UE3 lên treo về nhà nhỏ Sẽ là một tình huống mà bên phía Sugar không thể cứu nữa Ok Glad Anh ta hoàn thành mục tiêu của trận đấu này là ít nhất giữ được hoa Ôi ông Glad xử lý lỗi đấy Quả đấy bắn sát mấy chín mươi mấy mà đã đấm rồi Thế thì dễ quá Mà ông ấy còn không khóa cái máy lại cơ Rõ ràng là máy trước nhà nhỏ bạn vứt một cái sát ra bạn khóa máy lại Bạn đấm UE3 là xong các bạn xin sát rồi ba bạn đấm rồi ba là xong ít nhất là phải khóa cái máy lại chứ có lẽ làm kịp mà làm kịp có khi là tháng 4 luôn đó vậy là năm ba tôi chỉ thấy đau đầu là tình huống senie đang cai tốt ở bãi cai hô su đã đi đứng đập máy tỉnh bơ chịu đau đầu Chính ra ông Senie đang cai tốt Ông Senie đang đang câu được rất là nhiều thời gian Sọ bắt đầu có rồi Xong rồi uh, hai cái ván lật Xong rồi kiểu Hunter chưa lấy được một máu nào Hunter chưa lấy được một máu, một máu nào Xong tự nhiên kiểu quay sang thấy con thấy tiếng đập máy đúng không? Chắc là nghe âm thanh trong game Lướt qua thấy, ôi dồi nguyên ông thợ máy đang đứng đập máy ngay cạnh mình luôn thôi, dí luôn, chết chắc cay được khoảng 20 giây. Khó thật sự luôn đó, không hiểu luôn. Hunter lỗi đầu game ép được hết đồ của Fawak ra xong đó là mất dấu Fawak Rồi về bãi cai đuổi Mỹ Nhân Không đuổi được, đang đang bế tắc thì tự nhiên lại thấy một quả Quà trời cho đó Đánh như lõi của Tiên Minh là gọi là quà trời cho Đau đầu thật Uh, or somewhere far away like the forest area um, mm. and let the Sen let Senia do the carding let the enchantress do the carding because that's a her uh, that's a to be honest, nói chỉ cần ít nhất một ván một cái rau hòa tổng đó ba nữa thôi họ sẽ là người chiến thắng personal skill in stunning yeah, yeah but tôi là đánh con sáp tôi cũng cảm thấy chưa ổn lắm lát đánh con sát không ổn lắm chưa tới đánh chưa tới Yeah. Because BO3, that's the deciding factor right here. <laughs> deciding and factor. Yeah, I think it's 
to be honest, you have a point. Like the mm. point deficit is only two points, five to three. Yeah. So in round three, they still can come back. But... Yo. Oh. Okay. Power taking a power break and. Power taking a power break. Power taking Okay, so Cerberus will be the one determining the fate of Sugar. I will say that. Yeah. In the the lineup. fate of the world. <laughs> yeah. Unless, yeah. unless if in the first half they get a four, four, uh, they get a five zero, then honestly, whatever happens in the second half, it's not gonna matter anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So who do you think should go first? Like for. SG, survivors uh, go first, or uh, more... Hunter should go first. More. SG, the Hunter, Hunter should go yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. Cerberus should go first. But it's the problem with the map. Like, yeah. which that's, map not up, that's not up to SG though. For? Yeah, that's not up to... I'm not sure who it is up to. I think Noir is gonna choose. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no Noir is gonna choose the... Wait, what? SG chose Sacred Heart, right? SG uh, chose second yeah. heart. SG yes. chose second heart. Okay, so that means Noir is gonna choose the next map, and SG is gonna choose the faction. So yeah, great. They can send Cerberus out first to make an impact, um, and hopefully help. Đây là đang cặp cuối vậy nhá, cặp Sugar với Noi. Whichever map is being picked, Nikki will be the one happy about every uh, picks here because Nikki can play so many, so many hunter in the glass. Middle. Yo, bro, it's a glass. <laughs> Nikki, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, go, yeah. You thinking um, about Nikki, huh? Yeah? <laughs> I'm getting dreamy, sorry. You thinking about Nikki, yeah? yeah Nikki, so, shout out to you. Yeah, shout out to uh, Nikki. Yeah. Hashtag. But it's a uh, glass here. Um, I'm not sure if they are going for the ban onto the wax artist, to be honest. Well, yeah. It's our factory, and the wax can lock the window and the pallet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But. There's so many tall walls that Wax Artist just doesn't do right well. Like well, in, the, in the previous game, Wax Artist just had a hard time chasing that enchantress until the mechanic make uh, herself present in the game. That's true, that's true. Well, it didn't work out for SG that time, like getting a two, two man escape instead of a three man escape that they needed to draw the game. So, yeah, whatever it is. Uh, it's still very winnable. Two points mm. difference. Yeah, as long as uh, SG uh, doesn't allow themselves to get a zero five in the first half, oh, then yeah. everything is good. Everything is good. As long as it's not a zero five. Oh so, yeah, Noah is the one picking the map. So Sugar is picking the faction. So I'm not sure what they are going for. Um, but the optimal thing to do is getting Cerberus fresh out of the. Um, um, Switch off from Pow Pow to, yeah. to get the hang of the game. To get a hang of the game. Yeah, but Cerberus is usually. We usually see Cerberus in game one, game two, right? So mm -hmm. usually it's Pow Pow who comes in in game number three. But this time it's the other way around. Pow Pow comes yeah. in game one, game two. And, hmm. and also a very smart uh, map pick from the side of Noah. They picked Arm um, Factory, banning, shadow banning the breaking wheel from Cerberus. Yeah, and shadow ban. now and now with the usual ban could be Bonbon Galatia ban and for Cerberus to go for other wax characters. <laughs> Please don't <laughs> wax on, wax off. <laughs> shout yeah, but, out to Posh Spice. <laughs> yeah, shout out to you, my man. If Posh Spice is uh I don't know the, the name of the Sifu, but yeah. Anyway, wow. oh Miyagi. Yeah, if Posh Spice is Miyagi, I'm Daniel. Which is true. <laughs> if I'm Miyagi, then Posh is Daniel. But anyway, wax on, wax off. Um, Cerberus does play wax artist as well. Yeah. But like what NTP mentioned, not a really good spot to be. Yeah, at. wax artist is just a, a tie hunter in the lineup. But obviously, maybe that's, maybe that's what they need. They just need a tie, and then Sugar Team comes in with the three man escape. No, not possible, right? I think they are counting on Cerberus to get the yeah. point. Yeah. Because yeah. that's. That's the change for um, Cerberus. Who can he play? Because I, I have seen him risking playing the breaking wheel in the arms factory, and it doesn't turn out well. Uh, he yeah. could be, you know, trying to redo that. 
mm. risking risking the uh, matchup with the breaking wheel in the arms factory. Well, could be. Yeah, and speaking about glass also. Yeah. Uh, you have yeah. A glass of, <laughs> <laughs> a glass of water. <laughs> I'm just kidding, man. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, ban the wax artist, ban the X boy. The map pretty much shadow ban the uh, breaking, breaking wheel. wheel. So, what else can Glass play? Bon well, bon. Gala. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, well, a lot. He can still play, yeah, like what you said, Bon Bon, Gala. Uh, who knows? Um, one of these two are definitely a very possible 4K uh, hunter, especially Galatea. So, it really depends, but maybe they won't ban the Wax Artist because, like what you said, it's not really dependable. Oh, 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 oh. No, 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 no. Yeah. Đói lắm rồi các bạn ạ. Ăn dưa hấu vào còn không no được. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, oh. but you know what? Let's just look at the chat for a moment. Yeah, it's been a long game, very exciting. So what do you guys think in the chat? Uh, Chu, um, shout out to you, my man. Elise, LMP Stan, and Evie, my latest bestie. Hello, Evie. Nice to see mm -hmm. you here. AJ Rose, yeah. shout out to you as well. Kill TT, yeah, TT is your fan. He, he, I think TT wants to buy your hair. <laughs> I'm not yeah, really T. sure. TT is the one that's the I want to, <laughs> yeah, to buy, to buy yeah. your hair in the audience, right? <laughs> My god, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Papa Norton as well. Uh, shout out to you, Chew as well. And yeah, a lot of people making some noise. Wafuru as well. Shout out to you. Well, yeah, I just want to say, uh, let's just let's just uh, enjoy tournament as well um, yeah you all have your own preferences but they are playing to win and the strategy involves playing hunters that they feel that they can win with so don't be surprised if you see a certain character multiple times mm -hmm. and yeah I mean wax artist is not something you see every day but definitely very very wow. playable like what you've seen just now um, yeah very useful to get a draw like a, a very oh. strong yeah, but I'm still thinking about oh, wax artists in arms. Are they? Uh, 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 is Glass going to risk it? Because you know the previous game is quite close. But I doubt the survival side of Sugar is going to use the mechanic once again. Yeah. Are they gonna go for the full-on support team or cutting team? Because uh as we mentioned earlier when you harass the wax artist you have to deal with the 25 percent wax code that he bring on to the stunner mm. then don't then don't stun him <laughs> yeah then don't stun so don't you have stun. to go so there yeah, that's the thing you can go for a full-on kaiser lineup with the patient the acrobat um or even for the rescue yeah even the perfumer senior can play perfumer but the thing yeah. about the wax artist is that you don't want the wax artist to get the max present. That's when he he uh, he accelerated that uh, camping the chair. He can That's freeze true. you in front of the chair and then use hot wax to uh, get the hell all, all of you. Yeah, but well, you can't really be worried about um, presence, especially if you're kiting. If, I, I mean, if the hunter is max present, but you only got the perfumer down after three cipher kite. Well, basically, it's still a good thing for the survivors, right? First chair, two ciphers remaining, I think that's still a good thing. Uh, it really depends though. Like for ZT, you saw what happened with the Gardener. Guys, if you missed the game just now, ZT versus uh, Ryu, uh, mm -hmm. MX actually brought out Emma, the Gardener. And basically, Gardener was also giving free hits to ZT, right? Now, Really nhưng mà sửa vũ khí các bạn ạ, sửa vũ khí cho Roba và Glass là tôi đánh trước. Nhưng nếu mà Glass có cho mình một trận giết 4 thì cặp trận này sẽ kết thúc luôn. Còn nếu mà anh ta để thua thì cơ hội sẽ quay trở lại cho Sugar. Còn hòa thì chúng ta sẽ phải chờ cái round đấu 3B. Tiên tri, mỹ nhân, thợ máy là ba nhân vật mà Glass cấm của đối phương. Thả hết từ lính đánh thuê cho đến tiền đạo cho về phía Sugar. Có muốn đánh hai nhân vật này hay không này? Đấy luôn cặp đôi giải cứu có lẽ sẽ là một lựa chọn tôi nghĩ là ổn là sử vũ khí Và chờ theo đối phương ban cái gì tiếp Ừ, 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 ừ
nhóc dìu cùng với Galati bị cấm đi thả sát đến từ bên phía Sugar thả sát Glass liệu có đánh được hay không đây Thương sư được pick sớm đến từ bên phía Sugar Vậy là có cấm Tiền đạo đang được thả đây Bên phía của Glass có muốn cấm tiền đạo không? Pick sớm hương sư Cấm, cấm nữ vũ công Một lượt cấm mà bên phía Sugar chưa bao giờ chơi Vậy thì tiền đạo đang còn không lấy tiền đạo mà tạp kỹ mới là lựa chọn mà Sugar đưa ra. Well, can be bon bon, can be can be bon bon, can be um, bloody queen. Does he even play bloody queen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we're 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 <laughs> we just have to oh, see. magician. Because, yeah, magician perfumer. <laughs> the highlight of this this team. Oh, oh the arrow. Ma thuật sư. Và môn đồ đang là lựa chọn mà Glad nhá pick trong yeah, trận đấu này. Rồi, ok Ma thuật sư Tạp kỹ hương sư Ok, kèo này thật ra là vẫn chơi được Môn đồ dành cho Glass ở trong trận đấu này Đây là một đội hình khá là khó chịu đến từ Sugar Ba nhân vật có khả năng tự cài Hương sư Ma thật sư và con diễn viên tập kỹ Điều đó những vật có khả năng tự cài Và Sugar Daddy thì cầm cho mình là một nhân vật giải cứu chính cho Sugar Đó là lực nhân thuê Nào, chúng ta cùng chờ thêm môn đồ thay là Glass sẽ thế nào ở cái bản đồ sửa vũ khí một tình huống thả mèo Dash sau đó là nổ mèo đến từ chữ Glass ở giai đoạn đầu trận để thu hẹp khoảng cách Các thành viên phía Sugar đang chạy vị trí Khá là nhiều người đang ở nhà máy Khá là nhiều người, khá là nhiều thành viên của Sugar đang ở khu vực nhà máy Senie đứng lại ở khu vực cổng trước này Vậy là anh ta sẽ là người cai đầu rồi Mèo được thả Ôi, trượt mèo rồi Nổ luôn con mèo Tịt nước hoa và hạ ván xuống đến từ Senie Vậy là nước hoa đầu của anh ta đã mất Cái cửa sổ chặn rồi mà tại sao Glass lại còn đi vòng như thế này đây Mèo lại trượt Ôi, 
Lướt 12 Ok Mèo trượt nhưng mà lướt 12 Không bách lại đến từ vị trí của Senye Anh ta đang ở một địa hình khá yếu ở khu vực giữa bản đồ Tốc biến sắp có cho Hunter Ui rồi Ông Glad Chịu đấy có hit đánh dành cho Glass Ôi trời rồi, coi như tốc biến vẫn lấy được Vẫn lấy được máu của đối phương Thôi được rồi, ba hướng nước hoa đã không còn Mèo được thả Nhảy cửa sổ đến từ xe nhé Hát mèo đến, có choáng Và đây là một tình huống hạ gục được người khá sớm Hát người khá sớm nhá Yue Bang đang ở đây Thách người ra khu vực giữa nhà máy và bao cát Đến từ vị trí của Glass Máy của bên phía Sugar rất chậm Máy của bên Sugar rất chậm Thật ra thời gian ca của Senye khá lâu đó Có lẽ là phải được 60 giây Nhưng mà Tại sao máy lại chậm thế này Thấy Sugar đã đi rồi Cắm mèo về Cắm mèo về Quán nước ở thì sao Ồ, oh, đấm luôn à? Ông này bị làm sao ấy? Bình tĩnh xem nào Không có xuyên ván Không có xuyên ván Sẽ nhảy được vào trong khu vực nhà máy Tuy nhiên thì mèo choáng kịp rồi Mèo choáng kịp rồi Ba máy sắp xong rồi Sugar Nhưng người đầu tiên của họ sẽ lên ghế lần thứ hai Daddy đang muốn hoàn thành chiếc máy ở khu vực nhà máy này Mèo được thả ra, anh ta cần phải cẩn thận Cắm mèo về máy Không đập máy nữa rồi Xe nhe sẽ bị treo lên ở khu vực nhà máy này một lần nữa Tuyệt bang đang bốc máy ở khu vực cổng trước Ai sẽ là người vào cứu đây Nana đang ở đây rồi Nana đang ở đây Glass chưa phát hiện được vị trí của diễn viên tạp kỹ Mèo được thả ra Bây giờ thì nhìn thấy rồi Cắm mèo về Bóng đỏ đang được gồng Bóng đỏ Choáng Ôi không được không được không được không được không được Nhưng mà không có nhánh 6 Thì bây giờ Senie bay luôn Thiếu một máy mới đến từ bên phía Sugar Chính xác hơn là cái máy cuối của họ là 30% Nên đập được hay không thì chúng ta chưa thể nào mà khẳng định Ở trong tình huống này Một máy cuối thôi Hai người nửa máu của bên phía Sugar Yue Bang đang ở khu vực cổng trước Anh ta cần cai được cái giai đoạn mà đồng đội hồi máu này Nổ mèo không Có dấu tai Ván ở đây đã được lật khá nhiều Glass kiếm sai hướng rồi Đây có dấu chân Yue Bang Yue đang, đang đầy máu nhưng Hunter có tốc biến Cùng với đó là mèo đã mắc chiêu Mèo Ôi ôi mèo thế này và dùng gậy tốt đến từ vị trí của Yue Bang Glass, anh ta mất dấu rồi Tuyên ván không thành công Phá ván nhanh Cần ép những cái gậy của Yue Bang ra Tôi nghĩ Glass đang cần làm vậy Hai người kia hưu nhau xong rồi Gậy tốt Ôi dồi, ôi dồi. Tê nó sốc Thôi 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 Xin lỗi vì đã khen Yue Bang tốt Xin lỗi vì đã khen Yue Bang xử lý gậy tốt Mù mắt Mù mắt Cái gì vậy trời Mù mắt Ở bên kia Nana đang bốc máy Đó là máy cuối của bên phía Sugar ờ, Bây giờ nếu Sugar đã đi mà nổ máy Cái máy nhà máy này Anh ta sẽ bị bắt hướng Bắt hướng từ rất xa và bắt hướng nguyên cái map luôn Bên kia máy đang rung, Glass có thể nhìn thấy máy rung trong tiếng này Bắt hướng Sugar đi, có 3 chiếc găng tay Mèo đang hồi lại dành cho anh ta Búng một găng lỗi Lại là mèo lỗi Ok, mèo được thả Phải búng găng tiếp rồi Đáp mèo về Nổ mèo luôn Ok, máy đã xong cho BP Sugar Nhưng mà Yue Bang quá nửa rồi Đấm luôn Sugar đã đi Còn hai găng tay cho Sugar đã đi trong tình huống này Đi theo Sugar đã đi chắc không anh ta theo Yue Bang rồi Mèo đã được thả Máy có thể ram cho Sugar khi mà Yue Bang gục xuống Cắm mèo Chưa cắm mèo Cắm rồi và sau đó là hạ gục Ram máy là chóa Tôi thấy mà 
qua máy là choáng quả này là một tình huống rất tốt của glass anh ta cắm mèo sau đó đánh tường bay luôn bay luôn vị trí của ue bang rồi cổng trước đang được mở nana đang bị kẹt lại ở khu vực nhà máy từ từ nha glass anh ta đoán sai hướng rồi đối với không hề về cổng sau không về về cổng sau glass bắt sai hướng rồi nana đang đâm thẳng về cổng vẫn sẽ là một trận đấu hòa ôi xử lý pha hay thế xong lạc ạ ôi xử lý pha mèo hay thế mà lạc rồi thoát hai cho mình phía chua nhưng mà hunter của họ sẽ phải thắng ba trở lên trong cái kèo đấu ba b There was actually two and a half ciphers, Kai. Uh, it's just that it wasn't primed, and and very unfortunate that Sydney didn't die far enough from the last cipher in the factory. Otherwise, could have been able to prime it much faster, and Masumi could be somewhere else decoding a new cipher. Không, pha xử lý anti prime đoạn cuối hơi bị hay. Nhưng mà anh ta anh ta kiểu tính sai cái việc mà đối phương sẽ mở cổng như thế nào? Chẳng nghe anh ta nghĩ có tập kỹ để chạy về solo cái cổng cổng sau. Còn đấy treo được theo cái con ma thật sự lên xong phải bắt ngay vào cổng trước chứ đúng không mọi người công nhận không kiểu chẳng nghe là anh ta nghĩ con acrobat sẽ chạy về mở solo cổng sau à của acrobat làm gì có acrobat là đam mê mở cổng thế very long hiding session it's just unlucky as you said that he that, that the perfumer died near the cipher at the factory hmm. yeah <sighs> i'm just thinking like what cerberus could be playing i'm sorry my mind is just wandering towards what cerberus can play to get four k yeah i'm still cheap. thinking about that yeah uh, they're definitely gonna ban his um his uh um, what's that Yeah, bon bon, uh, and even the guarantee. So, what happens then? Uh, what can Cerberus play then? Because Cerberus, we've seen Cerberus on the Wax Artist, uh, but I doubt that he's gonna go there. It's not a 4K hunter, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like again, uh, Colin breaking wheel again. Um, too much risk, right? Yeah, too much risk, right? Too much risk. Too much risk. Uh oh, X boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who knows? Okay. I mean that's a 4K hunter, but I'm not sure if Cerberus can play X Y at all. I uh, yeah. I thought he was the one who got 4K. No, uh, it's a was... Porter. It's Porter. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry, I got mixed up there. But yeah, yeah, this... yeah you are the same as me. Oh well, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Cerberus. You're thinking of Sneaky, so that's different. Yeah, different and people. look at the yeah, look at the total point here. <laughs> 10 to 12, so the potential for a tiebreaker is immensely great. So yeah, well, let's not jinx it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. It's very, uh, it's very, very possible uh, that it can be a 3K in favor of Cerberus. But seeing how well Noir Survivor has in, uh, played in game number two, um, they could easily go for a draw. And if they go for a draw, ultimately, they still win. Mm -hmm. They just have to get a draw. I, I, I think it's very, very possible to do. Especially since they have two hunter bans now, so if they ban Subras the top two hunters, well, uh, nothing much Subras can really do, right? At that point. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm still thinking of a potential character that Subras can use. Um, to think that he would risk playing Breaking Wheel again in the in in, in the Arm Factory. Mm. Uh, it would be. Uh, still quite tough because we did went over this once Cerberus did play Breaking Wheel in um, Factory once and it doesn't turn out very well for Cerberus yeah well we'll just have to see right because now well this is the potential decisive match I think I think Noir has to be sweating in their seats right now SG definitely has to be sweating in their seats right now as well because ah tonight uh It's it's time to say goodbye to one of these teams, and so yeah. much is at stake. Like, basically, basically, you 
it, you're so close to yeah, going to, to top honest, four. Yeah. Look at the points. Like, it's so close to each other. Like, they, they basically had the same level of skill for both sides. Yeah. So, neck yeah, and neck. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's just battle of the mental strength, to be honest. Like, which side has a better uh, resistance to strength um, on the survivor side and the hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we'll just have to see. Like, what are you guys thinking in the chat as well? I mean, I can just see uh, amazing cats through and through. Like, you can see that uh, Double Down is going on right there. Sydney is out. Uh, mm -hmm. From the screen, we're seeing that Machinery is about to go down. Well, a lot of things happen, but like what we discussed earlier, well, even if there are mistakes made by Sugar Team, Survivor, it doesn't matter because they still manage to tie in the end. So. Uh, which proves that, yeah, Disciple is really hard to get a 4k in Disciple. Mm, the only time it's really uh, possible to get a 4k in it's ranks, when probably. It's <laughs> It's when you play it. No, I saw you get dropped before. <laughs> <laughs> wow! That's the way they come out there. Oh, that's true, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, but, well, there's so much at stake here. Uh, mm. we'll, we'll just see what they're gonna play, play out there, but, yeah. Mm. Last game, Noir, Noir Survivors versus Silverus. Wow, they, yeah. they, yeah, I, 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 Chắc là cái map này thì bên phía Noir sẽ cấm Gala Bon Bon của Silverus. Let's think about Survivors. Con này có đánh sáp thì cũng không quá nguy hiểm. Definitely the battle of the year, the forward and the mid potentially All the mechanic it Silverus is of getting you know a draw with the survivor side which in turn will be a win for Noir. Um, I, think, I think they have to ban the banner though. DDD has been so good on the banner. Oh, but it's the but it's Cerberus playing now and I doubt he would be playing Geisha. Geisha was countered by banner so that's basically it. Better well, is Hunter dependent. Yeah that's true but well if if Bonbon and Galatia is banned, what else can Cerberus play? And and that is a surprise factor. Surprise factor. Let me just pull up some sheets here. Uh, Cerberus. He does play Wax Arcus. I can yeah, Wax Arcus, guarantee. Yeah. yeah. Wait, he does play. He does play X Boy. Oh. Yeah, he does play X Boy. Really? Uh, Wait. Yeah. Let me check. Okay. Here's here's the thing. Surprise fact. Uh, surprising fact, like uh, in the prelim finals, Sugar has actually met against Noir before. Mm. Uh, round one. Okay, here's 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 the stats so far. Round one in Chinatown, uh, they lost against Noir's Gritty Wheel. Mm. Four. They got four K. In round two, they also lost four K. They got four K against Noir's Galatia. Uh, but let's look. Let's focus on the. On, on Cerberus right here. Cerberus, on the other hand, he played Breaking Wheel. He got a draw in Chinatown against Noir. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> X-Boy. He played X-Boy as well. And in Arms Factory, and he got a 1-3 to three loss to Noir. So there was a 3 survivors escape <laughs> by Noir. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I guess it's really up to Cerberus if he wants to take the risk and play X-Boy again. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, but Huh. Hmm. But that's the thing, uh, no one knew that Cerberus can play X-Boy and knowing how X-Boy has been doing in the tournament Yeah uh, Could that X-Boy inherit a, a ban? Okay Well... Yeah, it's, I'm think of it, like Porter did so well with the X-Boy 4k okay. left and right 4k left and right, but that's Porter's from WP mm -hmm. where and that's against a different team as well. But well, well, we'll just have to see. I mean, they can definitely go against it. But now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dear detectives, viewers, go. Sau đó ba b cặp đấu giữa Noi và Sugar. Noi đang dẫn trước với một round thắng năm ba ở round hai. Và bây giờ thì họ sẽ phải đối đầu với Hunter của bên phía Sugar, the Cerberus. Đây là sửa vũ khí và Polu của Severus có lẽ là không thể sử dụng Và ban pick đâu rồi, sao lại chỉ thấy mỗi hình như này mà không thấy uh, layout lấy gì đâu 
also Since... for the hunters ban, uh, you go for it. Yeah, sculptor exploit ban, so they definitely respect oh. the exploit. So, power of imagination, guys. So, is, can you imagine mm. who who Subverse is gonna play? Uh, so show your prediction in the chat. Who knows? Mm -hmm. if I get it correct. We'll call you the seer. <laughs> yeah, another ban on the enchantress. So it's just looking more and more like a a bon bon game. But bon to bon prevent, game. yeah, but to prevent the catastrophe. Yo, Kurt. Lính đánh thuê, nữ vũ công Tẩm liệm và cuối cùng là thăm dò cho bên phía quần đòi Xem đất đánh gì đây Chúng ta không biết là họ cấm cấm cái các thứ như thế nào Nhưng mà cái đội hình này Pick ra để đánh hòa rồi Hình này còn đòi rõ ràng được pick ra để đánh hòa Môn đồ Cũng là môn đồ đến từ Severus Nhưng mà môn đồ này phải thắng Môn đồ này không được hòa Môn đồ này không được hòa nhá The one that can find the explorer is Anne with the cat drop or the priestess with the tentacle usage where the tentacle can point to the uh, explorer location. So yeah, I think picking Anne here is a great call. Um, in order to counter the bomber, I think... Ah, đây rồi. Tiền đạo. Thợ máy ong, mỹ nhân đưa thư. Cái phiến noi cấm nhắc dìu cùng với Galati Họ đưa ra một đội hình với nữ vũ công cho đi 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 Đính thuê cho Aurora Thăm dò cho Oxygen và tẩm liệm cho Nail Cối đầu với con mèo is slightly diversing to a winning build. Winning build, but it can be a losing build too because yeah, it could be a losing build because that's risk taken. Yeah, because you have no bling, you you solely depend on your cat. Uh, you solely depend on your cat to make the lead, to make the stuns. But it's possible though in this game because look, uh, they don't have anything to help them kite. Like explorer, mm -hmm. you can hide, but it, once you are found, you can kite. Yeah, the turning point for this game is that Cerberus is able to find out where the explorer is other than that i don't think it can be more than a tie but, but we'll just have to see first though because i i disciple counters <laughs> disciple counters uh <laughs> the dancer as well mm -hmm. uh yeah uh like usually what you do you, you put the music box yeah in the pilot area when you destroy it you know um then then the, the dance comes stuff. out yeah, yeah. And try to stun you, but yeah, the cat's gonna stun you. So it actually kind of counters dancers as well. It counters a lot of them because they don't have any stun, so they have to depend on their raw kiting skills. Um, previous game SG, at least they have a perfumer that extended the kite, but right now they they don't they don't have anything except for a coffin and a and a book. So we'll see. Severus going in, but the last game of the night, potential last game, uh, stake. Here's the nah, trận đấu bắt đầu với môn đồ của Severus. Anh ta liệu có tìm thấy được oxy gen hay không đây? Di chuyển về khu vực nhà máy Chưa có dấu tai nào cho Severus Đấy cả Aurora cũng đang chạy về cổng trước Nó đi 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 cũng đang núp luôn Tất cả các thành viên của Noi đang núp Tất cả các thành viên của Noi đang núp Aurora di chuyển rồi Phải búng một găng tay Phải búng một găng tay Và búng về phía đi 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 à? Aurora À, găng tay thứ hai búng thẳng về nhà máy hộp nhạc chậm được đặt Severus vẫn dí vào vị trí của Aurora thôi 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 Aurora ba găng tay búng ngay giai đoạn đầu trận mất luôn ba găng tay rồi tìm thấy oxygen thôi 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 nói đi nói đi rồi nói đi rồi thề luôn ba găng tay cai đi đéo đâu cũng được chị Aurora đập thẳng găng tay vào mặt của oxygen luôn chịu Chịu, 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 nói bảo là thôi, các ông win đi, tôi không cần. Ba cái găng tay bạn búng đi, đéo đâu cũng được, nhưng mà bạn 
Nhưng mà bạn phi thẳng vào mặt con thăm dò đang ở nhà máy. Chịu luôn đấy. Khó thở thật sự. Pro, pro player rồi đó. Ok, đi đi đi, không còn máy nữa rồi. Mất máy nữa rồi, đi đi đi. Cọc được cắm về khu vực giữa bản đồ và Aurora không còn một đồ đạc nữa. Đi đi đang là người vào cứu, đát về. Mày ăn mèo, đánh ghế. Aurora cứu được oxygen, block không? Không có block, không block. Đi đi vừa làm một pha rất highlight. Lách ra ăn hết mèo sau đó lủi, lủi đấy. À, à lướt mèo, lướt 12 để tránh nổ mèo của đối phương. Ok ok. Đi 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 đang làm tốt. Cứu được oxygen, tận dụng được 20 giây đập máy được từ bên phía nòi, nhưng mà máy vẫn rất chậm. Hòm được vẽ đến từ Nio trong tình huống này. Tôi nghĩ xe Mercedes vẫn có thể về đây kịp mà Oxygen sẽ chỉ câu thêm một chút xíu thời gian mà thôi. Ở đây cần có người lật ván hộ không? Dấu chân, dấu chân. Tìm được dấu chân của Oxygen không? Ok. Noi set up một tình huống núp tiếp cho Oxygen. Trời ơi, Nio, anh ta fake dấu chân hộ cho Oxygen trong tình huống này. Severus không biết Oxygen ở đâu cả. Đát mèo theo Nio. Ok, Nio, Nio. Người gánh tim của bên phía Noi cuối cùng đã lên tiếng, hiểu không? Các bạn nhìn này, các bạn biết ai gánh tim rồi đấy. Người gánh tim của Noi cuối cùng cũng đã lên tiếng. Các bạn ơi, gánh tim luôn á. Quả này, quả gánh tim, quả vẽ hòm này, sau đó fake dấu chân á. Quả, quả vẽ hòm xong fake dấu chân hộ luôn. Cực hay đến từ Nio. Nhưng mà anh ta bây giờ phải cai được cơ ván ở đây được. Phá, đối với pha ván nhanh quá. Ok. Ngồi ở máy rồi, nhưng mà bốn máy gần sau. Bốn máy gần sau, Oxygen đang đào giấy. Oxygen đang đào giấy, soi vào vị trí của female dancer. Thế là Oxygen có 50% giấy rồi, anh ta đang núp lùm tiếp. Anh ta hình như bị nhìn thấy rồi. Cứu free Nio thì sao? Oxygen nhét đại 50 giấy vào đi. Từ từ, không. Anh ta có thể giữ giấy lát ra nhặt được rồi, bị nhìn thấy rồi. Oxygen sẽ bay trận đấu này. Noi vẫn có thể đánh hòa được trong cái thế như thế này. Có 50% giấy rồi. Quan trọng là có 50% giấy được thăm dò. Bây giờ một thành viên của Noi ra nhặt cái giấy này. Ta nhặt cái giấy này về pro máy là được. Dựng hòm tiếp đến từ vị trí của Nio. Soi vào đi đi đi. Đi đi đang ở khá xa. Aurora. Rồi lại chị Aurora. Lại là chị Aurora rồi. Lại là chị Aurora rồi. Aurora làm hết hộ Sugar rồi còn gì nữa. Sugar Aurora. Sugar Aurora. Các bạn ơi, Sugar Aurora rồi. Có 50% giấy nhưng mà máy đã xong đâu. MVP của cặp đấu này xin được bầu cho Sugar Aurora. Severus có thể thắng này. Severus có thể thắng. Rồi, đi 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 ơi, đi đi lần này hơi bị khó, đi đi lần này hơi bị khó, xả hộp nhạc ra thì sao, bị tốc biến rồi, đi đi có vào ghế kịp hay không đây, dồn giấy vào đến từ, rồi đi đi đi, cứu được, ôi, cứu được kìa, lướt 12 đi 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 gánh hết rồi, trời ơi, Aurora không đủ, bây giờ phải, một mình một mình Sugar Aurora là không đủ, bây giờ phải thêm cái gì đó nữa thì chắc là Severus mới thắng được, không bắt được vị trí của nữ vũ công trời ơi chuyện gì vậy hả Severus không lật ván luôn trời ơi không lật ván luôn mà không lật ván luôn á đi 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 đang đang dồn máy đi 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 đang dồn máy nay phải di chuyển ra đây để cứu nay không thể nào nay không thể nào về bên kia đập máy được máy đang được dồn đến từ bên phía của noi hai hộp nhạc đang được xả ra đi 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 đi, đi. Nào, lính đánh thuê ngồi ghế lâu hơn có khi là vẫn kịp máy này. Mèo thả lỗi rồi. 
Này ông luồn vào ghế khá tốt 60% máy Đập máy cực nhanh Nhưng từ nữ vũ công hai hộp nhạc kèm tăng tốc giải mã Nào để chúng ta cùng xem Sugar Aura có giúp cho Sugar Lấy lại hy vọng của kèo đấu này hay không Vùng mèo rất rộng Nổ mèo rồi vào ghế được Đến từ vị trí của Nail Nail vào ghế được Máy xong rồi Máy 95% Cứu thì sao Cứu được rồi Cứu tốt Đánh nó luôn vào Aura Máy có thể plan luôn cho bên phía Noi Plan luôn không Trời ơi Aurora Gì vậy Cái gì vậy Aurora Gì vậy Aurora Sugar Aurora Không có gì để tranh cãi nữa Đây chính là Sugar Aurora rồi Không phải là Noi Aurora đâu Đây chính là Sugar Aurora rồi Không trượt đi đâu được cả Nail đang mở cổng Cổng gần xong Nail không có 12 Anh ta cần phải cẩn thận ở tình huống này Ván ở đây vẫn còn Ơ oh, mèo trượt Đắt Đắt không à, Có tăng tốc đánh chín Nail sẽ bị chóa và anh ta gục ở đây Chạy về cổng sau kịp không Có hòm Có hòm được dựng ở đâu đó Cái hòm này mà ngon là thôi Có khi là bị thua luôn đến từ Severus này Ui Rồi Nail chạy được về không Tốc biến mới đã có Mèo được thả đến từ Severus Cắm mèo vào Nail kịp không Nail Thoát ba Rồi Nail gánh 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 phải gọi là Bố của gánh luôn Quả gánh này phải gọi là bố của gánh luôn Chứ không phải gánh bình thường đâu Và Nguyên một Điệp viên cài vào như vậy Mà đi đi và Nail vẫn gánh được Ok Sự comeback của Survival bên phía Noi Sự comeback của Survival bên phía Noi các bạn ơi Còn gì nữa đâu Thế luôn Gánh vãi trưởng luôn Gánh phải gọi là bố của gánh luôn á Phải gọi là bố của gánh luôn á Đi 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 Các bạn nhìn nhá Tôi bảo cái phát đầu tiên Anh ta chạy và anh ta ăn hai con mèo Cực kỳ hay Sau đó cái phát cứu Cứu được Tôi không cần biết là Có phải là xe bê rất lỗi hay không Nhưng mà bây giờ là Đi 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 cứu được người ra Sau đó không bị đắp bồ đao Sau đó nữa là sao Là nai âu cứu Xong rồi xe đắp hòm Các kiểu Uầy Thề luôn quả này Đúng kiểu gọi là Hai ông này gánh mẹ nó hết cả trận rồi Còn gì nữa đâu Ồ oh. MVP cặp này phải tra Bây giờ không biết là trao cho Nail hay trao cho DD này DD đánh trận 2 hay Tôi nghĩ kèo này DD sẽ được MVP vì sao Bởi vì DD cai trận 2 Và DD gánh trận này luôn Má gánh Sợ thật một gián điểm là không đủ Một gián điểm là không đủ nha Một gián điểm là không đủ nào để tôi ngồi lại một phút nữa tôi dáng chờ cân đói của tôi tôi dán nán lại một phút nữa tôi xem ai là mvp đúng rồi pha cuối là có hòm ở bao cát rồi cho nên là cố ý đứng mở cổng pha đó là cố ý các bạn hiểu không pha đó là cố ý đứng mở cổng ở ở, ở, ở cổng trước bởi vì có hòm setup rồi và biết hunter cầm 62 họ thấy hunter phá bắn nhanh họ thấy hunter có mắt đỏ họ chắc chắn hunter 62 rồi thế là đây có một pha xử lý rất là hay là đứng mở luôn cổng trước có cái hòm về bao cát thế là bây giờ kể cả dùng hòm và chạy về kịp là vẫn kịp đúng không còn không thì aurora cũng chạy được về cổng sau là thoát hai hòa là noi win rồi mà đây là còn thoát ba nữa tôi sẽ nặng nắn là một chút xíu nữa để tôi xem ai mvp tôi nghĩ là đi đi cho mvp thôi đi đi trận này làm cũng nhiều mà trận trước cai hết luôn mẹ thề luật ba găng tay đâm bấm búng thẳng ba găng tay về phía linh đánh thuê má đỉnh à đỉnh, đỉnh thuê búng thẳng ba găng tay về thăm dò đúng kiểu đỉnh cao luôn đó đỉnh cao luôn không biết là là phải miêu tả thế nào về pha đấy nữa nói chung là đỉnh thì biết nói là đỉnh cao đó đỉnh cao của identity file búng ba găng tay về đồng đội mình là kẻ thăm dò Ê. 
Đánh đến như vậy rồi ông Severus cũng không ăn được kèo Khó vậy bên kia nó gánh Nó gánh và lờ gánh luôn Tôi nhìn cái quả tốc biến vào đánh đi 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 là tôi thấy cút rồi Ai dè đi đi xử lý cứu được Cứu được xong lại còn lướt với hai không bị đắp bổ đao Thế là xong Về còn hai hộp nhạc đỏ Xả ra hai hộp nhạc đỏ ở cái chỗ máy trong bao cát rớt máy luôn Thế là lính tôi ngồi ghế đúng một lần xong máy Các bạn thấy không Lính tôi ngồi cái ghế lần 2 ấy, Lên cái ghế lần 2 phát xong là ông ấy đập Ông ấy đập solo Nữ vũ công đập solo máy luôn á Đập solo máy 100% luôn Vẫn kịp Mấy đỉnh cao cái Nữ vũ công bây giờ mạnh Nữ vũ công bây giờ mạnh Hai cái hộp nhạc đóng ra mẹ đập máy Hiếp máy thôi mà Noi sẽ gặp Ryu Noi sẽ gặp Ryu ở trận đấu ngày mai Moving on out of these two teams SG we're gonna have to say goodbye to them But guys in the chat Uh, yeah, just show some love to them. Like, nah, MVP thuộc về ai đây? Hearts, hearts to them, like for the effort well done. Đấy, tôi bảo mà. Mặc dù là no, uh, Nail làm nhiều trận cuối nhưng mà đi đi làm cả trận 2, trận 3 luôn. Rất xứng đáng, rất xứng đáng MVP. Ok, tôi sẽ offline tại đây cho mọi người ơi. Cảm ơn các bạn đã xem stream, xem theo dõi giải đấu ngày hôm nay. Hẹn mọi người vào ngày mai. Bye bye các bạn. Chúc các bạn ngủ ngon.